Tapas aren't just delicious, they're a way of life in Spain. In this video, I'm taking you to the very best tapas bars across the whole of the country. From Barcelona to Madrid, from Seville to San Sebastian, get ready to experience the most delicious, authentic tapas that Spain has to offer. And we begin in sunny Malaga with famous local food guide, Hany Martini. Number one, most important, boquerones. Boquerones. Amazing. Malagueños are called gonna... boquerones, they right? They are. Then we have here a little bit of, I think, rosada or bacalao maybe, octopus here. We've got some gambones, giant prawns. I mean, it's just a feast for the eyes and for the taste buds. Is this a Mediterranean breakfast? <laughs> Let's call it that. Let's call it that. It is today. Fried anchovies, you've got to eat these here. Mm. Oh, oh good. James left his tail. Uh oh, uh oh, I, uh -oh. I, I got caught, I got caught. I will eat my tail. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, it's really good, that cumin spice, that kind of Moorish influence exactly. um, in the dogfish. I feel like they need to rebrand dogfish. Oh, they really should. It sounds better in Spanish, I think, cathon. Yeah, yeah. Order cathon, <laughs> don't ask for dogfish. <laughs> Somebody put a, a comment on the video, because we're putting lemon on the fish, and said, do not put lemon on the fish. That comes from the olden days when fish wasn't super fresh, and so you just want the flavor of the fish. So I, I'm no go on the lemon anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I won't put lemon on fish, neither should you. Ah, buenas, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está? Muy bien. Queremos concha fina, ¿no? Concha eh. fina. Breakfast continues in a style that I could seriously become accustomed to. Fresh local seafood and crisp cava. Pinch me now. Before this, we had a little breakfast prep meeting and I was like, you know, we're not going to drink at each stop because, you know, we've got a lot to get through, but See? what time is it now? 11.30? I mean, it's 11.30. Oh. What are we eating here? So we have conchas finas here and then we have bolos. And how do we eat these? Well, the way we eat these is much like you would eat an oyster, but the difference is what we're going to do is load it with uh, lemon. So okay. I'm just going to show you how we do it here on the concha fina. Are you breaking it my might... lemon rule? It, I am. I was just going to say that. <laughs> it's uh, completely contrary to what James just told you, but this is very typically yeah. how we would eat it. And then we put on on black pepper so ideally normally on uh, seafood you wouldn't put salt but we also add a tiny bit of salt this is a classy way to start the day guys oh wow mm. it's firm super fresh oh it's delicious meaty it tastes like the sea in the right way when super fresh seafood tastes like the sea bolus the bolus it's just a weird name bolus sí. <laughs> bolus <laughs> is actually a hybrid between an oyster and a concha fina hence that oystery quality a little more like an oyster, if you know what I mean. That is really, really yummy. Okay, you guys know what you're having for breakfast in Malaga. <laughs> gracias. gracias a ti. Que tenga un buen día. Muchas gracias. gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Okay, time check, 11.37, and we are now heading to, just over the street, to one of the most incredible bars in all of Malaga. Malaga is one of the world's oldest wine regions, and Antigua Casa de Guardia is the city's temple to the local drop. It opened in 1840 as a wine shop where you'd fill up your empty bottles, but nowadays most patrons prop up the bar and drink tumblers of sweet Malaga wine filled straight from the barrel. Malaga wine in 78 words or less. It's ole. We use a sweet grape, they take it from the vine uh, when it's already ripe, so it's something you would actually be able to eat from the vine. They leave it out in the sun until it becomes this gorgeous syrupy, almost raisin-like, and then they turn it into wine. So we're pairing it with pickles, essentially. We have more boccarones, more white anchovies, uh, and they've been pickled in vinegar, and we are adding to that a pickled onion and olives. The saltiness of, and, and the sharpness of the pickles really kind of cuts and complements the, the Malaga wine. It's just a great way to start any meal. <laughs> I feel like we keep starting this meal. At some point, we need to actually have the meal. Tide is not out in Antigua Casa de Guardia. The tide is not out anywhere. She is, yeah. Oh, it's lovely. What is the alcohol content in this? It's about 50%. 50? 15. 15. I was going to say, I don't think it's 50. And so, Hanny, with all these barrels, obviously, there's a whole bunch of different wines available. And I think yeah. I always find it overwhelming that you can order any of them, right? I mean, they're inexpensive. They always come in these small glasses. And actually, inside a tip, you can ask for a half glass. Really? Yeah, so they will give you a half glass to taste. You can also mix and match. So you could put a pajarete, for example, with something more dry and oh kind God. of like make your own mix. So if you come in and you just say, I want a selection of two or three half glass uh, of wine, just have a try. Like, yeah. don't be afraid. Just come Spend in. all morning here. Be yeah. good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Are we having lunch next? Or are we still going to keep, oh, keep getting ready for lunch? <laughs> we're still doing aperitivos. Okay. <laughs> We have so far had the world's longest aperitif, a three-stop aperitif. I actually recommend that you do that if you're feeling like really celebrating life because the aperitif is always just much more fun than the actual lunch in a way. Just aperitif, don't even get to lunch. That's what I recommend. That is the way to approach life, maybe. Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy James. Hola, James. Encantado. Estamos haciendo un video para promocionar Málaga. Ah, muy bien. As you can see, Henny is connected. <laughs> <laughs> so where have you brought us to, Henny? I've brought us to El Almacén del Indiano. It's a, an ultramarinos, which is a delicatessen. Like any good place that you can go and do your food shopping in Malaga, you can also stop and have a beer and something to eat. Are you going to serve me more wine here? I'm probably going to serve you a beer. I, th a I feel beer. like we need a little in-between. <laughs> Will lunch happen? Wait and find out. So Mane is putting on the mojama that we're getting, the, the, the tuna belly an olive oil that has been aged in a sherry barrel. Oh wow, that smells like sherry. Está muy rico. Ham of the sea, look at this. Ham of the sea. It's actually tuna, cured tuna loin. So they cure this stuff in salt for three weeks and then dry it out and it becomes this delicious sliceable uh, ham. You hear that? Oh, wow. How good is that, James? Oh my god, that's really good. How good is it? And you got the, you still get the olive oil flavor, mm -hmm. and the saltiness of the tuna, but with that slight touch of sherry. All right, let's go, Henny. Okay, Onwards. let's go. Whoa. Maybe it's even lunchtime. Who knows? <laughs> or is your aperitif continuing? No, no, no. Don't, don't get too confident. <laughs> don't James. get too confident. <laughs> can see what's going to happen in the comments already. I'm going to get comments like, oh my God, James, you didn't put espetos in this tour. Yeah. The famous sardines on a stick cooked over a fire. Where do we have them, uh, we ideally? We have them at the beach. And ideally, we have them in Pedro Galejo or El Palo, which is the fishing district just slightly to the east. Yeah. It's still Malaga Center, but you got to get on a bus or take a 50 minute walk or a bike yeah, ride. Which we don't have time for today given we're going we to don't. like 12 stops. We don't. Founded in 1971 as a wine cellar, Bodegas El Pimpi is now Malaga's most famous tapas bar. And I love wandering its passages and patios past stacks of wine barrels and right through to its sprawling terrace overlooking the city's ancient Roman theater and Moorish fortress. But when it comes to eating, Henny and I suggest you go elsewhere. Sort of. Yeah. We're ordering water for the first time. And vermouth. And vermouth. Don't put that on the video. It's going to yeah, yeah. ruin our reputation. Yeah, sorry, guys. sorry. My body was asking for that. I'll tell you what. So, Henny, we're in El Tunnel del Pimpi. We're right alongside. Yeah. So, you would say if you want to get smaller dishes, more variety, this is your spot? Yeah, absolutely. And have yeah. more of a local experience. So, we have here goat from the Ashakir region, which is east of Malaga. Very, very typical. Slow roasted with lots and lots of garlic. Sweetness of it because it's so young is absolutely divine. And that's why I think it pairs really well with this vermouth. There's like peppercorns in here. and. Oh wow. What I love about Andalusia is you can get tapas of everything. You get a small serving, which you can't do in Madrid. And look how juicy that roast meat is. It is so incredibly juicy. I'm gonna, I can't stop saying the word juicy, but... We have arrived at lunch. We have arrived. Never thought we'd get there. <laughs> Given lunch has finally begun, it's time to commit and head to one of my favorite tapas bars for a big meal in the city, Meson Mariano. So this place, Meso Mariano, kind of has a soft spot in my heart. I remember discovering it with friends uh, and it was just like the perfect Malagueño taberna. It's really a family-run business. His daughter is behind the bar with him. One of the places that's classically, classically for the people of Malaga. If you want to know you're in an authentic place, is there drinks and beer barrels and, a, and an alcohol fridge shoved up against the wall <laughs> yes. under a countertop? If there is, you're in an authentic place. Exactly. Lunch has arrived. Lunch, and this is a very, very large portion as well. Yeah, right. A gaspachuelo. You see, it's got quite a unique color for a soup. Erluza, which is cake. Uh, we have these gorgeous big langostinos. Um, we have an egg, 
and we have potato. But what gives it this creamy white base is, don't freak, mayonnaise. Oh my God, oh my God. There are very few times on Spain Revealed YouTube extravaganza that I actually eat something for the first time. Yes, like mayonnaise, but that scared me, but not too much. Fishy, but not too fishy. Fresh, but not too fresh. Look at this huge chunk of hake. Okay. It's creamy and rich and absolutely exactly as a gazpachuelo should be. Mariano has a bit of a thing for artichokes and he offers a variety of different preparations. Gracias. Do you want to just flip that ham off for me? Let's see what we've got here. We... Lovely. Look at that. May I? You may. Oh. So perfectly cooked, so tender. Olive oil and artichoke unadulterated the flavor of the vegetable. You know, one of the beautiful things about Malaga, and you saw that when you walked through the market, is it just has a wonderful produce. Yeah, we've got the seafood, we've got the meat, we've also got great fresh vegetables and fruit. Tuna. Yeah. Prunes. Yeah. And then this gorgeous oniony sauce. All right. Wow. Oh, I'm gonna lose it. Good? <laughs> oh. oh my god. That is so good. That is so good. It's sweet with the tuna. It's, it's got the spice. Oh my god. It's better than I remember. Me son Mariano, people. Muy bien. Rao, encantado. Yes. Now that is a tapas bar, guys. That is a tapas bar. Can I say it again? That is a tapas bar. Great thing about this place, as well as amazing wines, they do fantastic tapas. You can sit in the high tables in here and have tapa, or you can sit down and have a proper lunch. And I mean, I've been in here from 11.30 in the morning till six o'clock in the afternoon having lunch in the house. So. So, yeah. I told you Henny knows her food and enjoys it. <laughs> she enjoys her food. Heads up, fellow wine nerds, Los Patios de Beatas is the Malaga spot to drink Spain's best vino. They've got a Coravin machine, which means you can drink serious wines by the glass without the bar having to open the actual bottle. I took the opportunity to try a big, rich Rioja that would normally be way outside my budget. I am about to drink Spain's most expensive Rioja. I mean, it's probably not, but this is 16 euros a glass. You can get a half glass. This is an eight euro 50 half glass. You just, I, I know if you're, you know, in the States, that's like just, you know, a glass of house wine, that's what that costs, but this is like pushing out the boat in Spain, so, all right. Spain too often forgets to put its world-class olive oil front and center, so I was glad to see that our waiter, dressed like some sort of gastro ninja, gave the excellent local stuff the respect and 15 seconds of fame it deserved. So, Hanny, this is obviously a place where more for like modern food. And Absolutely. this is a dish you recommended, like the wine is great. What do we got, like black cod or something? We have, it's exactly what we've got. Black cod with sesame and coconuts. Camilo makes these more modern dishes. He likes to fuse the South American, Latin American influence with the Malaga produce. And so we've got black cod with sesame and a coconut sauce, which is absolutely divine. Okay. So you need to get some of the sauce, like that's super important. Yeah. Ooh. Oh wow. The salty cod, but the sweetness of the coconut and the crunchiness. Yeah, that's lovely. That's really, really good. Hasta <laughs> luego. Where are we going next, Hanny? Where are, are you dragging to me Palo to Cortado, next? Palo Cortado. And I'm Palo just Cortado. thinking of the best route. I think we are going to go this way. We're going to go that way. I mean, just standing here in Plaza del Obispo and just kind of enjoying the beauty of Malaga for a sec between stops. There's music, there's the sound of a, a burbling fountain, the cathedral up behind us, the sun. Tell me about this place. So Palo Cortado is based around local produce, again, 
really, really champions of local produce. Spanish cooking, there's a bit of fusion in there, a bit posher, if I'm honest, Yeah. Uh, but very, very well done. So we're gonna try here, ajo blanco. Oui. But I was trying we're like, to we'll have, we'll have sparkling water, he's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll have that. He Did really twisted our it? arm. It's very good white wine. So Mucha Moscatel, gracias. as Hanny was explaining, is a grape that is traditional to Malaga, and a lot of the, the older, those Victoria novel sweet wines, but it's used in the dry wines as well, and you can tell in a white when it's really fragrant on the nose. Oh, ole, que bonito, que refrescante. Yummy, 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 look at that. Ajo blanco, it's made from almonds and garlic. Mm. Oh yeah. This is thick, it's really creamy. Wow, and you can taste the garlic in there. That is the best ajo blanco I've ever had. They gave us another dish. They gave us another dish we have to try. The tuna with a fried egg on top. Spicy tuna, like a kimchi tuna kimchi. with some spicy egg on it. It's tuna, it's slightly sweet, it's spicy in the back of your throat, there's an egg on there. I love it that it's not cooked, you know? It's fresh, it's raw tuna going in. with a fried egg. Hanny, what's left? I think I'm still alive. I may be in the afterlife, I'm not sure. Why not? <laughs> gracias. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Bye -bye. Hasta you. luego. We are doing it. We're killing it, James. We're killing it. We're, We're killing, killing it. it. Well, now we need to like just regroup one second. Where are we going? Where are we going? We're going this way. Hello. I know. Hey, she knows. I know. She's playing with us, guys. <laughs> She's toying with us. With my stomach at breaking point, Henny led me to Meson Antonio, a classic tavern tucked into an alleyway that nails Malaga's famous local salad. Meson Mariano. Meson Antonio. Joder. Yes. Si. I got the name wrong. Ensalada Malagueña. We, we have a curious combination of boiled potatoes, bacalao, which we talked about earlier, the salt yeah. cod, orange, olives, white onion, green onion, and really good olive oil. The food that came from the workers who worked up in the mountains because of what they had readily available. The yeah. salt cod obviously adds an extra element of flavor. The saltiness, salt cod, sweetness of the really juicy orange, the olive, it's really good, the potato. I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna name the ingredients, which is so boring, but <laughs> try this when you come here. It's really, really good. Meson Antonio, don't call it Meson Mariano. Very embarrassing. At that last bar, my credit card was declined. I don't know why. Obviously, my bank is telling me you have eaten too much. You've gone, nobody has ever gone to this many tapas bars in one sequence. But we have one more stop. Hopefully I can pay. If not, I'll, I'll send some cash to Hanny. <laughs> but it can't be too expensive, right, Henny? It's ice cream. It's ice cream. But this is famous ice cream. It's famous ice cream. There is only one name in ice cream in Malaga, Casa Mira. The family-run company opened their first ice cream parlor in the city in 1890, but Henny took me to a classy little joint they've just opened, happily near my hotel. Una pequeña de limón y una pequeña de Malaga. Let's try these ice creams and these bits and bobs. We have bits and bobs. The wheels are totally coming off. <laughs> Whose wheels are coming off, James? All the wheels Is it are my coming. Wheels? All the wheels are coming off. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like having my cake and eating it here. I've got limon just for like freshness. That's really good. That's really good. But I have the unrefreshing option. Just to bookend it, we started early on. We had Malaga wine, and now I'm having Malaga wine ice cream. Chunks of something in it. Yeah, pasta. Mmm. It does kind of, not really, but kind of taste like Malaga wine. I can't believe it's taken us this long to make a tapas to a video in Cadiz. This historic city is up there as one of my favorites for eating in Spain. Fresh seafood, unique local dishes, tapas bars full of history, and all served up by generous, life-loving gaditanos. In this video, we're gonna hit eight spots that you need to try when you're here. And we're gonna do all of this eating over the next 48 hours, taking into account the rhythms of a baby, of a family. So here you have the world's first 48-hour family tapas crawl. Now that's niche. Very niche. Venga, let's go. There's a famous place for fried fish here in Cadiz called Freiduri, Freid, joder. Freiduria, did I say that right? Las Flores. And that's where we normally go. And it's in this beautiful square with all these flowers. But Jose, who you will meet later on in this video, uh, who runs a great wine bar, said, 
he prefers this place. Sí, cuarto cazón de adobo, cuarto choco, cuarto puntito. Te parece típico. Yoli's sitting backed by virgins. And the menu is always organized in weight. So you can get a quarter kilo, un cuarto, half kilo, or a kilo of each dish. Warning for Americans, you know, no pounds here. You have to, to get, your, get your app out. To... Cheers. From all the things on this menu, we've picked what we think are the three most sort of typical here in, here in Cadiz. I'm getting lemon juice in my eyes and my face all over the place. We've got cathon, which is a kind of a shark, a sand shark that's, in, that's been marinated in spices and then fried. We've got choco, which is like squid. And then we've got puntitas, which are like little baby cuttlefish. This is a very hard lemon to squeeze. I'm having to flex my, my gym biceps. And so fried fish has always been so important in this part of Spain because, you know, the bay, the Bay of Cadiz, is right there. It's where a lot of the fish is brought in from. And frying it goes right back to the Phoenicians, I have read. Probably on Wikipedia, probably not true, but I think it might be true. What should I try first? Chocos. I love these guys. Mm. With a bit of lemon on them, they're just kind of, I mean, you know, it's not gourmet. It's just like that kind of slightly light, squiddy flavor. A little bit of lemon. Perfect battering, perfect amount of salt. Yum, delicious. Can I eat some? No. This is, this is for the people, Yoli. This is just, these are props, you know? Marinated shark. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hang on. Perfect balance of vinegar, cumin. Yeah. Yeah, praise the Virgin. Praise me. <laughs> All right, I'm trying the cathon. I can't watch you eat cathon and not try it. Oh, when cathon is good, it is so good. This, you know, sometimes it can be dry. This is moist, it's juicy. Puntitas, little baby cuttlefish, crunchy and meaty. They're like little morsels from the sea. We need to now eat all of this, Yoli. I don't want to make Jose look bad. And guys, if you ever come here, just say Jose sent me. It seems to work. I thought the fish was very good there. I thought our performance was very weak. Oh no, really? Let's see if over the course of this video, yeah. we can... We get there. We get there. We get we to, can... the, to the James and Phil level. Yeah. Well, James and Yoli level of old. You know, we get back our mojo. <laughs> this video is not about eating in Cardiff. This is about getting our mojo back. <laughs> when you're here, don't miss the market. Go to marvel at the incredible selection of fish and seafood and make sure to eat and drink the market fresh food at the surrounding stalls. Especially the sushi. Yes, the sushi. So while the fried fish is kind of, you know, the typical way to try fish here, this is the way to try just, you know, the, the famous tuna from Cadiz in its most pure way. The tuna from these waters that they buy from the fishmongers every morning. And in fact, Rick Stein, famous Rick Stein, said that the tuna here in Gadi Sushi, in this place, beats the tuna in uh, the Tokyo market. So, and Rick no. knows, right? Yeah. No, did you did you know that, Yoli? I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got, Yoli? Uh, the tuna loin here. Yeah. And then we have a uh, tuna belly, ventresca. I'm not gonna put soy sauce, it's just pure tuna from Cadiz. Yoli. This is for you, Rick. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. It's almost like, it's so clean, the flavor. It's just like you can taste the sea, but not in that kind of intense sea way. Very fresh. You do get a little bit of that kind of like a awfully sort of thing, right? The loin is a little more intense. The the belly yeah. is, is kind of cleaner. Oh, something happened. Wasabi. Wasabi attack. Wasabi attack. <laughs> <laughs> and on our way out, we spot a somewhat unorthodox stall selling plates of Cadiz oysters and sea urchin. I think I'm gonna go for the, I mean, I know oysters, but I don't know erizo. I've never had erizo the in my oyster life. Oyster is a, is a more subtle flavor. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. you should probably start. That would just be my, I, I'm, you know, who am I here? But you know, exactly. Rick's, I'm not Rick Stein. I'm gonna go for the erizo first. Ah, <laughs> uh, Yelly brings conflict. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, ooh. Booyah. Booyah kasha. Booyah kasha. You know, like sea anemones, you know, it's like biking into the sea, only saltier and um, it's like, as if there was like a tomato sauce in there. Wow. How about that? Oysters from Cadiz. I've never had oysters from Cadiz before. Mm. Really good. Yeah. Like a great oyster. Mm. Yum. I'm a little scared of this one now because of what you said. Wait. Watch out, you don't get a nail in your mouth. <laughs> Straight to Cadiz okay. Hospital. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. That is not what I was expecting. I've had Aretha before, but it doesn't taste like any Aretha I've ever had. I don't know if I like it. Well, it's just, it's not fishy. I'm confused. I'm lost. I'm a child in the wilderness of sea urchin. It's like fishy, but with ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, try this, and leave a comment if that's what sea urchin tastes like. Hello. Cayo con garbanzo. Necesito la arbondilla y tan tomate. Arbondilla. Los garbanchitos con langostino. Patatas con choco. La carne al toro. Garbanzo con langostino. Está del carajo. Sí, está muy rico. Come, por favor. Okay, so it was Lucia's nap time, so I'm on my own, my own with these two dishes. I was only actually going to get one dish here, the ortiguillas, but I saw these stews on display and it's like, got to get in there. Because when we talk about Andalusian food, there's kind of two types. They talk about guisos y fritos, which means stews and fried things. Now we've got the fried things here, but the stews, I didn't have that plan to try some stews, but I saw those. I was like, we've got to try it. And this one is super typical that I've chosen, papas y chocos, which means squid and potatoes. Oh, wow. That is like a seafood stew to perfection. Intense seafood flavor, the choco, but the potatoes are like sponges and they've soaked up all the, all the juice. And what I love about this place is it's super barrio. It's totally local. This guy just came in, uh, a client, you know, he knew him, the owner knew him by the first name, and the client just started taking the lids off the stew, kind of, you know, seeing what there is for today. This is for you, Phil. I know you love these. And that is okay. really quite weird. Yeah. <laughs> but to be honest, when we had them in Madrid at San Lucar, they're really good there. But I have a feeling that you haven't had ortiguillas, you haven't had fried sienemis until you've had them in Cadiz. These little balls of, of the ocean. Balls of the ocean, that is such a... Anyway, let me eat it. Oh, wow. Yes, that is an ortiguilla. Crunchy on the outside, hot perfectly gooey in the inside, like a mouthful of ocean, like the waves just washed over your face. Okay, so Casa Pepe is an awesome find, a, a perfect little neighborhood bar. I'm gonna head back to Yoli and Lucia. We're gonna continue eating tomorrow. Okay, Yoli, it's day two of this epic tapas crawl. How did you sleep? Yeah, I had a good interval of closing my eyes for like two hours. <laughs> so what we have is a little free tapa, which is not a common thing, I, I feel like in Cadiz. Patatas aliñas. Mm. Oh my God. Patatas aliñas are a dish here in Cadiz that are one of my favorite things in the world. The Irishman and me. Potatoes that have been soaked in olive oil, vinegar, there's onion in there, probably some garlic. It's sharp, it's like the best potato salad of your life. One thing I have to say about the people of Cadiz is that part of the experience of Cadiz is the people of Cadiz. These are just, they're so friendly, they're so open, they're so proud, you know, when we come in and we say, you know, sometimes a bit nervous when you go into a bar and you got a camera, they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And they're like, I didn't put my makeup on. There's no reticence, you know, and that's what I love about them. What I eat, what I eat, you know. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Yum, 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 yum. Look at that smoke coming out. Lucia is kind of like, wow, I can't believe this. Hold your horses, Yoli. They want to burn your lips. I know this is your favorite. No, it's very tempting. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so while we twiddle our thumbs and wait for the gum bus to cool down, um, I think a lot of people watching this video might be curious if you're traveling as a family, can you go into tapas bars? And yeah, you can. These are family places. When Yoli left yesterday with Lucia, the last place we were at, just after you, two other families with babies and strollers left, like nap time. And these are not like drinking places. They're eating, they're, you know, the restaurants. So you're all good. I can't wait anymore. Wow. I I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow a little bit on them. <laughs> El abuelo in Madrid. Be careful. Be careful. These are very good. The El Abuelo in Madrid, famous place for Gamas Alajillo, is on notice it appears. I haven't tried them yet. Going in, willing to burn my lips, my <laughs> chops. Fresh, tender, perfect. Marado. This system, it's so Spanish. There's a guy whose job is just to run out of the kitchen saying, Mesa dos, and he says like, Mesa uno, like table one. And then he hands it to the other one. There he goes. El aceite y el ajo, mojando pan, eso es maravilloso. Muchas gracias. Presa Ibérica, this big cut right here, the juicy Iberian grilled. 
Oh wow. Oh yeah. Yoli. La la la. Perfectly cooked, fresh, beautiful, delightful. Mm, Casalazo. Yes. You guys are gonna love this. Uy, a full quarter artichoke grilled with a big slice of jamón on the top. Jamón ibérico as well. I've never quite seen it done this beautifully, simply and deliciously. Oh yeah. Perfectly grilled artichoke, delicious jamón. Slightly vinegary as well. It's like vinegar on here, maybe like a sherry vinegar. And like they're tender, you know how artichokes are hard to get this tender on here. Hasta luego. Una buena recomendación de Jose. True, amazing tapas bars. Run by great people, attract great clients, friendly people around you, great food. Casalazo, guys. You don't need to say Jose sent you here at Casa Manteca because I don't think it would have any effect. I mean, this place is famous. Kind of everybody knows about it, but for good reason. It Probably is... the most famous place in Cadiz. Yeah, right? Yeah. Opened in the, the 50s. The cathedral in this. <laughs> I think, isn't this the cathedral? This is the cathedral to a certain dish. But yeah. opened in the 50s, a guy called Pepe, uh, kind of an ex-bullfighter, never quite made it uh, to be super famous as a bullfighter. Opened this place, just has been going ever since, and the decoration is amazing. So, a little awkward to film because I have a very wide lens. They've said like just be a bit careful about filming people for people's privacy So often I've got people's privacy on one side of the lens and on camera and I've got Yoli breastfeeding on the other side So <laughs> I can't swing the camera many, <laughs> I can't swing the camera in many directions, but we're gonna do it So there's a tapas bar that is famous for this classic dish in, in Cadiz called the Tortita de Camarones It's not here. It's a place we are gonna go to but we've had it here and it's also delicious here So Yoli, you're gonna taste it there's little baby shrimp um, with egg and flour and you just kind of batter it and fry it all together and this marvel, marvelous thing happens. You know these are good when it's just literally all shrimp and not a lot of batter. I'm going to stop talking to you. Oh my god, it's really good. I can't touch the camera now, I have oily hands. I have to strap the camera to Yoli's head. <laughs> GoPro it. Here is the key dish. This is what you came here for. Totally unique. Chicharrones especiales, which are a sort of smoked stewed pork that have been spiced as well, are served on these little, it's not a paper plate, these little slices of paper, which is a very traditional way to show when you would buy these in the in the charcuteria. So papelon. That's the, papelon, that's what it's called. Thank you, Yoli. And with a little lemon on it, salt. Ooh. Yes. You came here for this. They're so good. Ay, chicharrones, my love. To me, it's always like a mystery. It's like meat, but it's so fresh, you know, with a lemon in there. You know, there's slightly smoke in there as well. Wow. Mm, <laughs> okay, day three. Yes, this eating extravaganza has become a 72 hour affair. Yoli and Lucia are back at the hotel, and I'm taking you to meet Jose, our hookup here for great bars in Cadiz. And I'm also gonna show you my favorite bar in Cadiz, and perhaps one of my favorite bars in all of the world. So of all my happy places in all the world, this is right up there, Taberna La Manzanilla. It's run by Jose for the last 30 years, run by his father before him, run by his grandfather before him. They only serve sherry here. You can't get beer, wine, coffee, and a few simple delicious tapas, and all the sherry comes from these barrels. These barrels, you can see, are over 200 years old. So the mind-bending thing about sherry is that it's not a wine where you're drinking a specific year. It's always a blend of vintages that go back decades and potentially centuries. And so these barrels that are behind us have never been emptied in the 90 years that this uh, this bodega, that this uh, bar, this tavern has been running. And so Jose, his father before him, his grandfather before him, always adding and topping up uh, the sherry that's in there. There's traces in here of a wine that's 
over a hundred years old. So how does it taste? It's intense, it's rich, there's dried nuts, you know, dried fruits, but there's acidity as well from the salinity of San Lucar, where this, this wine comes from. And having earned a little trust with Jose, he gives me access to his magical little storage closet at the back of the bar. I remember the first time Jose took me back here some years ago. I was having a drink and wow, it's like walking through the, I don't know, through the looking glass or through the wardrobe into Narnia, you know, Sherry Narnia. It's a little museum of objects from the past, you know, bottles of Sherry from the mid 20th century. God knows what else, barrels that are 100 years old. Oh, you can smell the humidity. It's awesome. And while there is so much history in this tavern, the actual oldest part is the ceiling up here, 250 odd years old. But what is really fascinating is that this wood comes from the Americas. This is wood that was used as ballast in the galleons that were coming back from the new world with goods. And then once they got it here, they were like, well, we better keep using it. So they used it to, to build this building. I also decide to grab a bottle of Amontillado for Paco, who runs the restaurant Isamar in my barrio and is a big wine connoisseur. Bueno, amigo. Wow. El Faro. So this place has been open since the 60s. It's a classic place for great seafood here in, uh, in Cadiz. I've been here a few times over the years, always in the bar. I prefer the bar. It's kind of my vibe versus the restaurant. So you know now that tuna is really important in Cadiz, but Almadraba tuna is a I'm whole different kettle of fish. Uh-oh. What happened? Uh-oh. <laughs> Hang on, I was going to eat all the food. Ah, well, you, you didn't say you, I didn't know when you were coming. You know, Yoli just kind of comes in, bowls in. I'm trying to teach here about Alma And I just an arrive and it's Ancient all. Phoenician fishing nah, nah, technique. Nah, nah. Give me some, give me some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fun arrives. All right, <laughs> let me serve you some food. Do I get a kiss? Do I get a kiss? Almadaraba tuna, shorthand. Ancient Phoenician fishing technique, still in use today in Cadiz to catch tuna, can only be fished in this way using these nets and a whole process. You guys have wonderful colors going on. I know. Love Almadaraba. <laughs> you love Phoenician fishing techniques. Oh yeah, you know me. You know, I'm all about Phoenician fishing techniques. <laughs> Delicious, tender, perfectly raw, perfectly raw. I'm getting destabilized by Yoli. Ajo blanco, which is like ground almonds and garlic to create this white paste. Olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. This is really yummy. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. It becomes better and better yeah. with every bite. Yeah. Wow. Yoli, so we had the tortita camarones in Casa Manteca. Yeah. But here is the place that's famous for it, right? Wow. It's a smackdown. Oh, tortita camarones Let's smackdown. see who wins. Smackdown. You see this one? You can see all the, the eyes. little shrimps, the eyes, yeah. This is good. I think this might be slightly better. It's a little less oily. Mm. Did you see it, Dilo Lucia? <laughs> it has just the, the perfect flavor. Yeah, less, less kind of egg, less flour in there. Okay, after all the confusion around the sea urchin in the market, the erizo, the flavors in the market were a little muddy. This is a little cleaner, I would say. Similar, but a little more sea -y. I wonder what the flavor was in the other one. Dirt Pol of pollution. the sea. Dirt of the sea. Mm. I mean, there's all the other stuff going on as well. The foam and, you know, God knows what. <laughs> but it's very delicious. I'd recommend this one over the one in the market, but yeah. I'm probably a Philistine and the one in the market was great and I'm an idiot. Let's go to the next stop because it's starting to rain. Weather's coming in. My ancestors were whalers, so I can feel the, uh, the weather coming in off the Atlantic. Ah, uh, there you do. Ah, beautiful day in Cadiz. We're gonna head out to a little place we know on the beach. Cause hey, this weather screams beach. The weather is coming in, seriously. Looks like the bus is not working. We can't get a taxi with Luthia. This is not quite the grand finale I was planning uh, for this video. 
when we came, we're in the new part of Cadiz right now. When we were here last time, four months ago, it was a beautiful day. We ate out on a terrace on the beach and everything. Now we're in the middle of a storm. Good food will resolve everything, I'm sure. You all right? I know we've taken you to a lot of traditional places, so we wanted to take you to a place in the new city, on the beautiful beach here, and with modern food. And you know what, Yoli, after that adventure, I am ready to push the boat out on this meal, right? How do you feel about that? Permission? Do we give each other permission to push the boat out? Permission granted, but hopefully the boat won't sink in yeah. the storm. <laughs> it's pretty intense out there. One thing I would love is uh, to have better mocktails in Spain uh, because they're usually missing the alcohol. <laughs> Pluma Ibérica a la Brasa. These guys do a lot of things on charcoal. With like a bit of truffle in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm. from the chips, by ah, the way. Truffle fries. First time I've had truffle fries in Spain. There you go. Mm. Oh, that's a great piece of meat. Don't order the bogavante, the lobster, al ajillo here if you only have one arm because you're filming yourself or you're holding a baby as well. It is really hard to eat. I would just, even if you had two arms, I would skip that dish, it's complicated. This is a great place, lots of yummy food. Skip the complicated bogalante. Hey guys, you're coming to Barcelona and you wanna eat well, I get it. Well, this city can be a pretty tough place to eat well and there is a lot of tourist traps, but, and there's a but, there are a lot of amazing places to eat in as well. You just have to know how to find them and that's what today is all about. Today, Yoli, behind the camera and I, we're taking you on a 10 stop epic food tour of Barcelona. We're going to be hitting tapas bars, sweets, markets, restaurants. We're going to be drinking cava, vermouth, wine, the whole gamut. So are you ready? Let's do it. So venga, let's go. Hey guys, I'm James Blick and welcome to Spain Revealed. This channel's all about helping you explore Spain like a local. And we're kicking off this 10 stop eating extravaganza right here in the Gothic Quarter, a neighborhood in Barcelona that's really hard to eat well. There's so many tourist traps here. And so we've turned down this little narrow street that's off one of the main tourist drags, Carrer Perichol. And this place has been famous for its chocolate shop since the 17th century. So we're gonna start with the typical breakfast of champions here in Barcelona, a huge chocolate bomb. Let's go. So here we are in Granja Dulcinea. Now this place has been open since 1941 as a granja, and before that it was a, a bodega or a wine shop. And so what does granja mean? Because it's something you're gonna see throughout Barcelona. And granja means farm. And what happened is that back in the old days, these places used to provide a lot of the milk products to the people who lived here in Barcelona, and they would actually have cows in the back. And so now a lot of these places survive as places for coffee, for chocolate, for sweets, and of course that means breakfast in Spain. And there is one thing you have to try when you're in Barcelona, especially you have a sweet tooth and a way to start, and that is a suizo. So here it is, the suizo. This is just, you, you only see them in Barcelona and Catalonia. It's chocolate, melted chocolate, like you'll get in other parts of Spain, but with this massive dollop of whipped cream on top. And then you need to ask for it with a melindro or a churro, and that's what you're gonna dunk in there. Mm. The cool cream, mm. the warm chocolate. This is the way to start the day. So when you're eating this, make sure that you really mix that chocolate in. So you get all, sometimes the gooey or bits sink to the bottom. So you want to mix it up and mm, perfect start to the day. Yoli, I need a glass of wine now. Chocolate down, cream down, kava coming up. Let's hit the market. So here we are in the Santa Catarina market, right in the center of Barcelona, in the Born neighborhood. And this is one of my favorite markets, or kind of my favorite market to visit here in Barcelona, because it's a true functioning, traditional neighborhood market. And it's still right here in the center, and it's a real place to get a sense of how these markets work in the city and in Spain. We come here in our Tastes and Traditions of Barcelona food tour, and I want to take you to two of the wonderful vendors that we visit on that tour, Bar Joan y Antonio Iberix. Let's go. 
Okay, stop number two, it's alcohol time. I feel like sometimes I'm alcoholic that I'm drinking really early, but this is typical. Everybody along this bar almost is drinking a beer or a glass of wine. And we're at Bar Juan, which is a bar that's been here for 25 years. Juan is actually not here right now, but his family are. A lot of the people who work here are family members. They say, here's Oscar, who's actually not a family member but he calls himself an adopted family member. So it's a family run business. It's so integral to the neighborhood, to the market here. And I love this place. Salute to Barcelona, salute to you guys. Let's dig in. Yoli, you've got your glass there. Morning, Salud. salute. <laughs> Buenos dias. Buenos dias. <laughs> Hey, so just one thing, behind me you can see those two people drinking beer, I love it. And what I love about it is they don't look like the kind of people who'd be drinking beer at 10 a.m. on a Tuesday, but there you go, that's the beauty of this culture. Okay, so I have my food here, and you might be thinking, hang on James, you're eating an English breakfast. Well, I said to Oscar, you know, I want something strong, I want something, you know, something rustic. And he said, what about sausages, a fried egg, and a fried pepper, and I'm like, let's do it. So, a Catalan almuerzo. This is a country that knows how to fry an egg. Fantastic local sausages that have this bit of pork and have this wonderful kind of pepper flavor to them. And then the fried green pepper is so yum. So very good. Just what I needed. Yeah, all right. 10 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Okay, so next stop in the market is Iberix Antonio. Antonio is here, he's been here for 30 years serving jamon, cured meats, the whole gamut. And I've got here a few little bits and pieces that he's put together. We've got a ham, of course, we've got jamon serrano, normal, jamon iberico from the black hoof pig, but also two Catalan meats that I really wanted to show you guys longaniza and fuet. So these are meats that are just pork sausages. They're really simple and they're so delicious, especially with wine. Wet is literally pork and a little bit of pepper and no other spices. And longanita is similar. This one has black pepper around the outside. It's so ad it's addictive, right, Yoli? Yeah, it's so yummy. <laughs> and fuet actually means whip, because you'll see they're nice and long, so whoosh, like literally what you will whip people with. I mean, you don't whip people with fuet, that would be weird. That would be a fetish. <laughs> <laughs> of fetishes. <laughs> so one thing I love about the market is it's a great place to try these foods like cured meats, cheese and things like that that normally would be quite expensive to order in a tapas bar. So you can come here, you can do a little tasting maybe. <laughs> Next stop. So there's one dish I wanted to try here in the market to show you guys because it's something you'll see on a lot of menus here in Barcelona and throughout Catalonia and I love it and I don't know if it's going to be served at any of the other places we're going to. So there's a place here on the market that does it and it's Escalivada. Escalivada is effectively roasted red and green pepper and onion. It's a really traditional dish historically and traditionally from the rural areas and you roast the peppers, you roast the onion and then you peel off the skin and then you let it cool and get to room temperature. It's quite a popular dish in summer and it is a wonderful way to eat vegetables Mm. Oh, so good. I love it when those peppers have that sweetness, but a little bit of bitterness still mm. in the roast onion. Mm. Yum. We're taking this home for dinner, Yoli. Okay, we've left the Santa Catarina market and now we're going deeper into the Bourne. This neighborhood that I love. Beautiful winding streets, wonderful places to eat, and so much fascinating history. It's also known as La Ribera, which means the seashore, because literally 500 or so years ago, the seashore was a five minute walk that way. It's now a 20 minute walk that way to Barceloneta. But what happened is that a lot of land has been reclaimed over the years. Well, this neighborhood became wealthy back in the 13th, the 15th century, when a lot of wealthy merchants lived here and built their palaces here with all the money they'd made trading through the Mediterranean. So you'll see these wonderful old buildings. It just has such a great atmosphere. I love it. And we're gonna go to three different places now in the neighborhood and check out some amazing historic shops and eat some fantastic food. Let's go. This place, Casa Gispert, founded in 1851. And man, just touching it, it's like, it, it still looks like it's 1851 in there. And this place is called the Colmado. And if you went to the market back then for your fresh goods, this is where you came to get your spices, your coffee, your nuts, your chocolate, all those different things. And it was actually in the same family until about 1995. And I read that the last sort of descendant who was running it decided to become a nun. And it was bought by another family and they run it today. And they've really kept the integrity of this place. And Man, let's go in and check it out. Cool. Mm. 
Okay, so I've ordered a selection of a few things to try that are really typical from this place and really, really delicious to show you what you know you should order, you should buy when you come here. But walking in here, it's like a time machine, this shop, the smell, the light, it's just magical. So I've selected a few things that I think are indicative of Casa Gisper. And if you're coming here and you want to grab some snacks when you're exploring the city, it's, it's a great place to pick them up. So we've got macadamia nuts, which are, oh my God, delicious. We've got the almonds that they roast themselves. They actually have their own oven and mm, mm, the almond skin on have this beautiful kind of smoky flavor to them okay and this one what they've got is an almond covered in chocolate but mm, it's like beautiful milk chocolate with a dusting over the top and then they do this guy which is called a codol which is unique to here and it's codol means river stone in catalan and it's a macadamia nut covered in white chocolate and then covered in dark chocolate see if i can bite it so you can see inside oh my god it's so good the dark chocolate on the outside, the white chocolate, the macadamia, the sweetness of the macadamia. It's like the perfect snack when you're exploring Barcelona. Okay, let's keep eating. There's something else really sweet, super sweet, that we need to try and you need to try while you're in Barcelona. Let's go. So guys, this place is called Hoffman and it's a pastry shop, it's a cooking school, it's a whole bunch of different things. Started in the 80s by a woman who is the daughter of a Catalan and a German. So a real mix, hence the name Hoffman, doesn't sound super Catalan. And now as well as being a famous cooking school, they also have this little pastry shop here where they make the most incredible pastries, including their signature croissant that has mascarpone inside. For me, it's the best, but they have a whole bunch of other other ones as well as as well as the typical classic butter one but this one is pure evil <laughs> in, a, in a croissant it is just insane i'm gonna break it open for the camera here it is evil <laughs> You would not be surprised to know that on our Tastes and Traditions food tour, this is often people's favorite taste out of all the things they eat. I mean, look at that. Gooey, creamy mascarpone, and then on the outside, there's the flaky croissant, and then there's this sort of glaze over the top. Mm. It's really sweet on the outside with that glaze, but the inside has a, has a slight kind of bitterness to it. Hey. I'm floating in heaven, baby, right now. Yeah. Weak at the knees. Mm -hmm. I want to see what it looks like when you eat it. Okay. I think we all do. Oh wow. Confirmed, yeah? Confirmed? Best croissant ever. So when you're in Spain, there's a sweet that we eat at Christmas, but you can try it any point in the year. You'll get them in different parts of the country, but they're made in Alicante, and it's called Turron. And it's kind of like nougat a little bit, but it's much better. And there's this place here in Barcelona. This is our next stop. It's called La Campana, and they have been making it since 1890. And they've had this shop open since 1920. And since 1890, this business is still in the same family. So let's go inside. Oh, <laughs> Bailando. Here we have Laura and Bea. They're the two sisters that run this shop. They're the fourth generation making this amazing turron that we're going to try now and tell you guys all about. And we're also going to try a really special drink here. So, gracias, chicas. And so, what is turron? This thing we eat at Christmas and it's so delicious and, well, kind of good for you because it gives you a lot of energy. Uh, it's basically some really simple ingredients it's egg, honey, sugar, and nuts mixed together, toasted. And what you get is you get one of the most common ones is this hard turron that is really really hard and delicious and you break it off and then there's the softer stuff that has more ground up almonds in it and tastes almost like peanut butter and it has that kind of consistency i've got this plate here with some to try i'm not going to get too crazy yoli don't worry <laughs> so the hard stuff mm, i really like the hard stuff oh man you can taste the honey the nuts the almonds oh man really really good i like the hard stuff and then my guilty pleasure is the soft mm. stuff the peanut buttery oh man and so they have this other one, which is caramelized egg yolk. Oh yeah. Okay, and there's another thing you need to try in Spain when you come here, particularly if it's summer, and that's horchata. Now, if you're from the States, you might think horchata is rice milk, because I think that's what horchata from Mexico is made of. But here in Spain, it's made from tiger nuts. As my brother often says, poor tigers. <laughs> but no, tiger nuts are actually tubers that are dug up. It's something that was brought to Spain by the Moors, the cultivation of this, and then it's ground up, these tubers, then mixed with water and sugar to create this incredibly refreshing drink that literally, for me, the first horchata of summer is like a ritual. It is so thirst quenching, maybe even more thirst quenching than water. Seriously. It's so good. Muchas gracias, chicas. Hasta luego. Gracias. Hasta luego. Ciao.
Okay, we're now leaving the Bourne and we're crossing over the Via Layetana into the Gothic Quarter, that famous, historic, beautiful, somber, gloomy, magical neighborhood here in Barcelona. It's a really hard place to eat well. There's a lot of tourists that go there and there's a lot of tourist traps. There's a couple of places that I want to take you where you can eat well and the food is fantastic. So let's head there. So here we are in La Pineda, this tiny little gourmet charcuterie shop, wine shop here in, in the Gothic Quarter that literally if you don't know where it is, you're not looking for it, you will walk right past it, surrounded by all these kind of horrible shops. And here it's been run as a charcuterie shop since 1910 and 1930 in the same family. You can see up behind me all the hanging ham. I love these kind of places. And so we're here for our aperitif, that most magical hour of the day. It's about sort of 1 p.m. ish and this is where we're going to have vermouth to open your appetite and obviously it's a great place to eat and it's just wonderful. So vermouth is coming, we've ordered some delicious stuff. All right, let's do it. Beautiful little vermouth here, nice and long glass. It's got its little slice of orange in there, it's olive. So cheers, Yoli. You're back, let so Salud. we can see you. Hello. Very mysterious. Mysterious Yoli. Yeah, mm. there we go. Uh -huh. mm. Okay, so what have we got here in front of us? We've got these potato chips. Now, you might be thinking, potato chips, are you nuts? But literally, you can order a bag of potato chips in these places, and they're so good. And what you have to order with it is this guy, Salsa Espinaler. This is a, a Catalan sauce that's like a kind of a pepper, a red pepper sauce. It's just so yummy, vinegary, and it's often you'll put it on canned seafood, but also on potato chips. You can see that color on there, and it just... Mm, oh my God. Delicious selection of cheeses and also fried almonds. Oh my god, it looks good. And then for the brave, for the brave, the A word anchovies. Beautiful canned anchovies cured in salt and then just on their own, a couple of olives, aperitif time. Yes. <laughs> Oh my. I'm obviously getting full. I can't get the almond in my mouth. My body is starting to reject food. It feels like a goat cheese. Creamy. Mm. And this cheese is being cured in wine, hence the color. Mm. Oh my so good. These are soft, mm. smooth. I'm sure they're healthy. I mean, they've got to be. Also, a little extra that we get here because we're friends of the house is that we get to film upstairs while the hands are hanging. So let's go. They told us we have to be very careful though, Yoli. This is Santi, everybody, who, who, who runs La Pineda. <laughs> So one of the things about these old shops here in Barcelona is that the families used to live above them. So this space right here was the family home and it's tiny and they would have a little space out there looking over the shop and everything happened in here. Sleeping together, eating together. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy to think about it. Now they use it for ham storage. Yoli, if you go through there, you can see all the hams hanging from the hooks. It's incredible. Okay, we've had our aperitif, vermouth down. Next, we're gonna go to another really historic place here, tucked away and hidden in the Gothic neighborhood, a place you'll never find on your own, probably, and we're gonna have a really delicious tapa and a glass of wine. Let's go. Now it is time for tapas proper. And when I'm talking tapas proper, I'm talking bravas. And so this place, Bodega La Palma, is a classic in the Gothic quarter. It's really held on to its essence, and that's what I love about it, and the food is fantastic. And this place I actually included in the tapas video I did here in Barcelona, but on that occasion, I came here for dessert. This time we're here because they do some of the best bravas, I think, in the city, Barcelona-style bravas. And when you see that word bodega here in Barcelona, you know it's talking about a place that was once, or still is, a wine shop. And so you can see all these big old barrels behind me. So this place opened in 1935, one year before the Spanish Civil War broke out. And back then it sold wine, ice, I believe olive oil, soap, and things like that. And it was run by this anarchist woman. And often the people who came here, many of them artists, including Picasso, could not pay. They didn't have any money. And so they would pay by painting art on the walls. And these places now, obviously it's a restaurant, but you can see up behind me, you can see this sort of room up there. And that's where the family would have lived back when this was a shop selling wine and I just I just love it I love sitting in these places with the beautiful gothic quarter out there so how they do the bravas here in Barcelona is with brava sauce little spicy pepper sauce but also with alioli mixed together and I love the combination here they do the potatoes perfectly skin on and just the creamy garlic and alioli and the beautiful brava sauce it's really really good mm. Smoky, the paprika, really smoky and oh, the creamy alioli. You know, when you're wandering around, checking out the history of this area, check out Bodega La Palma, definitely. 
So one thing you can see here, you know how I told you that the, the former owner 100 years ago that often artists paid for their wine in painting? Well here you can see one of the remaining paintings on the wall. They literally painted on the wall. And you can actually kind of almost see that the, the influences of cubism in the painting that, that reflects the time of when it was painted. It's starting to crack a little bit. It's amazing that it's still here. It's the only one left. Very, very cool. Food and history. Let's keep going. I'm hungry. Okay, yep. we're crossing the road. We have left the Gothic. The sun is now on our faces. We've left the dark, gloomy, narrow streets of the Gothic. And now <laughs> we're heading to the sun. And the traffic light is. <laughs> and now we're going out to where the sun shines. We're heading towards Barceloneta. And that is a wonderful neighborhood. But en route, we have this little stop first. So let's check that out. So guys, this place, Can Paixano, or La Champaneria, is famous and opened in 1969 for Barcelona. This place is all about standing up and it gets really busy. It gets heaving. Right now, it's actually pretty quiet. Sometimes you're literally like this and you can't move. And what is kind of cool about this place, it's super rustic food. Everything's on the grill. Look at my butifarra. Butifarra is a fantastic Catalan sausage with onion. Real simple food. I don't know, how much was this? Three euros. And then another one, pork loin with cheese. So the bread just grilled pork loin and cheese. And then what they're also famous for is their really cheap cava. Served in these wonderful glasses. You can get it pink or you can get it normal. It's like red pill, blue pill. Mm, so flavorful, oh my god. Crazy simple food, some might say hangover food. Only about three euros for this guy. I want to know from Yali what her favorite wine is as a super taster. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Good. Yummy, yummy. It's very sweet, right? It's even kind of fruitier, so I will go for this one. Yeah. Get the white one. Yummy. If you're in Barcelona and you have a big night and you're hungover, you should come to this place. This is a breakfast of champions. <laughs> All right. Next stop is this really famous, really tiny tapas bar in the Barceloneta neighborhood. I want to show you what this neighborhood is like and tell you a little bit about it as we walk there. Let's go. So welcome to the Barceloneta neighborhood. These straight streets, all perpendicular, kind of like New York, are very different from the Bourne, the Gothic, those medieval winding dark streets. And so remember when I said that the seashore used to come up to where the Bourne was? Well, we would be out to sea back then, 500 years ago. But what happened is as the sea slowed as the land was slowly reclaimed and as the Bourne really just got packed with people inside the medieval walls well in the 18th century they had to put the people somewhere so they built this neighborhood right out on this peninsula of kind of reclaimed land first bricks were laid in 1753 they were single-story dwellings and over the years they've built up and it's been originally a fisherman's neighborhood then industry and now it's famous for its seafood and there's some great restaurants here so we're gonna head for two of them first we're going to a famous place for tapas and then we're going for the famous Fidewa. So guys, this place is really special. La Cova Fumada. There's no sign above the door. It opened in 1944 and it's an institution here in La Barceloneta. It used to be the place where fishermen and people from the neighborhood would come and cook their own dishes and drink wine. And now it's converted to a place where they cook the food here they can eat. It's rustic. It's full of locals. It's loud. So let's go into La Cova Fumada. Let's check it out. So the dishes are starting to come out. The first one I've got here is the famous bomba, a dish that is famous here at La Coba Fumada and potentially invented here. Supposedly it represents a bomb because it's a, it's a fried ball of meat and potato with alioli and spicy brava sauce on top. Look at this guy. This is fried calamari just a la plancha with some garlic and parsley on top. I mean unbelievable. And also we have sardines. So grilled sardines again parsley and garlic on top. I mean just look at it. It is it, it just looks it's just so fresh. It looks amazing. This is the kind of place I love. It's so yummy, it's a, wow, spicy as well, it's the heat coming on. This is comfort food, man. This is a dream. This is how I love seafood, just pure, fresh, lightly grilled. You must come to this place. Wow, it just tastes like a beach holiday. <laughs> Super spectrum. Flavor so fresh. I mean, the lady is there cutting everything that has just arrived from the sea, I guess. And yeah, unbelievable. So, 
<laughs> Sorry, this is really piggy, but uh, it's the only way I could go about it. It looks beautiful. Again, so very fresh. Wow. One really important thing though to keep in mind for La Cova Fumada is to get there early. It opens at 9 a.m., kitchens open at 9 a.m., closes at 3 p.m., although it does open a bit later on the weekends, I believe. But you want to get there early because that's when it seems a lot of the locals are before it does a lot of tourists arrive, and that's when the queues start. So, you know, get there and have lunch, have an 11 a.m. lunch and just drink cheap wine, eat seafood. It's a magical place. This is the reason you travel. All right, one more stop, and it's more seafood. Let's do it. Okay guys, last stop, Can Ramonet. This place is famous for its seafood, its paellas, and its fideuá, which is what we're gonna try. And this building was the first building to be built here in La Barceloneta in 1753, which is pretty incredible. It's been a bodega, then a restaurant for about 60 years. It's in the fourth generation, this place. Let's check it out, I love it in here. So this place, Can Ramonet, Can meaning house, Casa Ramonet, Can is house in Catalan, has been in the same family for four generations and they do fantastic seafood here and rice dishes. We actually come here on our Taste and Traditions tour for paella at the end of the tour, but we're gonna do a little twist today. We're not getting paella, we're gonna get a fideuá, which is paella's pasta cousin. So this is a dish where you're gonna see, which is base of seafood, but instead of having rice, it has little fideos, which are little noodles that you'll see in dishes down the east coast of Spain and so if you're having lunch in Barcelona and you're at a bit of a rustic place then there's one way that you need to drink wine and that is from a porron and how do you drink it like this the key is the flick at the end I always get it wrong and I always dribble it on myself but uh Yoli, you good. you're up my turn huh yeah your turn I think I might be hopeless with this let's see okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. What do you do? Madre mía. Qué barbaridad. Wow. Bueno, lo tenemos aquí. Yeah. Una especial para vosotros. Ole de verdad. Smells incredible. So enjoy it. Thank you Thank very you. much. Muchas gracias. Yeah, uh, so what I love about the fideuá is that it's just, it's different from paella. It's got its own unique texture and flavor and I think it's really great to try something a little bit different. And the fact that it's always seafood and it's originally a seafood yeah. dish. Oh yeah. Really rich fumé. Like, so the fish stock that they use, they cook the fideos and gives them so much flavor and it's a very intense seafood flavor. And then the alioli. Mm, wow. I know you're very full, mm. go on. Mm. You know, sometimes, I'm just going to say this softly, but um, sometimes I prefer fideuá to paella. Uh oh I know, I know, I know, I'm gonna get it. I mean, but why compare though? There are different dishes, you know, so I love this well, you one. you just compared them. I know, <laughs> silly me. <laughs> Perfect combination, the alioli with uh, fideuá. Mm. Yoli alioli. Someone called Yoli, Yoli Alioli in the comments. Actually, Yoli gets a lot of names in the comments, often because people don't know Yoli as a name. And so there's Yola, Yoli Alioli, Yols, Yols, Yol, Yol, Yolandi, Yolandi, Yolander, Yolander. We had Yolander? Yolander is. The Yolander. Yolander. I like that. The Yolander Meister. The Yolander, Yolander Meister. <laughs> I like Yoli Alioli. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite. Ali Ali oh, Ali Ali oh, Salaya San Sebastian has a problem. Turn around and everybody arrived. It's really small and it's really delicious. So good. Ah, oh, delicious taco. This city has more Michelin stars per capita than anywhere in the world. Aha. In 2017, two million tourists visited the city of only 185,000 inhabitants, driving up prices, complicating housing, overcrowding the narrow streets, and giving rise to tourist trap pincho bars. And the problem is at its worst here, in the tiny, beautiful, historic old town, La Parte Vieja. People fly here from across the globe to eat some of the most delicious food in Spain. Strike that, the most delicious food in the world. I have dreamed of this moment, it is so good. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? 
It's very good. Long time. Since. I know, it's been a while. So, Asani, how long have you lived in San Sebastian? Nine years now. Nine years. And what industry do you work in? Hospitality and tourism. I want to get some insights, some help from you as a local and a tourism professional of if there's a way that we can explore and eat in this part of the city without making life absolute hell for the locals. We will. We will do so respectfully. Respectfully. Venga, let's go. Usually behind the bar you have these little hangers that are very useful so you don't bump into anybody. <laughs> I see a huge selection of pinchos on the bar. Is there anything you would recommend from the bar? We have the white fin tuna or albacore, then the salt cured anchovy, our manzanilla olives without the peat and a little vinaigrette on top. It's super refreshing, perfect for summertime. Your eyes just go to the pinchos on the bar. You've got to keep in mind that these are just the cold ones that there is. You know, so often we're actually ordering from the kitchen and we can see that there's pinchos here. These are the ones that are cooked in the moment. Get a few of these, get a gilda, get a few things, that, but don't just buffet style all this stuff. This looks like calamari, but it's white asparagus. My old enemy, my old friend. Yay. Nothing. It's so Spanish, the broken egg on top, mm, you know. Oh, that's really good. I was not expecting that. And what have we got here, Osane? Bocado de verano. The bite of summer. That is the tomato. We have some onion in here, the piparras, and the white fin tuna. Mm. I feel healthier already. No, it's really good. Osane was telling me the story of this bar, and I find it fascinating. So it was run for many, many years by a woman. It was very traditional and local. She was going to retire, but there was no one in her family to take it over. Obviously, a lot of people wanted to take it over. It was a popular place, good business. But she chose, she selected the person who would take it over, who would keep the traditions alive. And she chose Mohammed, who's the owner now. He's been running it for three years. He's won awards for his pinchos. They want to make sure that it gives back to the community in a way that it will support the way we live, yeah. but also being welcoming to others who might be coming to enjoy our food and our culture. La gente de casa es la gente de casa y el turista sí. es el invitado. Tienes que tener mucho cuidado claro. en, en las cosas un poquito, los precios y, tal, y el producto también es muy importante. Porque si tú le dices, hay para el turista y no hay para el de casa, dice, ¿qué pasa? Que yo soy menos sí. que un turista, claro. porque el turista lo puede pagar y yo no puedo pagar. Yeah. No. Es mejor no entrar en ese juego. Claro. Ya. Agur. You said agur. I think using local language is a part of kind of showing respect to the locals. So I want to learn a few words in 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 Euskera. Hello, Kaisho. Kaisho. Goodbye, agur. Agur. Thank you, Eskerikasko. Onegin. Onegin, which means. Bon appetit. Okay, so this next place we're going to, they've agreed to open just for us to serve us some food. Ormazabal. Ormazabal. Right opposite La Viña, which is super famous, and it means that this place often gets ignored. I'll follow you in, let's go. All right, let's go. So while there's so much kind of chaos outside, we've come into this place run by Arancha. It's been in her family since the 50s. What she said, and she doesn't want to be on camera, is there's kind of two types of bars that have developed in San Sebastian. There's the places that are really focused on tourists. Those places have more frozen food because they have to almost like industrialize their food production. But she said there's, there's other places that have really kept the traditions alive. The places that we're going to today, some of them are old and some of them are new, but they're places that are done with pride and love. She also didn't generalize about Tourists. She said there are tourists who come to her bar, but they come in small groups. They come with, with respect. They are searching for the flavor. They're searching for the tradition. They're searching for the culture, the local culture. I'm going to read it in Basque. Iskuntza bat ez da galtzen, ez dakitenek ikasten ez dutelako. Dakitenek itz egiten ez dutelako baitzik. And what does that mean? That means a language is not lost because those who don't know it don't learn it. It's lost because those who know it don't speak it. Bacalao. So here we have the beef cheek okay, with the mashed uh, potatoes, okay. a little bit of parsley. Here we have the uh, codfish comfy with roasted green peppers and onions. She made sure to mention this was a piquillo pepper sauce, homemade, homemade, homemade. piquillo sauce. All right. Just rich, simple, but delicious and kind of soul food. 
Arancha's home cooking comfy codfish with piquillo pepper. Mm. Done with love home cooking. This is like what your boss grandmother is cooking. I swear this tastes like my grandmother's. But this has happened to me in a while, you know? Oh my gosh. She passed away um, in January. Your grandmother? Mm. Yeah. And she would I'm make sorry, food out of anything. Like she was a master of leftovers. <laughs> I swear. And she always had like such bad wine. <laughs> the worst wine she could get. That's also traditional. Yeah, huh? she would eat me the worst wine. I so like, no, no, have some wine for lunch. I'm like, Grandma, I don't want that wine. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. You're great at everything else, I'm not having that wine. Yeah, oh my gosh. So many memories, James. Yeah. With that tiny bite, like I'm so thankful that these places still exist, and let's let's just come here and 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 do them justice and and visit in a respectful and an understanding way, so they can keep on surviving, you know, and we can keep on eating these things that provoke these emotions. Es okay. que ricasco arancha, agur. Oh, I fell in love. What a woman, huh? Even though you guys didn't get to see any of her, I hope I was able to capture some of that because it was pretty important, I think. She's a true best woman. Yeah, right? What does yeah. that mean? She's tough but loving. Tough but loving. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a true Basque woman. <laughs>I wanted to show you a book that I really loved and uh, the author just got it translated to Spanish because the original one was in English. So this is an amazing cookbook mm -hmm. and it's uh, Basque recipes. Yes, it's all about Basque cuisine and culture. Okay. She's not really local, you know, for yeah. us it's not a matter of if you were born here, but yeah. if you are part of our crowd, yeah. so to say. If you yeah. understand, you re respect, yeah. right? You exactly. said it's yeah. about respect. respect. Whether it's the language or the time you come or the way you follow the kind of unwritten rules it's about I, I love that word use i wasn't expecting to respect yeah. you know okay so we're going to take a break for a second because i want to thank the sponsor for this video longtime viewers of this channel will know that i've spoken about skillshare before it's an online community with thousands of classes for people who want to learn new skills or explore their creativity and so i took this class by a great youtuber called nathaniel drew called creativity unleashed and it's about how you can kind of get creatively unstuck if you're looking to start a creative project or you know in my case evolve the creative project that you're already doing and he said suggested that you look at everything in your work as a form of experiment and as a perfectionist myself that really freed me the idea that I can experiment with these videos so here I am making a video that's not just about eating in San Sebastian but is also about the challenges of over tourism and hopefully it doesn't suck. If you have a specific skill that you want to learn, Skillshare is a fantastic place to start. There's everything from creative topics like music and, and photography and film and video to business topics. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So happy learning and let's keep eating. So, oh my I'm God, a line to go in yeah. before it opens. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, Sua, what, right. why are we here? What's this place about? Mixed between the roots, so yeah. traditional cooking, yes. with the modern twist. Yeah, Sua means fire in Basque, but this one is with two S for okay. San Sebastian. You gotta check this out. Ooh. That's it. There you go. Shit. Oh my God, it's so tender. Oh my God. Ooh, and there's some heat. Oh, that's a delicious taco. It's really busy now in the streets. You can really feel it. So what would it be like walking around here in low season? It would feel like more airy. You can breathe more locals around because they're not away on holidays. So you do have more of a, like a, a true feeling of the city. What is this? This is 
salpicón de bogavante. Okay, so it's like a bogavante salad. So how do I eat this? How do you recommend? You open your mouth wide and all <laughs> right. the way yeah. <laughs> Okay. The smoothest, it's like, of the lobster. It's just really smooth and creamy, and that beautiful lobster flavor. Osani, oh, this is like beautiful, this dish. This ajo, I mean, I love ajo blanco, the ground almonds, but uh, with the scallop in there. It's like two things that I love. And there's like seaweed in there. Exactly, it's wakame. Seaweed, wakame. and there's also some roasted almonds. Wow, San Sebastian, and particularly this old town, is kind of like a test kitchen for young chefs and for great dishes. The demand that comes from tourism is part of driving a lot of this innovation because there's just so many people eating constantly and so much sort of friendly competition between the chefs. I have a little bit of the coral and a little bit of the scallop. Oh, I'm about to drop some. Got to move fast, pressure's on. Oh, that is so good. Like, it's mm -hmm. delicate. The ajo blanco is a little bit warm. It's so velvety. It, it is, it's velvety, exactly, which is exactly what ajo blanco and scallops are together with the nuts, a little bit of crunch from the nuts. In 2019, the Michelin star chefs of the region got together and created a list of the 99 best pinchos here in the city. There's this energy around the idea of having the best. It's, everyone's kind of competing for it. And this place, Casa Urola, has three of them. It's one of the only places that has actually three of the 99, including this delicious ajo blanco and scallop dish. And if you're curious, there's an app called Pinchos. I'll link to it below, where you can actually see the 99 Pinchos listed and where to get them. So it'll help you on your Pincho route planning. I would. You turn around and everybody arrived. Yeah. For using your videos, we've arrived. We've always been. Oh, thank you. And it's been a massive help. Thank you. This place uh, used to be a place of gathering for men that wanted to watch sports on the TV while they were having some pinchas. It slowly turned into one of the best places where you can have pinchas in town, and we're here for it. Squid with uh, with a parsley sauce, grilled. Oh my god! It's tender. It's perfect amount of salt. The parsley sauce. So good. <laughs> so Osane, do locals come to this bar, for example? Like, the locals come here? They do, they come. Yeah. It's a wonderful mix of locals and visitors. And how can we coexist with the locals without being, you know, it, it's not like these are built for tourists. Usually these places function properly because there's a rotation. So if you see, like, someone's about to finish the drink, just like stay nearby to grab that spot. Okay. But once you're finished, make sure to leave everyone else some room okay. to enjoy the delicacies of that place too. So we have slow cooked beef cheek, right? You don't even need this. The proof's in the pudding. Okay. Wow, yeah, that is really, really good. So another good tip for being inside of the bar and being in the right environment, in the right scene with the locals, is just try not to wear anything too bulky when you go in, because it tends to be packed. So we don't want to be that one person knocking people down. That's what I'm doing yeah. right now. Literally, I'm wearing a backpack with all my gear and I'm breaking, breaking Osane's rules already. <laughs> this is the key about visiting a place you know, this is a local bar, locals come here. It would be ridiculous to say, I'm not gonna go there, right? Exactly. These people are passionate they're to support them, but we gotta go there mindfully, right? Exactly, you have to be aware of your surroundings. ¿Qué piensas de la tensión que hay entre el turismo y el bienestar de los donostiarras? Pues, vaya pregunta. Nada, pues es, a ver, yo a veces entiendo que puede, ser, puede llegar a ser normal el, el que se sientan incomodados. Sí. Pero es como digo yo siempre, también todos los dos tierras nos vamos de vacaciones y, y, y joder, invadimos el territorio de alguien donde vamos. O sea. sí. yeah. I know who you are. All right, cheese. Nice to meet you. Cappadocia, it's new, it opened like right before the lockdown wow. and uh, there's three owners, all of them are young and from the Basque yeah. country, they're local, they've been working for years in the industry. Hola, encantado, Caixo. 
Okay, so no pinchos in the bar is the kind of the deal here. I mean, everything comes from the kitchen, right? Everything fresh out of the kitchen. Here, I think we should have the oxtail sandwich and the chipigettis, which is a little playful dish made up with a squid that looks like spaghetti. Oh, it's soft, it's tender. Wow. I don't often order bull tail stew as like a dish because it's just too much, it's too rich. And so what I love about this is you can get this like bite of it, these like three bites of it, you get all the intensity and the richness and then you're done. And I think that's important to also mention, yeah, there's a very famous cooking school here, the Basque Culinary Institute. And again, the international fame of San Sebastian and its food and all the people that visit has led to people from all over the world coming to train here as well. This is like a one of the most important gastronomic centers of the world. Food HQ. So this dish is squid tentacles as a spaghetti and a ragu made from squid. It looks like a bolognese, but the whole dish is squid. Go in. Mm. Oh, wow. It's a bolognese sauce with squid. It's not super squiddy. But do you think there's too many tourists in San Sebastian? I mean, San Sebastian is too small. It gets too crowded. And... No, I love, we love tourist people. Yeah. Uh, not everyone, but <laughs> like everyone, I think so. Brit I tell you to avoid sangria in Spain, but, but Charlie here is making his own sangria, which I think you should try this one. Sugar. Gin. This is rum, yeah? Pacharan. <laughs> oh, no, no. Really? Lemon juice and orange juice. I think I have a good sangria recipe, but I think you might have beat me. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> Sangri Charlie. Ooh. You know how that's good? Because you don't realize how dangerous it is. Sangri Charlie. Okay, I, we have 15 minutes before that hits. Oh my God, if I had drunk all of that, that would be a wonderful day and a terrible afternoon. Terrible night. Terrible night. <laughs> okay, so this place, three generations of family have run it. Uh, and what are they famous for? <laughs> They're famous for their anchovies and have their own system of curing and preserving them. That's been in the family for 180 years. 180 years? Yes. You grab it by the toothpick and careful because if you twist it, you know, the anchovy will fall off and it will okay. break. So anchovy, piparra, those peppers we saw, and olive. Okay. Mm. Mm. So many things happening in your brain and mouth at the same time. Uh, I like, I want to weep. <laughs> with joy and also because it's so sour. Like, I, I have tears. I have tears. Right. Chopped red and green pepper on the on the bucket on, and also one with what kind of jam is it? Homemade blueberry jam. I feel like a lot of pressure on this pinch. I mean, like, Osani's like watching me, like, will he do it well? There's no wrong way. I will apologize again. Mm. It's more flavorful than I thought it was going to be. Okay, I'm going for the blueberry jam one. Oh, that's addictive. This is my all-time favorite. We're holding our microphones close because it's a little loud here because literally we came in here at midday and by 12.15 it's packed. Should I come at a different time of year? What do you think? What are the benefits for me and for the locals? Well, for you, you would have uh, more personalized attention because okay. there's less crowd. When it comes to the quality of life of those in the city, it would yeah. mean that the workers would not only be working in high season, just like killing themselves doing extra hours. That would mean spreading all these contracts into okay. the leg season and into the low season. Que ricasco! Agur! Next stop. Stacked up here, they have burnt Basque cheesecake that they made famous and now it's famous all over the world. So the three textures, we've got creaminess, we've got the caramelizedness, the bouncy cakiness. Is this the most famous cheesecake in the world right now? I feel like every, somebody sent me on Instagram a message the other day, I said, where can I get the burnt Basque cheesecake in Malaga? And they're like, I don't know, but it's from La Vina in San Sebastian. There's a shop in Japan that serves this. In Turkey, in the UK, it's everywhere. And it's yeah. from here, it was invented here. <laughs> Like weak at the knees. I, I remember what this is like. It's I've, I've dreamed of this moment. It is so good. It's like you can't stop. 
And it's got that burnt yeah. thing which cuts away the, the sweetness as well. 15 volume right here, it's called nectar for nectar. reason. So we're gonna just like pour a little bit over there. Look at the shine. Now this is owner's recommendation. Wow. And it's not about sweet, it doesn't even, it, it's sweeter obviously, but it's also about like the, the intensity of like the, the sherry aging on it, you know? Oh, very cool. You enjoying San Sebastian? Yeah. I feel like every time I step out, it's like, ah. ah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm in Seville, one of the best places in Spain to eat tapas, and I'm crossing the Guadalquivir River to go over to Triana, one of the proudest neighborhoods in this city. We're gonna go on a tapas crawl. We're gonna eat at several tapas restaurants. It's gonna be a true neighborhood, local tapas crawl across these amazing places. And I have a team behind me tonight. We've got Jamie, we've got Kyra, we've got Haley, we've got Lauren, people from Devour Tours, and we're gonna be exploring it together. These guys live in Seville, so they're gonna be helping us out. Is it gonna be amazing? Of course. Lots of tapas, lots of Seville tapas, super local, in a neighborhood, Triana, where bullfighters and flamenco dancers are from. It's gonna be delicious, so let's go. So guys, we're here in a very typical Sevillano bar, uh, Bar Santa Ana. It's been open for over a hundred years. The walls are covered with fantastic, wonderful images of Semana Santa, of Easter week, which is such a big deal here in Seville, and of virgins. And all these paintings, all these uh, photos, are actually gifts that over the decades have been given to the owners of the bar. What a special place. We're gonna have a vermouth to drink, uh, and we're gonna kick off with more tapas. Cheers, guys. <laughs> I've almost finished my piece of cheese. It's a mixture of sheep, uh, cow, and goat's milk. Mm, creamy, beautifully cured, delicious. One of the great things about going out for tapas in Seville is that you can actually order tapa sizes. So menus come uh, with kind of three columns, a tapa column, a media ration column, and a ration column. And each one is uh, larger than the one before. So you have a lot of flexibility for ordering for one or two people, and you can really try a whole bunch of dishes. So Haley, tell us what we're drinking here. Absolutely, we're having some vermouth casera, or homemade vermouth. Homemade um, vermouth. Which is a fortified, aromatized wine. It's ham time. It's always ham time, early in the night. Mm. No matter how long you live in this country, you will never get tired of ham, which suggests that you're, you're coming for just a, a few days or a few weeks or whatever it is, um, you just have to go nuts. Pairing it with homemade vermouth uh, that they make and have specially here in this bar. Delicious. The bells are ringing behind me as we line up beside our next tapas bar, uh, Cervecería La Grande, famous for its shrimp. Let's go and check it out. So Cerveceria La Grande, like all great seafood or marisco bars, it has that smell of, of, of just fresh shrimp, of, of seafood, it's delicious. You have it with beer here, so we've got some shrimp coming. I love this place already. Yeah. Gotta remove the head, then you start picking at the legs so that you can go around and take the body off. I'm doing a really great job of it. <laughs> shrimp going in. Mm. I love that you peel them and drop them in your mouth. It tastes so fresh. And if you're someone who doesn't like that, seeing the head on your shrimp or wants your shrimp deveined, well, you're in the wrong country. Sorry. This is where it gets real uh, and it's amazing. Sometimes I even don't even totally peel them, I just drop them in. It's all roughage. <laughs> okay, we've started light and now we're heading to our next stop, which is one of the most famous tapas bars in Triana. It's a must stop in Triana. This place has been open since the 1960s and they have one particular tapa, one dish that is so famous that you don't even have to order it by name. You just say, dame una, give me one of those, give me one of them, and they will serve you this tapa. And that's what we're gonna try. Okay, I'm in love. Right here we have some of the wow, finest Jimmy. pork loin in the world on bread and on a bed of potato chips. I mean, stop. And also we have over here, because you get your vegetables in Spain as well, radish with extra virgin olive oil and beautiful sea salt over the top. Man, I love this combination. Okay, and one more dish just arrived. Uh, mushrooms with garlic and parsley alioli. Here we go. Thank you, Haley. A little hard to pick up. All right, going in. Wow. 
perfectly grilled mushrooms, really parsley and garlic flavored, uh, ali oli on top. What a beautiful tapa. Okay, we've gotten excited. We love this place so much. We've ordered another famous tapa, which are the carrots, which are done in cumin, correct? They're slightly boiled with cumin. Oh my God, I love these, uh, this tapa. So it's coming now. Okay, so it may seem like a strange thing, but these carrots uh, down there, which are pickled carrots with cumin, garlic, and vinegar are one of the most incredible things you will eat in your life. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm going for more. Delicious. Delicious. Come to Las Golondrinas and try these tapas. They are amazing. Can't stop eating. Last radish. Going in there. Watch out for the oil. Mancho. Wow. It's like drinking olive oil while eating this large, crunchy, bitter thing and then a little bit of salt on the top. And it's built with a handle. It's amazing. My favorite tapa in the world right now. So, a number of bars in, the wine, the beer, the vermouth is starting to have an effect. We've had some delicious tapas so far. Now we have a reservation. Haley, we have a reservation, I believe. We have a reservation, we have a reservation at a place we're gonna sit down uh, and we're gonna eat more tapas. So, stick with us. So we're here in this spectacular bar, Casa Cuesta, opened in 1880 as a wine shop. Uh, and it's just beautiful inside, these high ceilings, the tiles, the, the, the bar, the wood, the marble top, and on the walls there are posters from the early 20th century. Easter week, it's just spectacular, uh, and we've got some delicious tapas coming, so hang out. Okay, tortilla española, uh, Spanish omelet, uh, one of the most famous tapas, and here in Casa Cuesta served in a whiskey sauce, a sauce that is so traditional here in Seville. Uh, it's reduced whiskey, olive oil, and garlic. Wow. Really good like When you live in Spain, you fall in love with tortilla. It becomes a personal obsession. And when you douse anything in whiskey sauce, it's love at first bite. Okay, next tapa, carriera or carriada, which is pork cheek. Here, slowly stewed till it's just falling apart. With a Pedro Jimenez uh, sherry, sweet sherry sauce, but it's not sweet. And it is one of those dishes that takes me right back to my grandmother's cooking. It is just beautiful, slow cooked meat in such a rich sauce served on a bed of gorgeous uh, hand cut fries. Mm. It is amazing, full of flavor. Okay, I'm super full, but we have one more stop. We're going to Una Abaceria, which is a very typical part shop, part tapas bar here in Seville. The kind of places you need to discover. This place is very hidden, opened uh, about 40 years ago. It's run by the son of a chef. We're going to be drinking sherry, so let's check it out. <laughs> this is called Abaceria La Antigua, very hidden here in Triana. It's run by the gentleman who's working the bar behind me. You can't quite see him now, but he's busy. His name is Rafa. He is a, a well-known ham carver, renowned ham carver. There he goes. Uh, and this place is run by him. And it's places like this that just make me feel so lucky to live in Spain, to live in this country. These places are beautiful. They're full of atmosphere and tradition. And to sit here and drink this gorgeous wine and chat with my friends and, and be with him, I feel very, very lucky. Salud, cheers. I am in the middle of an epic tapas crawl in Granada with local expert Marta, who is showing me the best places in town. Whoa, oh, I But I came here because of you guys, because I get so many comments from people saying, James, you have to go to Granada. They have the best tapas in Spain, in the world. I'm not convinced yet. And look, I know the tapas here are abundant and free. So this notion that we're getting all these free tapas is, is misguided. But does free, does cheap make it the best? I had to come to Granada to find out. Here tapas 
which is this, yeah. are included in the price of your drink. Marta is a friend and Granada guide extraordinaire. She offers historical tours, food tours, and more. And she's the person I need to help me demystify Granada's tapas scene. They gave us two each, which is yes. because they're ex you know they're excited we're here. Normally yeah. you would just get one, right? Exactly. Normally you just get one tapa. In this place you can choose the tapa. They will give you an assortment, like a menu. In this case we have a croqueta of jamón. Okay. And this is so yummy. Yeah, look at the bechamel here. Look at the jamón. You know, croqueta is homemade when it's got a kind of strange shape. It's not perfectly round and... That's it. The ugly is the best. Oh, yeah. Big chunks of ham, bechamel, super flavorful. We have torreznos, pork belly. This magnificent media ración that we ordered and we will pay for. Like, if I have more than three, I get a sore stomach. Because <laughs> they're, super, they're super fatty and rich and, yeah. and delicious. Yum. So good. So is it possible, like, go on a tapas crawl in Granada and not pay for any food outside the price of the drink? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fried potatoes, egg, a little bit of green pepper, right? Exactly. Mm, perfect. The key for this dish, and like what I always love about it, is the green pepper. It's like without the green pepper, it's nothing. It's fried eggs and potatoes, but that green pepper just gives it that beautiful, like, little bitterness, little sweetness. Okay. Salud. 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 It's good to be uh -huh. here. Pepe, que no lo vamos a comer. Polo ahí. Muchas gracias. Wow, I love this country, I love this city, I love this tapas tour. Best is the, the, the atmosphere here. Yeah. I think that's what makes the tapas in Granada so special. People are telling me this is the best place for tapas, so there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I agree though. You agree? Okay, I want to hear about that at the next bar. Okay, so they're just opening up. Better to be there, you know, before they open oh, because wow. the places get so crowded. And everywhere. I feel like a little like, thing in Spanish, that's a little cultural tip, means a lot, right? <laughs> a lot, a lot. Jamón asado is one of my favorite tapas and, well, raciones. There you have it, how it's being cooked. You carve it down there. Exactly. It reminds me of like a kebab. Is this? Yeah, it's the same style. I see, see? Ya contamos la tapita. Esto serían dos tapas sí. y la acompañamos con unas olivas. Got a beautiful color, Marta, and it's just all those little bits of salt. You can just tell the color from the spices. Go. Dripping with grease. Uh -huh. oh my God, Marta. Mmm, guys. Wow. Oh my yeah. God, that is so good. So yummy. It's like the rosemary, the spices, the salt. Oh my God. Alejandro, está riquísimo el jamón asado. Muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias. So the grease leads to more the fat and it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love how Marta there's like two people in this bar and I can't hear myself think. That is that is true authenticity. Okay, so here we have callos. Normally callos tripe are with uh, cow's tripe in Madrid, so this is pork, he said. Mm. There's a slight sweetness that they don't often have in the Madrid callos. Ensalada rusa, mayonnaise, potato, tuna. Yeah, and roasted pepper over there. Roast pepper. Yeah. That is really yummy. That is a really good one. Or should I? I should probably just eat it from the skewer. Wow. Well, <laughs> we'll try it's this. It's a remove. It is a very typical tapa. It's cool. You can cook it your own way. So yeah. it's and it's really yummy. Really? It's super yummy. I told you, I got so many comments, people saying, you gotta go Granada, the tapas are the best tapas in Spain. Are people confusing best with cheapest? Cause it's included, what, what's going on here? I do agree. <laughs> I do agree. <laughs> of course you, you agree. Know? It's all about the culture. It's all yeah. about enjoying the moment. Tapas here are more about socializing, uh -huh. about getting together, but especially about disconnecting for a while. But I feel and like that's uh, the same everywhere all over Spain. In Granada? We have many students. The atmosphere is very fun, yeah. it's very lively. Yeah. It's all about that. It's not so much because they are cheaper. Can I be honest? Sure. I'm not convinced yet. Oh. Yeah, like... <laughs> we have still to yeah, yeah, yeah. But what is it about Granada that people are getting obsessed with and saying it's the best tapas in Spain? I think I have a hunch, but I need to go to more bars to find out. Mm. 
It is getting... It's getting busy, right? You can tell. Ole. Is it a real thing? Yeah, right? Muchas gracias. Qué bien. Muchas gracias. You know, I used to come to this bar every single Sunday with my family after going to Mass. Okay. <laughs> so this is a place that has been open, I think, since 1986. And it's dedicated to the Andalusian poets like my fellow Federico García Lorca, who was born in Granada. Carne en salsa. Carne en salsa. <laughs> and the wow. one I always ordered when I was a kid. And I swear they had the same plates when I came here when I was 10, 11 years old. Oh my God, the same plates. <laughs> it's got a there beautiful go. color. Beautiful color, amazing flavor. Mm. Feels like childhood. It's the beautiful sauce, the way you can kind of mop it up. Go for it. Oh. I was an altar boy, and oh, I, we never did this after. We would maybe have a cup of tea in the church hall next door. <laughs> I might have stayed Catholic. <laughs> These two glasses of wine were two or seven sixty. So what's that? Three eighty each. So this notion that we're getting all these free tapas is, is misguided. You're just you're, you're probably paying less for the wine than you would if you were from the states or from Canada or from New Zealand, but you're paying more than you might in Madrid for the same wine. Yeah, because you have the food included of in course. there. Let's say you are too full yeah. and you say I don't want a tapa. Yeah. You should get you should get a cheaper exactly a cheaper meal. Vale. Okay, wow, we're three in. This is very cool tour. It's feeling very local. I love that the last place was your uh, after mass stop. <laughs> Okay. Well, you like what this one is for me now. Okay, I'm following you in. Let's go. Whoa! ¿Qué tenemos? Esto es con un arroz caldoso. I love the places you're taking me to, Marta. This is super cool. <laughs> Thank you. This place is really cauldrons of food that they're giving us the tapa. Very yeah. good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Hey, one each. Salud, Rodri. Salud. Ole. Ole. It's like an arroz caldoso. I've got a cangrejo de arriba. And we've got this huge fat muscle here. It's included in the drink. And you pay a little bit more, but not so much more that you're like paying a crazy amount of money for the tapa. I'm, I am falling in love with Granada, Marta. Está muy, 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 muy buena. Hombre, hombre. And this guy's out of control. I love the, I love the, the bar owner. Very cool. He just brought us this. This is not the included tapa. I think this will be three euros. Razor clams here with lemon on them. And then we've got these beautiful gambas that have just been done on the grill with a little salt on them. It's going in the razor clam. You know, you come out of places like this, Marta. It's like we were in a whole different world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. could spend hours there, kind of pulled into the vortex of wonderful tapas bars. Spain is very fun, like all over. But in Granada, there's something different. Okay, Marta, now we're entering, I can tell, in the older part of town, right? Yes, one of the older yeah. parts of town. And I know this next bar we're going to. It's, <laughs> it has a special place in my heart. Yeah. We're in the wine temple, I'm telling you. Wine everyone. temple. Wine temple. You named it. I mean, look at all of these wines up here, up here, and not just like here, everywhere. Marta, this place is a little quieter than some former places we've been in today. It's so popular, yeah. not only for the locals, yeah. but uh, especially when, when Anthony Bourdain came here. Ah, he came here? Yeah, he came here to film one of his shows, and it became such a popular spot for Americans yeah. and for you know, English-speaking people. Yeah. Okay. ¿Cuántos vinos tenéis por botella, cuántos por copa? Una barbaridad. Ay, it's good to be back, Marta. So Marta, how does the tapa work here? Do we ask for it? Or does it just come at some point? They bring it, depending on the place. Sometimes they have, you know, uh, an order, like they have the first tapa, the second tapa, okay. and they just bring it to you. The best tomatoes in town. <laughs> yeah, right? They're the best. Wow, they're just juicy. dripping with oil and with the salt on there. Yeah. And this is like some butifarra blanca or? Uh, yes, it's salchicha blanca, we Such call it. It's some cooked. Uh, oh. Sausage. Tomatoes in this country, guys. Mm. So sweet. And just the perfect amount of salt. We think of tomatoes as just like a tomato, but this is like a, a slither of this stuff is like some gourmet product. <laughs> mm, that is good. Really nice, right? Yeah. Very soft. Yeah. Mm. Ah, oh, está muy bueno. Qué rico. Beautiful. 
sausage up here. Tocino, this like cured pork belly. Podría coger un tomate para enseñárselo a la cámara. Sí. I have permission to do this. Oh my god. Ay, se me está cayendo, joder, lo siento. Es que son enormes. It's like you could do weights with this. This is like four kilos. Oof. Stay there. Don't move. Here we go. Okay, let's go. Let's go we have more bars to go to, right? Yeah. Spanish bars close for a few hours in the afternoon. So before rejoining Marta for our last few stops, I wandered the historic Albaicín neighborhood and reflected on what we'd experienced so far. And I realized I might just know why people say this city is Spain's tapas paradise. Hola, ¿qué tal? So this is like a shop that out the back. It's the backstage. The backstage. Free tapa. I mean, yeah, I know it's not free, but man, it's pretty special, huh? There's nothing like the first sip of vermouth. It's like... Right. Oh, so good. So much good So we have here our original tapa, then we ordered this. We've got jamón, some great jamón ibérico, salchichón ibérico. Uy. <laughs> no, so the speaker. That's something. Uh, chorizo ibérico, German oh, cheese, oh. truffle pate. That's good, huh? Come on, it's a bit of This is the free tapa. Mm -hmm. And this was seven euros. Yes, yes. And what about salchichón? This is underrated. Let's say it's similar to chorizo. It doesn't have paprika. It's better than chorizo. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Okay, Marta, I've been thinking about the whole tapas thing in Granada. Come and sit and let, we need to Whoa. talk. Because <laughs> you know I disagreed with you a little bit. Ooh. I think what you described is like tapas throughout Spain, right? Yeah. But it's like, what is unique? What are people talking about when they talk about this free tapas? As you've been showing me these wonderful places, I've just felt this incredible welcome in these places. And I realized there is nothing more welcoming than sitting down in a place, ordering a drink, and having them give you a plate of home-cooked food without you even yeah. asking for it. True hospitality culture. We, the locals, we keep going to bars yeah. whenever we feel that connection with yeah. the bartender. You know, if you don't get to have that, you never go back to that yeah. bar, no matter how good the food is. Bueno, Marta is taking me up the alley. I think we have a stop, though, for a moment. There's all you got to stop for the Alhambra views, right? Beautiful. I mean... That's my office. <laughs> yeah, right? That's where you get a lot of tours. We've gone into the not touristy part of the touristy part. Exactly. <laughs> you know, in the middle of summer or yeah. spring, it gets so full of tables and okay, people, yeah. you know, spontaneous flamenco. Los Caracoles, let's say, is the, the name that yeah. people have given to this place because okay. the actual name is Bar Aliatar. Aliatar. Aliatar is the name. Uh, but let's say the nickname is Los Caracoles yeah. because they are popular for this dish, for snails. A ver, wow. Okay. Están muy calientes los caracoles, sí. Mm. Ooh. I've never had it quite like that. You actually get the flavor of the snail, which often you don't get with caracoles. Okay. Mm. Ooh, it's just like this delicious, it's spicy. There's like a spiciness to that broth. If you're into snails, this is your place. I've never had one. You've never had a snail? No. And I you mean, brought I me to this sauce. bar having never had a snail. Yeah, because I know they are very yummy, but... <laughs> are you nervous about it? A little bit. I mean, I might throw up. I didn't I know, know this video was going to become you overcoming your fear of snails, <laughs> but I like that. I don't know. You're halfway in the water now. Yeah, I kind of want, but I'm not sure. Go on. I feel like I'm a Granadina. I should try this nice well, in Bar Caracol. This is your moment, and you're on, you're on national TV, live. <laughs> Oh my God, James, how Okay, what if I think it's just a... Beautiful. That's a mushroom. So it looks like a mushroom. Let's go, just like... All right. It's yummy and really spicy. <laughs> wow. I surprisingly like it. Really? Oh my, yeah. Yeah, 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 drink it. Mmm. Oh, that's also food. It's lovely. Mm. Super spicy. Wow, really spicy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like it. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, James. Yeah. <laughs> now that you love snails, you have to finish. You have a whole plate of them here. Okay, I'll go for it. <laughs> yeah. What are the best tapas bars in Seville? This city is packed with tapas bars, which makes it so hard to know where to go. But today in the historic center, I'm going to hit five of the best tapas bars in this city, and I hope you'll join me.
Hey Spain lovers, I'm James Blick and welcome to Spain Revealed. This channel is all about helping you explore Spain like a local. And today here in Seville, I'm gonna be joined by my friend and Devour Tours colleague, Kyra. And we're gonna hit five of her favorite tapas bars, a mixture of traditional and modern. And look, the first time I came to the city, I was lost. I was here with my parents, I didn't know where to eat, and we had some really disappointing uh, and expensive experiences and mistakes. So the plan for this video is to help you avoid that by telling you where to go, uh, showing you how wonderful the tapas are in the city and the wines, and everything and well it's gonna be amazing so benga let's go oh a little Easter egg I should explain why my voice sounds like this well we had a big party last night for the devour summit the devour tour summit we're having in Seville uh, and there was a lot of loud music and I was shouting a lot so that's the excuse hopefully I'll be back to normal by the next video we hope Guys, we just got here, uh, my friend Kyra, Devour Tours, uh, product director, and Edu, her boyfriend. Uh, we're in our first bar, Casa Morales. This place uh, was founded in 1850. It's still in the same family, and it is beautiful. Uh, and what are we gonna have here, Sherry? Sherry, of course. Jerez, Sherry, we're gonna start with Sherry and something light before we head it off, and I'm gonna show you a little bit. This bar has two sections. It has what used to be the old shop, which is here, and then all the tinajas, or wine vats, on the other side, which is where all the wine used to be kept and sold, because effectively, this used to be a wine shop shop. Uh, so anyway, let's explore the bar. Okay, so we're in the shop part Hola, of the bar. Guys. You can see it behind me. Uh, and now we're going to pass through to where the wine vats are, where it no, used no, to be no. effectively the, the storage room. So we've just come through to the other side of the bar. You can see the old tinajas, the wine vats behind me. And so that was, this is the part that would have operated like almost like a storage place where you came up to fill your container with wine to take home. Uh, and I love how this, this bar has two parts. There's a number of places in Seville that, that reflect their tradition by having the kind of the, the wine storage, the wine selling area, and the more shop area. And I'm drinking sherry. I haven't had breakfast. I'm starting with a fino, which is a very light, crisp sherry, totally dry, a really typical drink here in Seville. You'll see people drinking sherry all the time. It's kind of, you know, if you see my videos on Barcelona and people are drinking cava, the equivalent here is sherry. Uh, let's order some food. I need breakfast. Okay, we've ordered some tapas. Now, one of the things here when you're in Seville, Literally, you order tapas from the menu. So you'll see the word, a column that says tapas. And that's the best way to go if you're eating for one or two because it's gonna be small portions and you can eat a lot. So we have here a super, pretty cured looking manchego cheese. Mm. Wow, really flavorful, sharp, almost a little bit spicy. It's delicious. Perfect way to start, goes perfectly with the sherry. Mm, really good. All right. And this one, you're probably wondering, what is this? This is bread, obviously, and it's bacalao, so salt cod, with salmorejo on top. Salmorejo is like a garlicky tomato cold soup and a delicious combination. I'm gonna go on one bite, see how I go. Mm. Super rico. Casa Morales, love this place. All right, I'm going for the second one. So these four little pieces of bread are actually two tapas. And how much are they each, about? So about 250 for two little pieces of bread and about 250 for the cheese. So a typical tapa price in these kind of more traditional places about 250 to 350, right? Yeah. So 250 to 350 is your typical tapa price. So you can kind of figure out and how many tapas would fill up a person? Five tapas? I mean, depends who you are asking, but you definitely want a few to have a Yeah, five a tapas meal. maybe. So you can eat pretty cheap in the city. Okay, we're one bar in, and now we're heading to the next place. We've started light with a, with a light drink and some light uh, uncooked tapas, but now we're gonna head to this place, Bodeguita Romero, that is famous for a very local sandwich called a fringa, and man, it is good. Okay, so here we are in Bodeguita Romero. This is a famous place for locals who wanna get some traditional food. It's just around the corner from the last place. You don't have to walk far for a good bar in, uh, in this city. So I'm having a beer. Uh, they've got Estrella Galicia on tap, which I really, really like. So we're gonna try this famous sandwich called Pringa. There's lots of places all over the city that make a Pringa, but these guys are famous for theirs. And this sandwich is small, but packed with flavor. It's got in there pork, it's got uh, chorizo, and it's got uh, blood sausage, morfia, all scrunched together, cooked, grilled, and, and my God, the mix of flavors is like a flavor bomb. All right, I'm going in. Mm, the mixture of like, it's almost like flavor of pulled pork, a little bit of blood sausage, um, chorizo, all mixed up in there. It is a, literally, as I say, a flavor bomb. You have to come to this bar and try this bringa. And you, as I say, you'll see them all over the city, but this one is magical. 
Okay, next dish is carriera, slowly stewed pork cheek. This is a delicious, famous dish that you get here in Seville, and one of the best places to get it is here in Bodeguita Romero. It's been slowly stewed, it just falls away when you when you eat it on a bed of fries, uh, and it's only 370 for this plate. This is the tapa size, remember, stick to those tapa sizes. Okay, I got this huge piece here. My God. It's just like marshmallow, the way it just kind of uh, collapses in your mouth and the flavor is so intense. All right, I'm going back in. Mm, so rich, the flavor, my God. You can taste the red wine in there. Perfect, the best carriada uh, I think I've had in Spain. One thing that's incredible about the tapas bars in Seville is the speed with which the food comes out. That stewed pork cheek, and it came out about five minutes after we ordered it, and it, so it makes it such a dynamic experience. These places get so busy, so loud, the waiters are running around, the kitchen's working in a frenetic place and it's packing out. They've, they opened it about midday and this place is heaving, uh, and it'll even get busier. It'll, it'll close about 4 p.m., but it's addictive, the energy. Okay, so we've been to two traditional places that are fantastic, two of my favorites, and now we're heading uh, to a modern tapas bar, Palo Cortao. After San Sebastian with its pinchos, it's, it's possibly, uh, uh, the best city in this country to eat tapas. All right, before we hit our next bar, I'm just gonna show you a secret little hidden spot here in Seville that I love to, to walk into and check out every time I'm here. So what this is, is uh, the courtyard of a church that's here. But actually this courtyard, which is uh, full of orange trees, was originally the orange grove uh, outside the mosque. So when the Moors invaded Spain in 711 and, and obviously conquered Seville as well, they built their first mosque here in Seville, right here. And we have these orange grove where they would uh, do their ablutions where they'd wash themselves before going into prayer. Now when the Christians arrived uh, and, and took over the city, they just, you, you, you know, you didn't rebuild things you just took it and you turned it into a church at some point they knocked it it was knocked down and they rebuilt a church here but they kept the orange grove uh, and so here we have that remnant of the moorish past and also you'll see the bell tower was originally where the minaret was and then the bells were put on top and also behind me you can see columns those are roman columns uh, so one of these things about seville it's just such an incredible mix of all these cultures uh, of the moors the christians the romans i mean it's mind-boggling all right little cultural stop done on to the next bar so the next place that kyra's brought us to palo cortao got a huge list of sherry they have 80 sherries by the glass we were just talking to Anna, who's the owner, and she organizes the whole uh, sherry list. If you want to try sherry uh, in, in this city, then this is the place to come. You can be here in the bar area, or you can go back into the restaurant. So I've ordered the Monteado. These guys have ordered the Palo Cortado. Uh, we're going to get into it, and we're going to order some food and, and, and pair that sherry with something. So if you're coming to Spain, and your concept of sherry is the sweet wine that grandma drank at Christmas, well, it's time uh, to get that sorted out. You need to come and try the sherry. Most of the sherries we drink in this country are dry. They're becoming a huge thing at the moment with sommeliers getting really excited about sherry. And if you want to try sherry the first time you're a little bit scared, uh, ask the person you're traveling with to try it and just have a smell. Wow. It smells of like honey, dried fruits. Again, remember it's dry. Now I'm going to smell Kyra's one. She's got a palo cortado. Wow, it almost smells like a sweet kind of whiskey. I'm not good at picking uh, smells and things like that. I'm hoping Yoli is much better. Haven't got her by my side today. But the smell of sherry, the taste of sherry, the flavor of sherry is just remarkable. Uh, so good. Okay, we have this dish that's just been delivered, which is a tuna pate in the shape and color of a tomato. I mean, it's pretty incredible. It's a pate on the inside. We haven't opened it up yet, and it's got a lacquer on the outside, and around it, what looks like soil is olives and mushrooms, uh, and, and then some flowers, and everything is edible. So, we're gonna crack, it almost causes me pain to crack this thing open, but we're, no, Kyra's saying there's no pain. We're gonna do it. Okay, we've destroyed the tomato. Uh, Kyra destroyed it. I feel a little bit bad, but she doesn't feel bad at all. And now I have the tuna pate here from the inside, uh, and the olive tap Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. That pate is delicious. All right, next dish we have marinated mackerel on tirabeques, which are these little kind of sweet green peas. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, my God, that is really good. The mackerel has been 
so like light, very lightly grilled. It's almost raw, but it's warm. And then there's a little like salty, almost like a soy sauce kind of concoction on top. And then the green, slightly sweetness and crunchiness of the peas. It's really, really good. So just when we thought we were able to leave, uh, the very generous and kind Anna appears to have gifted us the most beautiful cheese plate I've ever seen in the world. Uh, it's beautifully laid out with fruits and nuts and of course the cheeses. So we've got payoyo, which is a, a queso de cabra, goat's milk cheese from Cadiz. We've got maon, which is a, a cow's milk cheese from Menorca, slightly smoky. And I shouldn't really pick this up, but we're gonna crumble. But we also have here uh, cabrales, which is a mixture of goat, sheep, and cow's milk cheese from the north of Spain, from Asturias. It's been aged in caves in the Picos de Europa. So this is a, a very classic, interesting, and really delicious cheese selection, and, and very generous of, of, of Ana to, to, to bring this to us, and also a glass of palo cortado each, more sherry. Wow. Okay, I'm feeling disgustingly full, but I'm on a mission. I'm doing this for you guys. We have two more spots. Okay, so we've made it to bar number four. We're in a place called Mateo Ruiz, uh, which is famous for its bacalao rebozado. It's also, it's a bar that opened in 1918 by the current owner's father. And it was originally a place where you came to buy wines from Valdepeñas, which was a, a red wine region that distributed wine throughout Spain. Uh, and, and nowadays they're famous for their tapas. It's packed today. You can see the, the writing on the bar, the, you know, the traditional way of keeping the tab by writing on the bar. And what's interesting here is that the owners are, are deaf and dumb. And it's run by one family here. Uh, and it's a very unique place in Seville and very popular. It is packed, that's why the camera is so close to my face right now. So Kyra just said that this place is just cool. It's just cool. It's just cool, and it is pretty cool. The wine that we have here, the red, Kyra's white, is one euro. It's one euro for a glass of wine, and it's, I'm gonna be honest, it's rough as guts, but it's one euro, hey, serve chilled. So it's bacalao time, little fried bowls of cod. That is very moist. Wow. Perfect. Better. That's yummy. Very yummy. Good bacalao is hard to find and these guys know how to do it. So come here for the one euro wine and the bacalao and the atmosphere. This place is amazing and really hidden. I would never have found this. Back out into the light. Uh, it's pretty dark in there in that place. Very cool place. Very, very cool. Okay. Next stop is Modern Tapas. We're gonna have a five minute walk to the Alameda. The Alameda is a part of Seville. It's this big kind of esplanade that has uh, Roman columns at one end, actual Roman columns. And it's a, it's a famous place for hanging out in the evening, but there's also this bar called La Azotea. So we're heading there now. Okay, we're at stop number five, La Azotea. Now there are a few of these restaurants throughout the city and they're really famous. And so now we're sipping wine and we're waiting for a couple of tapas that are coming now. Uh, we have all the fresh ingredients in front of us uh, and the kitchen closes in five minutes. So we just made it for this five tapas crawl within our window of about 12 to 4, 4.30. So we did very well and I'm very, very full. Tapas are coming. Okay, so we've got first tapa up of the two. This is a taco de atun de almadraba. Almadraba tuna. And it's with guacamole and some onion on top. And this is going to get messy. So. Mm. Oh, and it's a little bit spicy as well. Oh, that tuna is really good. Mm. Really good wine. Here in the Seville area in Andalusia, generally it's not just sherry that is being made. There are great red wines and great white wines. So if you go to great, uh, particularly the more modern tapas bars, they will more and more be showing the, the, the Seville and the Andalusian red wines. You should really ask them. Ask them what red wine, Tinto Vino they have from Andalusia or Sevilla. Um, because there's some really interesting, delicious stuff. Really delicious. All right, last tapa. Kyra's out. She's done. She's uh. She is finished, but I'm still going. I'm doing it for you guys. So I'm gonna have pulpo octopus with a mole verde, which is a Mexican sauce, uh, and with, with vegetables. So a very different way of eating octopus here. Here we go. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Yum, wow. So the octopus is perfectly cooked, really tender and juicy. Mm. And then just with that, at Mole Verde and the vegetables. Really interesting combination. You know, and this is the beauty of Seville that you can really have a movable feast. You can go from bar to bar, walking through these historic seats, streets uh, and try traditional, modern, traditional, modern, all these 
wonderful dishes at these fantastic places with atmosphere, with story, and in all the dishes are so ingredient focused, which is the beauty of Spanish cuisine. So, I mean, as I say, six months in Madrid, I could do that. I'll have to ask Yoli when I get home because Maybe she should be keen again, flamenco. Here's the thing about Valencia. Its food scene is really hard to figure out. There's paella, right? Yeah, there's paella, but that's a confusing world all of its own. And this isn't a city with an authentic tapas bar in every corner like, say, Seville or Madrid. Plus, Valencia's in the middle of a tourist boom, meaning there's a lot of tourist traps just springing up. And so we came six months ago to film this food tour video, but I screwed up my knee and we had to pull the plug on filming. And thank God, because while here, instead of filming this video, we ate and ate and ate. And I think I've finally figured out Valencia's food scene. Breakfast in Valencia, like in so much of Spain, isn't a big deal. But what is a big deal is what they do after breakfast, the almuerzo. I mean, all I could call it is like, is like morning tea on steroids, and that is the worst translation in the world. And we're going to this place, first up, that is like, the guy is called the king of oh, the almuerzo, the king of morning tea. Here we go. <laughs> Hola, Raúl. Bien, bien. This is the king Sí, lo tengo patentado. Lo tengo patentado. The king of morning tea. Cerveza va a haber. Y bocadillo va a haber. Bocadillo va a haber. Y chupito de cazalla va a haber y crema chupito. va a haber. Chupito. Okay, so you literally choose from all these dishes what you're going to have in your sandwich. These go in sandwiches. This is the mind blowing thing. I'd say the combinations are endless. <laughs> <laughs> and scary. Very. That's a full one and that's a half one. Pero, ¿qué, ¿qué tienes en tu bocadillo, entonces? Medio de revuelto y medio de cuar de poblet, que se llama. Sí. Que es el de la casa, que lleva figateis, que es unas albóndigas típicas de aquí de Valencia. Vale. Con tomate seco, cebolla deshidratada y ensalada. ¿Y esto qué es? Cazalla, arranca ahora, ¿qué le dice? Anís, ¿no? Vale, eso es para abrir el estómago. Sí. Esa es la arranca ahora. That is the first thing that's crossed my stomach this morning. Pero Raúl, la gente tiene que trabajar, ¿no? Así sí, que... la gente tiene que trabajar después. Pero se puede tomar un poco de alcohol. Sí, Aunque... un poquito, sí, siempre. <laughs> no pasa nada. No Así pasa nada. Mientras que sea con medida. Sí, eso. So we're going to get half with crispy pork and habitas. I don't know what to choose. There's so many options. And half with secreto with roquefort and onion. Okay. Wow. ¿Eso es algo que comes todas las mañanas? Yo, es el que más me gusta. ¿Ah, sí? Ah, muy bien, elegido bien. Y eso es una salsa de barbacoa. Salsa hoisin. Salsa hoisin. Hoisin sauce. Y ahora te pongo el huevito. Wow. Yeah. Garlic, scrambled eggs. Michael, ¿me das una cacharra? Ya. La cerveza para ella. <risa> y el bocadillo. Qué barbaridad. Por aquí. ¡Buya! Ah, el fresco, me, el fuego. Ole. Wow. Oh my god. I love ajetes. I don't know how you pronounce them. They're like garlic. They're like the actual plant of the garlic, not the root that we eat. I don't even know if I can pick this one up. Like, this is out of control. This is the diet one. This is like, diet? Who? <laughs> It looks bigger than you. I know, it is bigger than me. Your finest moment. <laughs> I know it's enormous, and sometimes when things are enormous, they're not good quality, you know? It's just done for the look and for the sheer barbarity of it. But this is delicious. I'm sort of overwhelmed and emotionally, gastronomically. I mean, this is the first stop of a massive multi-day food coma. I think I need a holiday. Yeah, we need a break already. Who would have thought that the Valencians solved the problem of the crappy Spanish bocadillo? Good for you guys. Despite it being only 11 a.m. and having already served me the world's largest sandwich, Raul insists that I try not one, but two cocktails. Viva Valencia! Sí, hace las dos capas. Es el ron quemado con canela, limón, y granitos de café. Y todos los días hacemos 10 litros, lo preparamos y lo tengo macerando un día antes para que vaya cogiendo todo el sabor con la canela, el limón, con todo. Stop one, day one. 
Ooh. I'm not big on coffee with booze, but that's smooth. It's 11.15. He's going to pour me a gin. He's going to pour me a gin tonic. Morning is in Valencia. <laughs> so we've got some blue God knows what in here. All right. Measuring it. A tu salud. <laughs> I think this this stop is the whole food tour of Valencia. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're making a film, not even like a YouTube video. All right. Yoli, let's get the hell out of here before he serves us more food. More alcohol. <laughs> Hasta luego. Hasta luego. We're going to keep having es morsaret. Quickly. <laughs> Must eat, I'm hungry. So hungry. Next stop, the Central Market. I remember the first time I walked into this place. It's huge, it's beautiful and light filled, and it's the largest fresh food market in Europe. Look at the beautiful dome up here. Next up, Central Bar, run by Valencia's most famous chef, Ricard Camarena. A former trumpet player, he gave up music for food. And as well as a Michelin star restaurant in the city, he runs this market bar. And they're also famous for their esmorzaret. Let the death by morning tea continue. So salt cod, a little alioli. I would love to know how to make the buñuelo actually, because it's not only cod, it's like mixed with stuff. Yeah, right. Like a bit of a, like a meatball, a fish bowl, right? Fish bowl. Fish bowl. So beautiful artichokes with a little bit of a romesco sauce. Mm. Oh, that's yum. Mm -hmm. I love artichokes. Is esmorzaret always a sandwich or can it be something different? Según la tradición valenciana, el esmorzaret siempre es un bocadillo o puede ser un plato de comida. O... Normalmente es un bocadillo. Un bocadillo. Lleva olivas, cacaos, una bebida y un café. Vale. Eso es normalmente el esmorzaret. Vale. No sé, es como la comida, pero más pronto, de una manera, ¿no? Sí. Eh, piensa que esto viene de la tradición de la gente que trabajaba en el campo. Es gente que madruga mucho, que se va antes y toma un café, cualquier yeah. cosa así, y entonces a las 11 de la mañana, 10, 11 de la mañana, tienes hambre. Así que siempre ha habido esa tradición, pero se está poniendo de moda un poquito, ¿no? Sí, está como de moda, así como han puesto el, exacto, el brunch y demás, pues aquí el esmorzaret. Pues me gusta, porque yo llevo todo el vídeo diciendo el morning tea valenciano, pero es el brunch, it's Valencian brunch, brunch not morning tea. Sí. Es la papada ibérica con chanfaina de verduras, que está súper rica. Y no os voy a dejar iros sin el cremaet. Ah, brunch. <laughs> that is naughty. There's a, like a sweetness in there. I'm gonna make a lovely combo. A little shake there. You know that that's you know that's a sign that I love it, right? The, the shoulder thing. Shoulder shake. Queso, cheese, a mustard, mustard uh, loin, pork loin. <sighs> Starting to get sweats. Oh my god! The mustard, the slow cooked pork. It's a beautiful, delicious sandwich. Like at this point, I have sandwiches coming out my ears. So takeaways. Lucia's lunch. Hasta luego. Ciao. En route to the next place, this is lighter now, and then we're gonna have a little break. But thoughts on the two es morsarets? I think it's a tradition that I would love to embrace, you know? The, the brunch drink? tradition. Yeah. Brunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, brunch is done, it's tapas time. And there's a tapas joint in Valencia that's my food heaven. Oh, like At Ostras Pedrin, Salva and his brother have dedicated themselves to serving up the country's best conservas y salazones. Translation, canned and salted fish plus fresh oysters to boot. Yep, this is a seafood Shangri-La. If you can something well and leave it to mature and take on flavors and macerate, it'll evolve in flavor. There are canned seafoods in Spain that are more expensive in the can than they were fresh originally because of the flavors they take on, like jamón. Nosotros apostamos siempre por un, por un surtido de ostras de aquí de España. Solo sí. tenemos... Esa es la diferencia que tenemos nosotros con otros locales de ostras. Normalmente siempre tienen francesas, irlandesas, tal. Sí. Nosotros apostamos por un surtido de ostras de aquí. Son más caras porque las producciones son más pequeñas. Vale. Por aquí os dejo. El esturión, los boqueroncitos, dos anchoas, permiso, y dos sardinas ahumadas. Buen provecho. Muchas gracias. 
<laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm by the sea, right? Which I know that's such a cheesy kind of thing, but I feel like I'm on the north coast. These are from Galicia, these, these urchin. I think I love like the elegance of this place. Just like you're sipping kava, you're eating delicacies. I love the look. I love this stripy white and blue shirts. I just, I kind of want one. I, I just, I feel flash when I'm here. That's the I feel flash when I'm here. This could be like an addiction, you know? Smoked sardines. Oh, wow. Yeah, one of my favorites. Together with garlic shrimp, I could spend my whole life having this for breakfast, brunch, lunch. I'm starting with the Catalan oyster. I mean, I'm going to be honest here, yeah. I'm not an oyster expert, no. and I don't notice a lot of difference, but they're both delicious. Okay. They're both just the flavor of the sea, they're both delicious oysters. Have some sturgeon. Sturgeon? Uh -huh. Smoked. Talk me through it. It makes you think of like um, ham, or you know, like a different texture, like meat, rather than fish. Interesting. It's beautiful. Give me a bit. That was awkward. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, there's a... It's like lacon. A bit, yeah, a bit lacon. It's yeah. like smoked like ham. Like yeah, it's meatier. Feeding. Feeding you. Look at these beautiful boquerones. My first love in Spain, before Yali, was the boqueron. When my parents came to visit the first time and we had amazing boquerones in vinagre and vermouth. And I felt very proud to live in Spain and to have this just like accessible in a bar environment. I don't know, it's like that is the beauty, right, of this country. That is the beauty of, of the tapeo, of this tradition. Salva said something that hit a nerve, and I think it's key to understanding Valencia's food scene. He said there's not such a tradition of tapas bar hopping in Valencia as in other Spanish cities like Madrid or Seville. And it's true, this isn't a city with an authentic tapas bar in every corner, and that's what makes this next place so special. Husband and wife, Jesus and Esther, run Tasca Angel, a no-frills tapas bar that's been around since 1946. Everything is prepared quickly and simply while you wait, just thrown on the grill behind the bar by Esther. I love it. I mean, it's like a plancha, like Casatoni in Madrid. There's not many of these in Valencia. Oh, oh my God. Perfectly cooked flaky, falling apart, a bit of parsley, there's garlic in there, and the secret sauce. Que me parece en Valencia no hay muchas tascas, ¿no? No, no. Aquí estamos contados, de antes había, pero se dejó mucho, se dejó mucho de lado y quedamos como nosotros. De tascas, yo creo que nosotros hemos ido a buscar a veces por ahí y encuentras lo típico de bares, locales de, ah, va a estar de fritar, en fritura, pero lo que es de especialización en algún producto perecedero fresco del día, no hay casi. So what does tasca mean to you, that word, like if you had to explain it? Small bar, plancha, and like specialties, you know, like defined products that they do. That's good. I, I wouldn't have known how to describe that. I just would have said small traditional bar. Just talk to me. Yeah. Uh, I've never had this before. Ay pebre. It's called ay pebre. Mm. Oh yeah. Smoky paprika, the heat. There's some heat in there. A big chunk of eel. Mm. The eel is almost like this, like, the, the word I can think of is blubber. It kind of just falls apart in your mouth. It's it's gooey and in a, in a, in a yummy way. It... Super bombón. Super bombón. O full equip. Los, vale. Yo pido medio y medio porque puedes pedir medio y medio. Es super barato. Vale, ok. Gracias. ¿Eh? Gracias. <laughs> recommendations for next time. I just love the immediacy and the dynamicness of it. We're, we're standing at the bar, you know? We're not off at a table somewhere and there's some waiter who'll bring us something after it came out of the kitchen five minutes ago. And look at how they move. Yeah, yeah. Para sepia. I'll tell you what, when you're a place like this, feeling this, COVID is a distant memory. Somebody orders it. Jesus grabs it out of the fridge down there, takes it over there, and Esther cooks it. And then boom, right in front of you. Yeah. Ah, sí? Ah, ah, el
It's like I was just on a 45 minute like Disneyland ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tapas bar ride. Disney should do that, the tapas bar ride. We have one stop that we're gonna do, but the, the child must sleep, and I don't mean Yoli. Bye-bye, Dada. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Once you get a taste for vermouth, it invariably becomes an addiction. A healthy one, of course. And there are few bars in Spain, like Bocatín El Carmen, where the vermouth-obsessed Elena and Ana pour over 80 types of vermouth from across the country. There's 80 vermouths. I don't know which one I want. And so they ask you questions, questions not related to vermouth to help understand what your palate is. It's like, it's like vermouth coaching. ¿Cuál es el más amargo, tú crees? El más amargo de todos es este. Uh. No lleva ningún gramo de azúcar, ni caramelo, ni nada. Sí, es que los rojos son mucho más complejos, mucho sí. más interesantes sí. para mi gusto. Olé. Los rojos se lo trabajan mucho más. Es just like this crushed kind of bitter fruit in your mouth that's been picked a little too early that for some people that might sound disgusting but if you like these kind of sharp bitter Campari like flavors this is your guy I didn't know they were making vermouth like this in, in Spain which reminds me more of the vermouths of Italy and France that are often less sweet it's really good last drink and then home to bed hasta luego ciao Day two, we drive out to the old fisherman's barrio of El Cabañal to hit Casa Montaña, one of the city's oldest and most delicious tapas restaurants. It's been around since 1836 and remains a family-run affair. So if last night was the tapas Disneyland ride, this is Universal Studios tapas ride. <laughs> it's a set, it's a scene, you know, I can see it all happening here. Not that it feels fake, it feels very fake. No, exactly. You saved my ass. <laughs> Hola, right. ¿qué tal? Alejandro, ¿no? Sí. Sí. El hijo del, del dueño, ¿no? Bueno, sí, es un sí. negocio es lo familiar. Que se dice. Es un negocio familiar. <laughs> sí. Yo llevo ahora son 18, 19 años de, sí. de gerencia. Sí. Y bueno, lo comparto con mi hermana que vino hace 6 años y mi mujer, Denise, que también está con nosotros. Pero bueno, al final somos un equipo de 27 personas. Este es el vino, nosotros hacemos tres vinos, dos son en colaboración con bodegas, pero este, este es de unos viñedos propios que tenemos. Los tenemos aquí en, en Valencia, son Bobal, que es la uva de, de aquí de la zona. And I always love if I'm in a place, if they have their house wine, like ordering that. You guys have two reds and a white, so. Oh, that's good. People don't have to think about the, the, the wine, the Valencia being a wine region, but it is. Yeah, that's all I had to say about that. It is. Pues nada, se ha ubicado aquí la mesita en la parte de la taberna, es la parte más antigua. Nice. La parte de 1836, con que este año son 187 años, sí. y es la parte más entrañable. <laughs> The titaina is like a is like a tuna kind of pisto in yes, here, right? Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I'm filming on this angle because otherwise, if there's a window behind me, you won't see me if I look at Yoli and film. Complicated, but just go with it, guys. Just pretend it's not happening. Can I put faces behind you? Please, you must. That's the whole idea. People only watch the videos. People only watch the videos for you anyway. <laughs> Someone said the other day, Yoli is the real star. Thank you, but no. Yeah, really. she is. Mmm, it's really lovely, actually. It reminds me of like, um, you know, an, an empanada, but with a lovely twist. It has some certain smokiness that I love too. Smoky. Mm? Oh, yeah. Oh, so delicate, so beautiful. Yeah, yep. I guess I guess because of the color, you expect like more mojamai, kind of like drier sort of, but it's not, it's beautiful yep. and fresh. Mm. Is it beautiful? I think it is, and gorgeous. And for our sins, the delicious food just keeps on coming. So this dish has been passed down from generation to generation. It's the oldest dish still on the menu. It's like the, the grandma's dish. Very beautiful. Mm, very beautiful again. <laughs> Everything is beautiful with, that, with that girl. Beautiful with that girl. Grandma's bean stew. Mm. It's a little bit spicy as well. It, spicy. It's just intense, that flavor. Yeah. So yummy. Like insane. Like insane. Everything's yeah. insane with that guy. <laughs> All bean stews are insane with that guy. Nice. Uh, Qué rico. Gracias. 
People often say, Yoli, that we don't eat enough meat. It's all seafood. So oh, really? this is the answer to that. Beautiful solomillo yeah. steak with ajos tiernos, young garlic. I want to pass to you, but you have, there's a wall of glasses that we've built. <laughs> oh, my God. Huh? Oh, my God. Again, it's just so perfectly cooked. And what I love is, you know, if you cook steak with garlic, the garlic burns it. These kind of young garlic shoots give it a garlicky flavor, but a subtle garlicky flavor. And the meat is medium, like not even medium, but rare in the middle, perfectly charred on the outside. So a little Spanish lesson here, guys, when there is one left on a plate, it is called the one of shame. And I have no shame. Si, hasta luego. All right, we're out. We're clear. Hola. Yoli. Vamos. Now let's do it all again. Yeah, 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 I know. Are you hungry? <laughs> Not anymore, but who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the spirit. All right, where's the car? With our appetites only just intact, we zip across town to Bar Ricardo, another family-owned tapas temple, where Ricardo's wife, Chef Susanna, whips up the most amazing market-fresh food and serves up what may just be the best patatas bravas in Spain. Hola, Susana. Bueno. Y estos son fotos de la familia. Sí, eso es toda la, la familia. Estos son, por ejemplo, estos son los, los fundadores, que son los mismos que están allí, que son los abuelos de los abuelos de mi marido. Qué guay. Gracias. So this is garra. It's a little like escali esqueixada, which is a Catalan dish of pepper and cod and it's like in a country between you and me, that is not great at salads. This is, yeah, sorry. This is a beautiful salad, effectively a cod salad. And I love that they do half raciones. The thing I love also about this place is the kitchen is open all day, which is kind of rare with authentic places. A lot of tourist traps will be open all day, but this place, super authentic, all day kitchen. Little brava law. I mean, look at that, look at that ali oli on top. Look, look at how that is soaked in like, Jus de, jus de brave. <laughs> jus de brave. <laughs> mm. Don't tell the boys at Casa Tony. Ooh. But I love a good East Coast Catalan Valencian brava with the, with the ali oli on top. Yeah. In New Zealand, I think they're called pippies, just tiny little shellfish. You might be thinking like, why would I want to eat that? There's nothing there. But it's all about the juice and the, and the kind of the, the butteriness that's not butter, but it's oil and garlic and Ah, oh, they're just fun. They're like eating pipas, like sunflower seeds. They're the sunflower seeds of the sea. And you just kind of nibble away at them while you're yeah. chatting to your, you know, lady wife or something like that. Mm. <laughs> so good. Oi, look at this, just arrived. We've got artichokes in season with jamón on top. And I believe this might be the egg that Yoli is going to break. It's like a really naughty mouthful of liquidy Cheetos. Oh my god. And it didn't end there. The dishes kept piling up, but at some point you have to pull the plug, no matter how delicious the food is. Last one. Yeah. Well, bueno, muchas gracias. Hasta luego. <laughs> okay, our stomachs are bursting. But wait, there's more. Tomorrow we're going to tackle three of Valencia's most celebrated tastes and dishes, and the three that are most likely to turn into tourist cliches. But we're going to do it right. And yes, that includes eating a killer paella. And first, horchata. This drink is sacred in Valencia. You can get it all over the city and most of it is good, but we wanted to taste it at 129 year old horchateria Collado. First prize, best horchata. Unfortunately, when we turned up, they were closed, but happily, the family who ran it let us in anyway. This is literally the most thirst quenching drink you can have in the world. The first horchata of the season is like, oh, life-giving and a lot of people when they think of horchata think of the mexican drink which is i believe made with rice milk but here in valencia it's made with chufas in english chufas are tiger nuts and here in horchateria collado they make the drink on site so owner pepe hauls out a sack of the stuff and brings us up to speed on the unassuming yet magical little tubers origins the chufa is originaria de egipto de egipto sí. Y entonces entró por Egipto, por la cornisa africana, la trajo aquí el Islam. La trajeron aquí los moros. 
just full summer, full summer in Spain. Mm. Well, I, I could just like drink it up, you know? It's so refreshing, so beautifully sweet and gorgeous. Y es usted el propietario de, de ah, X sí, generación. Alto, ¿no? sí, esto era de mis padres. Ah, tus padres están ahí. Ahí están ahí. mis padres el día de la boda. El día de la boda, ¿en qué año fue? El 31. 31, Ajá. vaya. Justo antes del caos, ¿no? Vaya, vaya. Aquí continuamos, procuremos continuar 130 años más. Yo claro. Creo. <risa> bueno, sería, no que se sabe. Curioso, ¿eh? La horchata es muy sana, ¿no? Cuidado, no, que llega la gente y dice, 130 años y tal. Y usted lleva... Pero usted no tiene 130 años. Usted la veo. Digo, pero hombre, coño. A ver, a ver la matemática. Un poco, la matemática. And the other thing you've got to get is a fartón. Yes, we have all laughed at the name and how it sounds in English and you're allowed to do that once. And you dunk it in... Gracias por cuidarnos, Pepe. Hasta luego. Woo, that was an adventure. All right, I need a drink. Literally, I'm now going to go and get a drink. There's an alcoholic drink that's extremely popular in Valencia. You'll see it everywhere, and I love it. It's delicious. But is it only a drink for tourists? Okay, so this, where we're going to get this drink, is in a classy joint. A little too classy for me, maybe. Let's see. Okay, so they're not open yet, but they have opened just for me. I did call ahead, and Rodrigo is going to show me how to make this special drink. This killer cocktail is way too easy to drink. Agua de Valencia, Valencia water with this wonderful combination, this kind of hardcore mimosa. I'm just realizing now the Valencians invented brunch. It's all starting to make sense. They invented mimosas as well, which is such a typical brunch dish. Orange juice, cava, gin, vodka. Es turística, pero mucha gente, me pasa con, con muchísima gente que viene aquí sí. y pide específicamente algo de Valencia y que, sobre todo mucha gente que conocía antes el lugar, ah. eh, que vienen y, ah, bueno, cambió el lugar, siguen teniendo algo de Valencia, seguimos teniendo algo de Valencia y siempre jarra y Así que vale. grupos de 5 o 6 personas, jarra, jarra, jarra. This place, once known as Cerveteria Madrid, was a 20th century student and bohemian hangout. And in 1959, its owner whipped up what would become known as Agua de Valencia, which is, I realize now, a hardcore mimosa. So many different alcohols, but there's quite a lot of orange juice in there, so you don't notice them all. The old Cerveteria Madrid closed a number of years ago, and when the new owners reopened it as Café Madrid in 2018, they found the former bar, a turn-of-the-century salon, a mass of cobwebs, old furniture and knickknacks that the former owners had just left behind, a la Miss Haversham's rambling mansion and great expectations. And so they recuperated and brought back the essence uh, of of Café Madrid from back in the day, and it just makes the drink more kind of decadent and more fun to drink. Hasta luego. Ciao. So we've just arrived in El Palmar, the old fisherman's village where paella originated. We actually came here on in our recent paella video, but we didn't eat paella here because, I mean, in the video we couldn't eat paella everywhere. But today it's special because today we're going to eat a paella prepared by the chef who has won the best paella in the world award. And what's more, he's preparing a really unique paella just for us. Cuando a mí me preguntan cuál es la paella valenciana, sí. mi conversación es que hay tantas paellas sí. valencianas como pueblos en Valencia. Yeah. Yeah. Porque antiguamente, eh, es que antiguamente cada uno en la paella ponía lo que tenía en su casa o en su tierra. Yeah. Porque si tú tenías alcachofas y, y eran paellas de temporada, yeah. no como ahora que tenemos un producto todos los días en casa. Claro, claro. Wow, look at all these paellas that are just bubbling away in various different stages of, of readiness, of readiness. Boom, boom, boom. Snails in there. A black rice here. Looking beautiful. Ah, it's this, this is our one. This is our one. So it hasn't started cooking yet. We have this very special, this crab. Es un cangrejo que eh, viene de la parte eh, norte de, de América. Sí. Lleva ya muchos años eh, empezando a invadir lo que sí. es la zona europea. Qué curioso. Y ahora, desde hace alrededor de unos seis años, entró sí. en la albufera.
Yali, I think we have what may be the most beautiful paella I think I've ever seen. It is very gorgeous. Um, as a kid, I used to love the yellow and purple combo, and this has it, and so I just love it. We're gonna see if we got some socarrat here. Don't destroy it. Yeah, wow. Okay, I'm getting in there. Wow, wow, it's scraping off the bottom. Ooh, oh wow. Mm. It's almost sweet. A great pie, you can, each grain of rice is yeah. its, its, its own man, its own yeah. beast, you By know? Itself. And it's it's dry, it's not, this is not a soupy rice. And yeah, you can, you can taste each grain and each grain is so full of flavor. Oh my God. It's like savory and sweet at once. It's like a, it's beautiful. It is really good. Mmm, let's see, let's see. Oh, mm. the smell is very. Uh, it goes together with what it tastes like, obviously. Yeah. You know, but like it's bang on. The cauliflower there adds some wonderful level of yeah complexity. It's lovely. It's that fine little layer of rice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like um one centimeter max. Yeah. Uh, you don't have a pork. You don't need a pork, I guess. Yeah. That's the philosophy. Mm. Oh wow. It's like a crab pate. And what I love it in the core of Raul's philosophy is that the paella or any poor person's dish, any fisherman's dish, anything like that is always just a representation of, of what is local. He says that there are as many paellas that are authentic as there are villages of Valencia because every village has a different slight mix of ingredients. And so in the end this new ingredient arrives, this crab. And it's everywhere, and he's helping the the local fishermen by 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 buying it and evolving the paella. Hay que aprovechar, hay que aprovechar eh, la cocina. Aprovechamiento es lo que lo que tienes, aprovecharlo. Y si lo que tienes ya antiguo lo puedes evolucionar, hay que evolucionar. La cocina right. siempre evoluciona. Sí. Evoluciona la paella y evoluciona toda la cocina. Sí. And then here we have this beautiful big meaty like king prawn or something. Mm. There's the sweetness, right there. From the prawn and the rice. I feel very fortunate today. There we are. We finished it. We did it, Yoli. This paella is laying at our feet. Hey guys, it's James here from Devour Tours. I'm in Barcelona. I've got two colleagues with me, Lauren and Katie uh, from Devour Tours, and we've just finished work here for the day in Barcelona. It's eight o'clock at night, and we're gonna head out for tapas, but we've set ourselves a bit of a challenge. We're gonna see how many tapas bars we can hit before we close them down, about 11, 12 p.m. when the when the kitchens start to close. First stop is uh, kind of like my happy place, a wonderful bodega. place was opened in the 50s by the current owner Jose's grandfather uh, and it is a true Barcelona bodega which means it's an old wine shop and a perfect place to drink wine. Gracias, Lupe. Cava is the classic aperitif here in Barcelona. I, when you start your evening, you either go for vermouth or cava. We're gonna have vermouth at the next stop, but first, cava. You can drink it any time of the day uh, in this city. You see old ladies drinking cava in markets at 11 a.m. in the market bars, so go for it, go crazy. Ham carver, and he's gonna carve some ham for us. And he's, okay. Like, sometimes I get excited on videos, but this ham is seriously amazing. It's dense, it's rich, it's sweet. I mean, I'm gonna say it's like heaven and that sounds really pretentious, but it is, it's amazing. Carver down, world's best ham. Uh, let's hit the next stop. Where are my friends? Next stop for vermouth. Now this is an aperitif that is very typical to have here in Barcelona, particularly uh, before lunch on the weekend. I'm gonna go into La Puntual. They do great vermouth here and incredible patatas bravas. Okay, vermouth is a white wine fortified, colored with caramel and steeped in different botan botanicals to make it this, this incredible flavorsome uh, aromatized drink. And, and 
if it's too strong for you, you can uh, add a little siphon, a little soda water with one of these things. Careful though, because they blow up. We The most refreshing alcoholic drink in the world. What I love about the Bravas here is, well, first of all, in different parts of Spain, Bravas are a little bit different. So here in Catalonia, it's usually a, a hot red uh, pepper sauce with alioli worked in together. And that kind of makes them my favorite Bravas, uh, style of Bravas in Spain. And these ones are hot. Mm. Really good. Very, very good. It's like the perfect tapa. Leaving the home of Bravas and Vermouth, and I think it's time for, wait for it, cider, Spanish cider. Hola, Julia. ¿Qué tal? Tú, estoy haciendo un video. Ah, muy buenas. Muy bien. Uy, ahí está. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Can I just say that Bocanones in vinagre, anchovies uh, in vinegar, marinade in vinegar are probably my favorite tapa, favorite tapa in the world. And these look really good, they make them here. It's kind of messy, so stand back. Mm. They're meaty, they're vinegary, ah, it just makes you want to drink more. Just get in there, use your finger. <laughs> this bar has an incredible selection of wines by the glass and what's great is you can get small pours or larger pours so you, you know if you want to try a whole bunch of wines you can just get a whole bunch of smaller pours so this wine is from Monsant, uh, which is a region here in Catalonia, um, and these guys at Pla have an incredible wine list, even their house wine, and this is their house wine. It's really cheap, uh, and it's really juicy. <laughs> there is no nice way to do that. So Katie's using the muscles to drink the broth. <laughs> Up is a place called Bar Brutal. It's a little controversial for me because they do natural wine, which is a bit of a trend here in Barcelona right now. Um, one that I'm divided on, uh, but they have really yummy food, even if the wine can be a little funky. <laughs> it's a typical kind of natural wine. Funk. Vinegary funk. Jesus. Nail polish. Yeah. Look at that color. It's natural white wine. Chicos, el atún. Okay, so we've got seared tuna on grilled leeks and with a lemon confit on top. It looks really, really good. So next stop is a bar that is actually closed. So. It's called La Plata, it's famous, it's amazing, but where are we going? This way, I think. Uh, but it's closed tonight, so we have a little magic up our sleeves. Okay, as I mentioned, we have a situation. The bar behind me, La Plata, which is our next stop, is closed. This is because uh, it's August and they've been closed for vacation for about a month. They reopen tomorrow, uh, but I want to include it on tonight's route. So. I'm gonna do a little thing, bear with me, and we're gonna see if we can visit this bar, okay? Stand by. Okay, here we are. I've traveled into the future, La Plata is open, it's right behind me, it's, it's busy. We're gonna go and get some great tapas, let's go.
Buenas chicos. Muy bien, aquí estamos, comiéndolo todo. A ver. <laughs> This bar is not fancy, and that's what I love about it. They do about five tapas. They've been open since 1945, and since then they've been doing the same five tapas. I've got three of my favorites here. Uh, super simple. We have a really simple salad of onion, uh, fresh seasonal tomato, and, and arvequina olives. Olives that are local here to Catalonia, and a vinaigrette and olive oil dressing. Butifarra, which is a Catalan sausage, which is grilled. And the other thing, pescadito frito. Anchovies that have been lightly battered. Dipped in oil and you eat them whole. You gotta eat the whole thing, head and tail. It's good for you. Go, go. The other thing here, when you come, you can learn how to drink the traditional Catalan way is from a porron. Instead of having your own glass each, you all drink from this one. Okay, now we need to go back into the past to continue with the route. Okay, so we're back. We're back on the, the 30th. La Plata is closed behind me. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the experience of time travel and visiting it uh, tomorrow. He's not gonna. ¿Qué tal, Albert? ¿Qué tal estás? Muy bien, muy bien, esperándote. This place has been open for, for decades. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, it feels like an old bodega, but I love the fact that it serves uh, more modern food. It's just the best of both worlds. So we're going to order crema catalana, the classic Catalan dessert, the, the, the Catalan version of creme brulee. Uh, the Catalans made it first. There's a recipe from the 14th century that's older than the oldest written creme brulee recipe. And we're going to have torrijas también, which is like kind of French toast, uh, but it's the, the local version and we eat it here at Easter. <sighs> Oh my god, how can we keep eating after that, Yoli? <laughs> we need to stop and gather ourselves. <laughs> and like, Take make, an make hunger. We need to make hunger. We must make hunger. <laughs> T-shirt. All right, let's go. Good morning, guys. So, imagine you come to stay with us in Madrid. Well, as well as offering you our very comfy but slightly hectic spare room, <laughs> we would, of course, want to take you to a bunch of great places to eat. So, where will we take you? It's not easy because there are so many great places in Madrid. And like any city, there's a bunch of bad places and tourist traps, and you don't want to end up in any of those. No. Here's our mission, to show you the 10 places that we would be sure to take you to over the week that you come and stay with us so that you can have a delicious and authentic experience. Now, this is an update of a video that I made four years ago. What's changed? I'm older, wiser, more handsome. We had a baby. Uh, there's been a global pandemic. Some <laughs> yeah. places have closed. You know, one closed and reopened. So not much has changed at all, really. Not much at all, <laughs> except that I'm not more handsome. <laughs> so some places we'll revisit from that older video and some places will be new. And now we're heading to our first stop for the best warm, melted, beautiful chocolate mm. in Madrid. Oh. Venga, Yoli. Shall we go? Let's go. ¿Te acuerdas de mí? Ay, claro que sí. Muy bien. Bueno, ¿qué tal estás? I always do a little gasp when I walk into El Riojano. Opened in 1855 by the royal pastry chef, this place is pure 19th century bling. And nowadays, pastry chef Roberto and his family make the best melted hot chocolate in Madrid. It's packed down here. I hope you can hear us over the noise. Everybody's having something sweet, some sort of mid-morning snack. They don't do churros here. They do soletillas, ladyfingers. Uh, so make sure that you order some soletillas to dunk. It's a beautiful delivery device. Oh, do that. Show me that dunk again. Show me the beautiful oh, dunk. Oh, look at this. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. And, mm. yeah. So delicious. Okay, and why is this chocolate so delicious? Well, here's the thing. A lot of chocolate, a lot of this hot chocolate in Madrid, this melted chocolate is actually made from powder. They, you know, they add milk to powder. But here, Roberto actually melts down little, like chocolate buttons in a sense to make actual melted chocolate. And that's what makes it so creamy and so rich. Well, this is so good that I need to kill this. I never finished one cup of chocolate, but this time, almost. <laughs> 
Okay, so I get a lot of questions about this, but those of you who saw the original uh, Epic Madrid food tour might remember this place. It was called Cerverit and it was famous for its tortilla, which was the best in Madrid. And you'll see now that it's a burger joint. A lot of people say to me, did it close because of the pandemic? No, Maria Angeles and Carlos, the owners, sold the business about three months before the pandemic, retired and sailed off into the sunset. Perfect timing. Nice to meet you. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. You guys having fun? Bye-bye. Yeah. Hola, gracias. Dulce, sí, vale. So, I wasn't sure if this place was still open. I know it closed during the pandemic, but it appears they're back. The cookie nuns are back. Just to clarify, they're not really called cookie nuns. They're actually cloistered nuns who bake really yummy cookies. Hola. Always feels a bit magical that 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 kind of it transaction. Is. is it really gonna happen? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Am I gonna get my food? Am I gonna get my change back? Am yeah, I yeah. <laughs> so mistrusting. Woman of God. Well, what am I having, by the way? Nevadito. Nevadito. This has got. Um, so it's got flour, sugar, white wine, and butter. Mmm, mmm. Lovely. They're lovely, a bit. Lovely flavor, but make sure you have a glass of water. What? <laughs> Stop, 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 stop. All right, I'm gonna try. Yoli's giving a go. These are nevaditos. They're, you know, literally, you, this means snow, right? So you get this kind of powdered sugar all over you. Mm. Mm. This is breakfast for the, well, at least, this one, breakfast. at least one week. Yeah, one week of breakfast for me. Okay, next up, ham. Before COVID, Luis, me and family were happily running their popular ham shop and bar on Calle Mayor. But the pandemic hit, the tourists vanished and business dried up. But two years later, a pandemic resurrection, they're back serving and selling top shelf jamón and Iberian products. Qué bonito, chicos. Oof. <laughs> so, Luis, me is looking after Lucia, our first babysitter. I'm loving this, it's yeah, like yeah. a romantic date. Salud. Salud. <laughs> Chorizo, salchichón, lomo, cheese, and beautiful ham. Chorizo, I you take chorizo. the skin off, I generally Sometimes, don't. Sometimes, it depends on the day. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Mondays, you take the skin off. Yeah. Beautiful. I will put this even in a paella. No. Oh my God. No, I would not. Skin on. Skin on. Mm. Oh my God, so good, so good. And what I love about this place is that you can come here, you can get ham to taste, you can have a glass of wine, you can try some oil, get all the pig products, or you can get them to take away and get them vacuum packed. Should loin. we go for some loin together? Yeah. Cheers, <laughs> cheers. Hey, slap that loin. <laughs> That's very weird. Mm. Mm. I'm not gonna slap your ham. Okay, just a little, That's so weird. Mm. Just let it melt. It's beautiful. So good. Delicate. For breakfast, morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, dinner, everything. The thing I realized, Yoli, we do not eat ham often at home. We don't no, eat we don't. enough ham. Yeah, we need to like, can we buy a leg now? No, because we've got to go to New Zealand. But, wow, okay. All right, 10 seconds left. You enjoy that? Yeah, Good. enjoy, great. C cigarette? <laughs> yeah, 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 quick cigarette. And, mm. The it's fat is so good. It's the best from. date we've ever had. Baby's Here we go, back. baby's back. Baby's okay. back. Date's over. Uh, uh, Jamon y babysitters. Yes. Sí. Free. <laughs> Baby free. sister free. Free. <laughs> Hablamos. Ciao. Ciao. Casa de Revuelta hasn't changed a bit since it opened in 1966. Tiny, sparse, always bustling. It's a portal to the past. And like many classic joints, it's famous for one killer dish. Okay, so they do not make bars like this one anymore. Anymore. I love the awkward space and everybody packs into this tiny little space. There's often a queue outside. The wine they serve, it's simple, but it's classic balde peña. If you came to Madrid 50, 100 years ago, this is what people were drinking. And of course, the pièce de la résistance. They do one thing, well, they do a few things, but really they do one thing. They're famous for they do it well. Bacalao, salt cod. This is the best salt cod in Madrid. Let's go. 
Oh my god. Mm. Crispy on the outside, so flaky and moist on the inside. And there's like this secret layer of like something fatty just under the batter. Yoli, has it been a while since you've had the bacalao? Oh yeah. Delicious. Come and taste this, guys. So wonderful. <laughs> Yum! Ah, mira. Oh, hombre, muchas gracias. And guys, I mean, the wine is so small, you gotta have two. Two is one, three is probably one glass. Amazing, I love that place. So good to be back. All right, I'm on my own, Yali's left. We need a vermouth. There comes a moment in every day when you say to yourself, I could go a vermouth about now. And in my humble opinion, Taberna La Concha is the best place to enjoy this pre-lunch ritual. Good luck. Ah, nice. Very right. cool. So here's the thing. Vermouth for me is so much more than just a drink. Yeah, okay. It's a fortified wine, but it's actually a ritual. And that's the key to understanding it. You know, it's that moment before lunch when you're excited, you're meeting your friends, and you're just having your first drink. It almost tastes like hope. hope that you'll have a wonderful big long lunch. And what I love here in La Concha is that they make it a ritual with the way they put it together. And... Let's see if it's how I remember. Mm. It's strong too, guys. Always remember my vermouth haiku. One vermouth is great, two vermouth is even better, three vermouths you'll never make lunch. Right? Funciona. <laughs> Vermouth ice cream. Now here's a first. Ooh. Ooh, it's better than I thought it would be. Gorgonzola ice cream. Oi. Right. Ooh. Ooh yeah, that is my favorite. Mmm. Really cheesy. That's good. Okay, last sip. Okay, quick tip before we find Yoli. The beauty also of La Concha is it's right at the beginning. It's like the gateway to Cavabaja, this street with like 50 bars down here. I have a whole video on that, which I'll link to below. And so you can start here with your vermouth and then just like hit the bars down the street, which is just like the best plan I could ever imagine for a Saturday afternoon. Ay, nena. Nena, nena, nena. Whee! Okay, so update. Yeah. The vermouth was good. I only, right. I only had one. Really? Although there was a little top up in there for the oh, camera okay. yeah, just to yeah, get yeah. some B-roll. I, I was sure I couldn't believe that. Are you <laughs> ready for snails? Yes, always. Let's go to Caracoles. They don't make them like this anymore. Run by 93-year-old, yes, 93-year-old Amadeo and his kids and grandkids. This is a true rustic Madrid tavern. And if you dig snails, you've hit the motherland. Mira, mira, mira. Guys, look, I know the reality. Not all of you are going to come to Madrid and eat snails, but it's a classic Madrid dish. And if you're up for them, Casa Amadeo is the place to get them. It's this big, juicy bowl of, of yummy snails. It's spicy, the broth. There's chorizo in there. I had to include this on my top 10. Oh my god. To be honest, the snail doesn't taste of much. It's like a protein delivery device. But the broth, the richness. Look at these big bits of fat that are wobbling around. Si, sí, ¿cuál es? ¿Qué dice Cervantes? ¿Qué decía? Que, que en la vida no se debe comer bien, se debe comer mejor. Eso. Y yo añado que de la panza nace la danza. First, the juice. It's a three-step process, right? Yeah. Juice, snail, juice. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah. Step three. Okay, so step three. You gotta, so, you gotta get more from the. No, no, that's step four. Vale, okay, you got some juice. Mm. Um, oh, the sauce is just delicious. Yeah, right? Uh, you thought that was it, but yeah. I have something else for you. Oh, oh, oh surprise, surprise. <laughs> Did it? The best callos in Madrid, perhaps. So about four years ago, something happened to me. There was a moment, I, wake, I woke up and it was a winter's day. It was really cold in Madrid, January. And I woke up craving callos. It had never happened to me before. I'd never been a big fan. But at that moment, I knew I had gone native in Spain. It doesn't taste like you think tripe might taste like. It's just full of rich broth and sauce. And it is similar to the snail sauce, but there's other meats in there. and. 
Oh mate, gelatinous, it's gooey. This just warms the cockles of your heart. It sticks to your ribs and it's so good. Guys, in case you didn't already know, I've written a guide to Madrid. It's the guide I wish I had when I first moved here. It's got all my favorite bars and restaurants plotted. It's got museum hacks, secret stops, full neighborhood guides, scams to avoid, you know, transport tips, the whole lot. And also if you grab the guide, you get access to my exclusive Google map that gives you all my favorite spots plotted. So you can have all my recommendations in your pocket when you're here in Madrid. So if you're curious about the guide, check out the link in the description below. Yes, yes. Day two, you may notice we're wearing different clothes. Oh, we're uh, beautiful. <laughs> that's because we we wouldn't take you to all these places in one day. I mean, we wouldn't do that. That would be obscene. We're not going to kill you with food if you come <laughs> and stay with us. We may kill ourselves with food, <laughs> but not you guys. So next stop, Cadiz, sort of. Madrid, a Spanish melting pot, is the perfect city to taste dishes from across the country. And San Lucar, deep in La Latina, serves up food from my other true love, the city of Cadiz. Altramuz, uh, you open like this, typical from the south. Ooh. Open it up like that, do, do, do. don't eat the skin. Okay. They're called chochitos, little vaginas. Little oh, vaginas, yeah, I was gonna leave that to you to explain. Yeah. Okay, just to be clear, we're gonna order a lot of food here, but also Andres here wants us to show a few different dishes, so we're not gonna finish everything, so don't, don't judge us. Okay, so one of my favorite dishes from the south are papis, papas alinas. It's like a potato salad of sorts, but totally different from one you might have been expecting. It's like parsley, it's got vinegar, and it's got tuna on top. And it's just this bite of freshness. Mm. Oh yeah. It's like this, you know, beautiful potato. So it's got that kind of round, you know, not sharp flavor. But then with the vinegar and the parsley and the garlic, it makes it really sharp and it's cold and it's refreshing. Woo! They're such a not croquetas. Yum, 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 yum. Gooey. Mm -hmm. Gooey. Mm -hmm. Very gooey. So, what are they? They are sea anemones. This is like, wow. This is Cali. This is the south of Spain. This is like, just wow. See. Lucia loves them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Flamenco. Flamenco. Presa Ibérica, uh, baby. What was that in uh, English? Uh, a beautiful cut from the Iberian pig. This is a beautiful cut from the Iberian <laughs> pig that I'm gonna try right now. Mm. And it is beautiful, and it's Iberian, I can tell. <laughs> and it's from a pig. We might be really full when we live here, but we will keep eating for yeah. you guys. These chipirones, cuttlefish a la mantilla look amazing, Yoli. I know, I know. Uy, yum. Wow. So good. When it's good, it's amazing. A la manzanilla, so you get your. Yeah, 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 your yeah. I have fix. my. Very tender, cuttlefish. Yeah. The sauce is delicious. I'm going for the tentacles, Yoli. Mm. Doing it one hand with the, doing it one hand with the camera. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I've never had that here before. Beautiful parsley flavor. You don't really taste the manzanilla, but it's in there. Give it a bit of body. Okay, so Andres, the owner here, is very proud of the beautiful food they have. So he's he's given us extra dishes. We've eaten so much. We're just starting out. I'm a little scared, Yoli. You gotta do what you gotta do. You're all about taking it for the team. And also, there's a <laughs> dessert. Even though at one time we got more coming, the dessert that he wanted us to try, los piononos. Pionono's. Pionono's, no? Pionono's. From Granada. What is it? Like a sponge cake that's. Yeah, exactly. Got with, uh, yeah, it's got some toffee, toffee egg yolk, sauce, like, caramel. We obviously know a lot about this dish, the way we're speaking about <laughs> it. So get into it. Wow. Show me. Show they me. They want that to it. try it first. Ooh. So let me show that. Wow. Okay, so we've just double checked with Andres so we can speak about this dish. El, what? Andres Epa. is serving us more things, so <laughs> stop one going well. You might not make stop two. This is, uh, okay, let me just film this so you can see what we're dealing with here. Oh, un Pedro Jiménez. Oy, 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 oy. Oy, el espesor. Oy, 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 El colorcito. One for Yoli, who's not drinking. Ah, yeah, just un poquitito. Ya, ya está, ya está, ya está. No, no nos malgastes, es que como no, chico en la teta, no. Pio, no, no. What is it? It's like a... 
sponge cake that's been soaked, soaked in, in uh, well, uh, liquor sometimes or um, almiba. Almiba, like a, like a. I'll put it down in the description below. <laughs> Try it, Yoli. It's yummy. Yeah. It's going to my head. All the food. Yeah. Mmm. See now. Mmm. Very very yummy. Very delicious. You don't want any, right, James? What? No, you're saying you're. You're the one who has the sweet. Who blah, has blah, the sweet tooth again? Was it you or me? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is naughty. That is very naughty. Yeah, very naughty. Soaked in like, I'm not even trying it. All right. Sí, muchas gracias, chicos. Nos vemos. Muchas gracias. Nos vemos. Nos vemos. Oh my god, how can we keep eating after that, Yoli? We need to stop and gather ourselves. <laughs> and like Take make, make hunger. We need to make hunger. We must make hunger. <laughs> T-shirt. All right, let's go. Okay, so we have a little problem. I told you that in this video, I was gonna take you to my 10 favorite places. I'm actually taking you to 11 places because I couldn't whittle it down, I struggled. But I'm gonna get around this on a technicality. We're gonna call the next two places, one place, which kind of makes sense because they're kind of like a two punch. They're sort of part of the same play and they go wonderfully together. And first up, La Casa del Abuelo. If I had to live off one dish for the rest of my life, Hands down, it would be gambas al ajillo, garlic shrimp. And the best place to get it? La Casa del Abuelo, family run since 1906. So you're, like, you're the expert on these. Why is it so good? I think everything about this place is like amazing like the texture the flavor the, 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 the olive oil in there the parsley the garlic the, the chilies you just named perfect. all the ingredients that's all i know, I know but it's just, it's just perfect perfect for me i don't know it's like the, the plate for life make sure that you get plenty of bread and just dip it dip it dip it in this beautiful yummy sauce mm. oh. burning my throat i'm so eager to eat them you can get this dish all over Madrid, but there's something about how they do it here. The waiters get here in the morning and start peeling the shrimp. They're plump, they're firm, they're big. And the classic play was to pair it all with this sweet wine that they make themselves, el vino del abuelo. And these little glasses, chato glasses, they don't make them anymore. So these guys make their own to keep the tradition alive. And it pairs perfectly. And what I love so much about this place, true Madrid style, the kitchen is just a little corner of the bar with a grill and a fryer, and your food is cooked right before your eyes. Okay, so next stop, just two doors up, my home away from home, my happy place. Casa Tony! Oh yeah, let's go. <laughs> Casa Tony is my cheers, it's the real deal. Juan and brother David serve up rib sticking, no BS food, all cooked the old school way, right behind the bar. And like any authentic Tusca, it's got a ramshackle photo wall of old friends and happy memories. Okay, so here's the thing at Casa Tony. It's not like Revuelta or El Abuelo where you're getting kind of one thing, the specialty. Here you're going to get a spread of dishes. We've got fried baby cuttlefish, uh, fried anchovies. We've got mollejas, the sweet bread of a lamb. We've got grilled mushrooms and bravas, just rib sticking bravas. And this is like home cooking. This is, this is cooking that's just like, wow, just makes you feel happy. It fills your soul. Buttered and fried anchovies. I love them. Boquerones fritos. I love them. They're so easy to eat. You just go, you know? Mm -hmm. The whole thing. The whole thing. Guys, the whole thing. No kind of like getting rid of the bones or anything like that. No, I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah. It's just like biting into the sea. It's just gorgeous. Beautiful and healthy too. Yum. Mm. Lovely. Yummy. Pure umami too. Yeah. With a touch of lemon. But mommy or your mommy? Oh, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I look younger in person. Yeah. I need to change my camera there. <laughs> okay, so just simple bravas. Done so well. Oh? oh my god. There's some heat in there, homemade sauce, not the kind of ketchup, Tabasco stuff you get in a lot of places. Simple, yummy. Now, entry-level offal meat, entry-level casqueria, mollejas, 
something that scares a lot of people, uh, but this is your way into to, to organ meats, trust me. Mm. Oh my God. Better than I remember. Just delicate, almost creamy. You got the, 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 the kind of grilled uh, caramelization on the outside, a little bit of parsley. Wow, so good. Grilled cuttlefish, I kind of just love the battery saltiness on these. Oh, no. oh crumbly and salty in that. So seafood hit from the from the baby squid, baby cuttlefish. ¿Cuándo vamos a sacar una foto juntos que podemos colocar en la pared famosa? Ya, ya, ya deberíamos de tenerla. Sí, ¿no? Ah, como para una boda. Muy bien. Ole, muchas gracias. One thing though, we're just going to have to find a spot somewhere on the magical wall of fame. Yeah, you know, that guy can go little that way, little that way, right there. Yoli, I'm sorry I didn't get pig's ears, your favorite. I know. But I did get you the pincho moruno, which Thank you so much. I know you love as well. So I love it. Wow. Beautiful pork skewers marinated in cumin. Opa. Paprika, garlic. Originally a Moorish uh, recipe, but with lamb. Yeah. Right? Not, uh, not pork. with pork. Now not with pork. pork. How's it stand up to the pig's ears? Not quite there, but yummy. <laughs> ah. Okay, so we slightly overdid it at the first place. I'm feeling a little sweaty and ill right now. That's disgusting. But we have to keep going. We have overeaten so far, but we've got a couple more stops, all right? Hang in there. Hang, can you hang in there, Yoli? From now on, only tea. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Turn off okay, We're out of here. Next stop. Okay, so Luthia needed a siesta. So Yoli's gone to take her for a walk, but so you don't miss Yoli too much, I'm gonna ask her if she'll do the voiceover to introduce the next stop. It's time to get classy. Deep in the Lavapiés neighborhood, La Fisna, run by wine gurus Delia and Iñaki, Hola, ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? has an incredible selection of Spanish vino, plus a fantastic menu of modern tapas. So when I moved to Madrid, uh, there was no good places it felt like to really drink quality wine, which was frustrating, but that has changed in recent years. And La Fisna, this place, pre-opening now, is for me the best place in the city. Drink wine and eat great tapas. And they have this amazing shop out the back as well. You can drink uh, wine from the shop. Coming to a place like this and you can drink from regions that I've never had wine from. This is from Granada, the Alpujarra mountain range. I've never had a wine from there. Let's see. Something like crisp and crunchy and citrusy and sharp. So you guys have the Coravin for the serious wines. So this time I got a half glass. You can get half glasses here. For example, if your significant other is, you know, walking the baby or something like that, you don't have a lot of time. Ooh, it's good. I'm not gonna try and describe it, guys. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put you through that pain. Okay, this dish is a tartare of chicharro, which is a fish, like a mackerel kind of fish here. Mm. Oh, that's yummy. Oh, that's a really good tartar. Raw fish, sesame seeds. The dressing is, is kind of perfect. This is really yummy. And it's light after all the incredible amounts of food that we've been eating so far. So next up, we have a puerro, a leek that's on a romesco sauce. It's like a hazelnut, a Catalan sauce. On top, we've got parmesan and anchovy. Going in. Mm. The leek is slightly smoky, parmesan on top, and then that anchovy hit. I love a good anchovy hit. My kingdom for an anchovy hit in every dish. If you're not an anchovy lover, come to Spain and become one. Be born again. This is your chance. Got to get to this wine as well. Okay, there's another dish over here. So now we have gambas, little gambas that have been lightly battered and fried. A little bit of chili on them and a little bit of lime dust. All right. Kind of things you can eat like popcorn. Mm. Oh, it's really good. These are very typical in the south, you know, you just get these little little gambitas and they're just lightly fried, you just eat them whole. And just go down. Keep eating them. But it's time to go and meet Yoli and Luthia. So bottoms up, let's go and grab something sweet. Ciao, hasta luego. I found Yoli and Luthia and we headed to Madrid's most famous pastry shop for a sugar rush finale. There's always a queue. Always a queue. Always place. a good sign, right? Yeah, right. But the queue goes quite fast, so don't yeah. worry too much about it. You know what you're getting, Yoli? Oh, yeah, always. Yum, yum. Which one are you getting? Can I get the crema? No. Who's getting the girl? Who's getting the daughter? Oh, I don't know. The daughter takes care of herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So exciting to come here. When I was a kid, my mom would bring me here. We came to the city center. 
so it's like a tradition. You come here, it's like always bustling, and there's so many people, you know, people kind of shouting the orders, and it's just great, wonderful. Napolitana de crema, which uh -huh. is like a, a sort of a, the pastry cream. My favorite. That, hang on, or oh, Napolitana de chocolate. I Not thought, my favorite. I thought you were chocolate. No, no, I've always been a cream girl. I'm, I'm crema. We have a serious situation. Um, I like the crema. I don't know my, how to resolve it. I my guess brother you likes the, the crema as well. Yeah, you eat the chocolate and I eat the crema, right? That's the way it goes. Uh, um, I think I'm trying, you always try to trick me here. I'm sorry, I, don't, I can't quite figure out what it is, but. So when they're fresh out of the oven, these ones have cooled down a little bit. They're going to be super gooey. The chocolate is still really gooey. The pastry is light and flaky, and it's just like a serious chocolate hit. The Napolitana de Crema, which is my favorite, my brother's favorite, and Yoli's favorite, sadly. <laughs> All our favorites. Competition. Kind of bready, and just this inside, you've got all this pastry cream. If you come and stay with us, you can have the chocolate, you know. <laughs> we can all have crema. The chocolate's good though. It's good, huh? It's good. Yeah. Mm, yummy. Yeah, I'm just kind of stuck with the crema, but you yeah. know, maybe I should, I don't know. Mm. You should try the chocolate. Shake it up a little bit. Thoughts? It is indeed. It's good, huh? Very lovely. Yeah? It is lovely. Yeah. Maybe it's my new favorite, I don't know. Who knows? Huh? All right, crema. Crema so it seems bradier. I'm eating like a animal. I'm a crema guy. I'm a crema guy. No, it is very good. But favorite? I could turn any day. When you're in San Sebastian, it's all about eating pinchos. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go on a pincho tour. We've got a long list of places that we're gonna hit. We're gonna see how many we can get to. But the thing is, we're not in the in the historic center. We've gone out into the off the beaten path neighborhood of Gros to, to eat pinchos where the locals eat pinchos. It's gonna be delicious. We're gonna give you lots of tips. So venga, let's go. I'm James Blick and welcome to Spain Reveal. This channel is all about helping you understand and explore Spain like a local. And today we're going super local. I'm here with Lauren, Hola. Uh, my co-founder in Devour Tours. We're in San Sebastian at the moment uh, with our Devour Tours team because we're uh, filming a whole bunch of videos for our Devour Tours YouTube channel, which you can also check out. Today we've got an afternoon off, so we're heading into the Gros neighborhood, uh, which is across the, the inlet on the other side from the historic center where the pincho bars are super local because we want to see uh, how the locals eat pinchos pinchos, what pinchos the locals eat, and show you guys some real off the beaten path experiences. And we're going to give you lots of tips for eating pinchos. We have a long list of places. Do you think we can hit them all? I hope so. We're going to try and hit them. We're going to hit it really hard. One pincho in each place. Let's go. So this first pincho bar we're in is called Bergara. It's been around since the 1950s, and it's only in the last few decades that they've evolved into pinchos, because pinchos is actually quite a new concept uh, in the world in San Sebastian and the Basque Country since the, since the middle of the 20th century. Uh, and there's certain ways that you have to do pinchos. So the locals, for example, don't go out and just eat millions of pinchos uh, every day for lunch, for example. How they do it is they go to a pincho bar uh, and they have one, maybe two pinchos and the specialties of the house. So you'll see in pincho bars all the spread of a million things behind us, but each place has one or two specialties. So you want to ask, ¿cuál es la especialidad? What is the specialty? And they will tell you, we just asked this gentleman behind us, and that's what you dive into, uh, that specialty. You have one and then you go to another one. Uh, so don't just stay at one bite. And when you're out for pinchos, there's different drinks that you should really focus on. And one of them is cider, Basque cider. It's poured from a height uh, because that's how you, you release the flavor. Uh, the, the cider it pours from a height and it breaks open the, the flavors. It breaks open the bubbles. It's such a huge tradition here. The Basques have been drinking cider for millennia, uh, long before uh, there was uh, wine being drunk here or beer. Uh, and it's really buttery and dry. It's not sweet cider. It is so good, it's so refreshing. Okay, time to try these two pinchos, these famous pinchos here. So this pincho that they're famous for, you have to order it from behind the bar. It's not sitting on the bar. Uh, and it's called a chalupa. This is mushrooms, langostinos, and with uh, cheese. Mm. Wow. It's creamy, it's mushroomy. I love the umami flavor in that. So a perfect start, I think, to our to our pincho crawl. Next one, we're gonna go for anchovies. Now I love anchovies. I know people are scared of them often. So in here is a boquerón, which is a vinegar marinated anchovy and a salt cured anchovy. Uh, let's see. There's a reason that combination is called a matrimonio or a marriage, because it is perfect marital bliss, those two together. You've got the, that vinegar, that saltiness. Wow, I'm ready. Another swig of cider, and then we're heading off to the next pincho bar. Muchas gracias. All right, a little more cider down the hatch. 
so refreshing, perfect for midday drinking. You'll see on this bar, there's not a lot of stuff on display uh, on the bar. Now, one thing to realize is that a lot of the beautiful displays of pinchos here in San Sebastian are actually built for tourists. Uh, because when locals go out, often what you're gonna order is not something that's on display. You're not gonna grab that plate buffet style. You're actually gonna know what the specialty is and they come from the kitchen. So you actually have to order them from the menu, but there's still pinchos. So you see the pinchos on display, but there's pinchos on the menu that are hot, that they cook often to order, and those are the best ones. You have to know what those are. So don't necessarily be led astray by what's in front of you. Okay, Bar Ricardo has been around for uh, around 50 years as well. Famous for this very long looking uh, croqueta. So, muscle. Mmm, wow. That is pure muscle flavor. You can see the color in there. Uh, you can see the color. It's not just super bechamel -y like bad croquetas. This is like, this is good. This is delicious and strangely long. Okay, two bars down. Now into number three. Next stop is a bar called Zabaleta that is famous in Gros for its tortilla de patata with uh, pepper in it. So these new friends behind me uh, have told me, uh, confirmed for me that the tortilla here is famous uh, here. And look, they've got four people, four tortillas. And that's why I say pinchos is all about the specialties. So they know that the, the tortilla is a specialty here. You come and you order that and probably only that. And then if you're going to have more, you move on. So the locals here confirming it. ¿Qué tal la tortilla aquí? Very good and very happy with the tortilla. All right, I'm gonna go inside with Lauren and try some tortilla. Muchas gracias, chicos. Agur. You can see here in this bar, Tabaleta, that they've only got a few pinchos on display, and that's really important to remember. This is this is for the locals, so it's not about sort of teasing the tourists with incredible displays of pinchos. These are the things they do well, and there's a few of them and only a few of them. So these guys have been making this tortilla since the 70s, but what happens about five years ago, a French uh, food writer came uh, and wrote about the tortilla and how good it was, and it just went viral uh, and since then it's just tortilla 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 you can see them behind them they just stack these up these are new uh, they do 100 tortillas a day wow it is creamy I love my tortilla creamy mm. that is really good perfect amount of salt perfect creaminess mm. that is really really good when you're out for pinchos, there is one that you always have to try. It is the classic, it's the original pincho, and it's called the Gilda, uh, and it's this guy. It's got anchovy, uh, pickled peppers, and olives, uh, and it's named after Rita Hayworth, which, who was in the film Gilda uh, in the 50s, I believe, and she was hot and spicy, and so this is the hot and spicy pincho, and it's like, this about you know, 50, 60 years ago was the first pincho that was ever invented in San Sebastian, and if you have a big mouth, you can do it in one bite. Mm. Mm. Vinegary, salty, so good. Only a little bit of cider left. Ciao, gracias por la tortilla. Agur. The drink we're having here is Rosé, another really popular drink, particularly during the day here in San Sebastian uh, and throughout the Basque Country. This is a Rosé from Navarra, which is uh, another region off to the uh, east of here. Uh, and this is a Grenache, uh, Garnacha Rosé. Uh, look at that beautiful color on there. Mmm, wow, it's very, very rich. Compared to French rosés that are much lighter, this has a touch of that kind of almost red wine flavor. You can see that the, the skins have been left for quite a while to get that deep color and that, and that slightly deeper flavor. Really delicious. We have here a flauta with panceta ibérica de Joselito. What does that mean? So it means this beautiful light breadstick that's been wrapped in, in cured uh, pork belly and from the Iberian uh, black hoof pig. What a mouthful, uh, both to say and to eat, but let me try it. Mm, wow, so light, but just so beautiful, that, that slightly greasy, um, but very rich little pork belly that's in a fine layer that's been wrapped around it. Absolutely delicious. The other dish we have is cod, in a garlic soup. Uh, mm. Oh wow. Oh that is really really good. So it's a garlic soup which is a very traditional dish throughout Spain. Uh, there's a little bit of spiciness in there as well and the very slightly gelatinous um, and delicious flavor of the cod. Cod uh, bacalao is such a huge uh, ingredient and dish here in the Basque country and these are the cheeks from the cod. Ah, 
it's all it's awesome you have to come here and try this mata la uva try the soup delicious four down we're just checking the the google map to see what's coming up next that place was really really good uh not full at all although it took a little space that that uh cod dish all right what can you see lauren what's next okay we are on the way to Aitgori. Aitgori. Uh, my Basque is terrible, but uh, <laughs> it sounds delicious. Okay, now we're in Aitgori, a new place. Uh, we've ordered the ravioli, uh, which has foie and apple, and pairing it with chakoli, another drink that you have to try when you're out for pinchos in San Sebastian or anywhere in the Basque country. It's the local wine. It's a white wine from a local grape, uh, and it has this wonderful little fizz to it, and it's poured from a height to, to really give it that effervescence. Well, it has it already, but to kind of to give it a little more. Uh, oh, so good. Crisp, like green apple, uh, the flavor of the north. Um, just so refreshing. It's like you can't even taste the alcohol. Topa, time to hit the pincho. It's hot. It's a ravioli of foie and manzana, foie and apple, uh, and it's been fried. Looks good. It's not my favorite pincho in the world, uh, but the foie in the middle is super creamy, and there's that touch of apple. It's actually pretty, pretty damn yummy, and a perfect thing to pick up with your finger, uh, drop in your mouth, and pair with another sip of chakoli. To give you an idea of the prices, so that pincho, that foie ravioli was 310 and the wine was 180, so 490. Not full at all yet. Five down? Five down. Five down. The next three places are boom, 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 right next to each other. So, uh, and there's a few famous ones uh, in the mix here. Hello, Nubia. Hi. Hi. She is, uh, it was opened by her father-in-law in 1956 and we have this delicious spread uh, in front of us. We've got pig's ear here. Look at that. Wow. We've got down there, we've got squid in its own ink. We've got beautiful anchovies and stews in here, fresh uh, mushrooms down the end and fresh uh, piparra peppers that are, that are classic here. Uh, you often have them fried with salt, so I love the variety of this spread. And we have ordered their famous uh, volcano of blood sausage. So I'll leave you in suspense. This is the, one of our best, this black the volcano. You just break it. In. Yeah. It looks like a volcano. Oh. Everybody likes it. All right, so here we've got it. The volcano of Mortia with its apple puree and its yolk on top. It's going to break open and become a volcano. We're pairing it with Rioja, a young Rioja. Now, Rioja is a wine region. It's only two hours to the south of here. And if you're drinking red wine uh, in, in Pincho bars in San Sebastian, you're drinking Rioja. So you just ask for a Rioja or a Rioja Crianza. This is even younger than that. And perfectly fruity, a little chilled. I love it. Ooh, look at that. The volcano. That's intense but delicious. Lauren loved it. She said it's intense but delicious. My turn. I'm going in. Here we go. Mmm. Wow. That is intense but delicious. There's a lot going on there. And that egg, I love how so often in this country, uh, we just break an egg over the top of it. It just adds that wonderful gooey richness to it. Uh, can I just tell you, if you're scared of blood sausage, do not fear. Uh, in Spain, first of all, it's delicious. This blood sausage has rice in it, uh, which makes it kind of a little bit crunchy, uh, but it's also a superfood. Blood sausage is the new kale. It is literally a superfood. So you need to get into it now. Thank you. Bye bye. This place is heaving. The other bars we've been to have been a little quieter, but this place is clearly popular. We heard from our local friends that everything here is amazing, but we're going to order a couple of different things. Uh, but I just can't get how, over how busy this place is, and it's got such a great energy. So, obviously, a must visit Pincho Bar in Gros, Bodega Donastiarra. Okay, we've ordered a number of things here because we've been told everything is amazing here. The first is the most original sandwich you'll ever see, which is tuna, uh, pickled peppers, and anchovies called the completo or la completa. Can't remember which. Wow. That's a tuna sandwich on steroids. And with chocolate. I think we're going to camp out here a little bit and break our rule of ordering one pincho in each place. This is the Indurain, which is like a, 
don't even know what it is. It's like a gilda on steroids, a big chunk of tuna, of, uh, of cured tuna at the bottom. We've got a cured anchovy, we've got pickled peppers, a little bit of onion and olive on the top. I don't even know how to eat this thing. I asked for a knife and fork, but I kind of wasn't allowed it, so I'm just going in. <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> Oh, Falling apart before my eyes. I have oil running down my chin. It's getting ugly. If you love pickled food, canned fish, the whole deal. There's no way to eat that beautifully. But next dish, next to me, just tomatoes. Tomatoes. The beautiful thing about Spanish cuisine is the quality of the ingredients. So this is not a country of necessarily the traditional cuisine. It's not highly complex with a million ingredients. It's about having a great tomato, a little bit of salt, olive oil, and mm. you can taste. You can taste the sun in that. You can taste the sun, the, the, the ripened tomato. And you eat it with your fingers in these kind of places. There's no need to stand on ceremony. Mm. Beautiful, ripe, delicious, sweet tomato. So juicy, salt, great extra virgin Spanish uh, olive oil. I could survive on that. There, that half tomato dish was five euros. It was a media. If you don't want to get the full one, ask for a half. But not expensive and crazy delicious. <laughs> Leaving Bodega Donostiarra, our favorite so far. What a place. It is heaving. It's even heaving on the balcony out here on the terrace. It is just non stop this place. We have two more stops left one more savory, and then we have dessert. The best torrija which is a typical Spanish dish here in, well, someone told me the world, but we'll see. Uh, what is this place even called? Gracias. Super full right now. This place is called Ramuncho Berry. Uh, and these guys are famous for this dish, which is uh, a brie uh, dish. Uh, I don't even know what's on the outside. I'm gonna try it soon, uh, but I think it's been melted a little bit and it's served with a tomato sauce. It sounds super interesting and got one of those coming so we're gonna dig into that and I'm pairing it with a Rioja Crianza. Remember I mentioned earlier Rioja Crianza which is the Rioja that's been aged for two years, one year in the barrel and this is like the most common uh, red wine you're gonna be drinking here uh, in the Basque country. Uh, always served with a bit of a chill on it. Don't be afraid of the chill. Uh, it's because look you want your wine served at cellar temperature and that's just about 14 degrees Celsius and so a bit of a chill is good because it will only warm up and when a wine gets too warm it falls apart so okay so we've got the brie uh, often you'll find that the pinchos are available on the bar but then they take them into the kitchen to warm them up uh, this has poppy seeds on it and I'm gonna dip it in this tomato sauce my god it's huge I don't quite know how to how to do this Oh my God. It's hard, um, but it's really delicious if you're into brie, which I am luckily. Uh, I'm gonna have a little more. Lauren is behind the camera freaking out. Why don't you use forks? Oh, I thought you were supposed to do it. <laughs> So I ate it completely wrong the first time. Uh, I didn't realize there was knives and forks. <laughs> a little ahead of myself. Now I'm gonna try it with a little more civilized this way. Mm. I mean, it's the breeiness of the brie, the cheesiness, the poppy seed is there. Almost like the crunchiness is if you fried it and the sweetness of the tomato sauce. It's pretty Moorish. It's the kind of thing that's like a naughty delight, a naughty treat, and quite a nice lead-in to dessert, which is coming up next, the best torrija in the world. What is a torrija? Find out. Guys, we're at our last stop. We're at dessert. Uh, we're super full. 
Um, we've been at eight places. This is number nine, Nineu is what it's called. Uh, a recommendation uh, for their Torrija, which we've got here. Now, Torrija is a traditional, they call it the Spanish French toast, and that's just underplaying it a lot. It's something we eat at Easter traditionally, and it's bread. It's been soaked in either milk or, water, or wine and honey, and these guys are famous with it, famous for it. I'm pairing it with a uh, rosé, a super dark and dense rosé from Navarra, another one, seems appropriate. I have the sea behind me, the Bay of Biscay, beautiful San Sebastian, uh, and it's time to hit this. Mm. Wow. Wow. Creamy. Wow. It's coming in layers. Creamy, but there's the whole burnt uh, caramelized sugar on the top. It's not like any torrija I've ever had before. It's delicious. Uh, I'm going in for more. This would be a perfect place for you to finish your pincho crawl. Over the years, we have gotten a number of comments that have said you have to come to Valladolid for the tapas. The food is incredible, they say. It's the capital of tapas, they say. Valladolid, tapas capital of Spain, Madrid, Granada, Seville, maybe, but Valladolid? I've been here for the last week covering the city's annual tapas competition. That literally tasted delicious. Where chefs from across Spain and the world come to see who can cook the most delicious tapas. And the locals say this annual tapas Olympics has turned Valladolid into a breeding ground of tapas talent. Valladolid, crazy yummy. Making the city, they say, the best place to eat tapas in Spain. Mm. So this week is the city's annual tapas okay. festival, and we're gonna hit 10 of Valladolid's best tapas bars to see if the hype is true. Tasting award-winning tapas from this year's event and previous year's competitions. But I'm wondering, is Valladolid the best place in Spain for tapas? Or is it more of an alternate tapas universe Willy Wonka wonderland? Let's find out. I'm blowing it up. So this is a firecracker wonton filled with stewed pig's feet. Just what I like in the morning. The definition of yummy, right? They're like, yeah, very umami. Al unisono. no. muy despacito hacia afuera, vamos sacando Okay, so he took my cork out, so to speak. So you have to take your own cork out. Yes. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Using okay. this device. No, 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 this is pretty easy, actually. I think I can... You have to, uh -oh. you have to turn it, he said. Ah, yeah, true. Ay, Ay. turning. You go first. Rainy day in Segovia. That's Olé. where I am right now. Rainy day in Segovia. Actually, that's true. You know what we should do? Instead of saying to you lovely people at home, like, mm, it tastes like suckling pig. Suckling you know? pig eh? We're not experts in that way. What does it remind us of? That is the game. Mm. You're taking too long well, already. This is really good. Now that I'm getting nervous ah. now. So it reminds me of when we shot that video in Segovia at Jose Maria, the famous suckling pig place, the first bite of cochinillo in Segovia. Okay. And it's raining. I just, I just, you know, <laughs> I just added to you. Whatever. Yeah. So that was good? Did yeah, you enjoy lovely. Yeah, do you know where we're go. going? No, no idea. Lucky I do. <laughs> Hola. Uh -huh. This won the national competition last year in 2021 and it's like a corn puff. Inside is super slow cooked pork in a wood fire oven, mayonnaise, guacamole. Oh yeah, that is good. It's like the best taco you've ever had, down to the gram. Mm. It reminds me of my first taco ever. So I get a lot of questions about prices. This week where all the tapas are being served, then each tapa is two euros 50. That's it, two euros 50. And you see how elaborate some of these dishes are. It's incredible. Hola, ¿qué tal? He vuelto. This is the pride of my country. Second oh. place. It's a crunchy bread roll <laughs> with black squid ink around the edge. You see that, the edge? Yeah. Inside is scallops and prawns. And then there's onion ash in there. Wow. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And black garlic that the chef smuggled in from New Zealand. Mmm, pretty amazing. Mmm. And? Are you just saying that to. No, 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 no. no. You're taking me back to New Zealand, actually. My second go around with this guy. The inside, the scallop and the and the prawn is like sweet, it's so sweet, and the crunchy, slightly tangy sauce on top. This is what it reminds me of. Growing up in New Zealand, we'd go and we'd have fish and chips. And one of the things you can get on the fish and chip menu is a crab roll. There's something about the slightly crunchy outside and that sort of sweet crab meat in the inside that reminds me of this one. Hola, buenas. Hola. ¿Qué tal estás? Qué rico. 
gracias, Alfonso. So on the base, we have this little roll full of lechazo young lamb, castellano, so that's the Spanish side, and then these little balls on top are full of Indian spice. The tapa is here. Ooh, you so Here's nervous. the deal though, we've been saying memories so far. Could be, it just could what be is it? senses, feelings. Emotions, um, okay, the saddest like moment that. in your life, or the happiest. Where's our child? Okay, uh, there we go. We go <laughs> it needs to go like, the, the top needs to go to the bottom of your throat. So one, two, three. <gasps> ah, mm -hmm. wow, okay. Ha hecho bien, no? Ha hecho bien. Oh, it is delicious. Two worlds together. Two worlds together. That's it. A haiku. Qué bien. Uy. Lucía, hay que abrir el dragón. Eh? Sí. Coquel. Uh. Uy. So we have this tiny little brioche, like donut, that is full of chicken. And also on top is a glaze made from boiling down the chicken bones. And the yellow raspberry on top that you can just see is only available a couple a of months of the year. Of the year. Yeah. Uh -huh. One bite. One bite. One bite. Uh. Uh. Mm. So there's the yummy kind of uh, savory quality of the chicken. Then there's that spicy sharp yellow raspberry hit. So the first thing I thought about was breakfast on a cold winter morning and there's a chicken roasting in the oven for okay. lunch. Okay, okay, yeah? that's nice. Uh -huh. I like uh -huh. it, I like yeah. it. So it's in a basket, it's a traditional fisherman's basket hey. and we have a sourdough bread. And here we have the three kinds of algae, the seaweed, and on top we have jurel, a kind of blue fish that's been cooked like a la brasa. It all sounds pretty fishy to me. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes fishy. Give me more. Ole. Mm. Yes. Muchísimas <laughs> gracias. Muy rico todo. Ay, chiquitina. No jodas. Have we got the Guinness record for the most bars visited as a I family? Know. I think there's records for everything these days. You can invent the record and as long as you beat it, which is <laughs> great if it doesn't exist. Cinco gustos. Five tastes. All right. Private dining room. Hello. <laughs> This is the Australian chef's entry at one yeah. most vanguardist tapa, most cutting edge, I guess wow. you could say. Salmon on the top, the biscuit base, the mousse of, of horseradish. One bite or two? Oh, this is a one bite, wow. I think. Oh, it is delicious. Cheesecake by the sea. Cheesecake by the sea. Yeah. Okay, I love it. Olé. Ave Phoenix, which is like Phoenix bird in a way. So on this date, there was a fire in the kitchen here in the restaurant this year and they burned yeah. the paella and, the, and they had to close for two weeks i and know the, unbelievable the firemen came and so this is a little homage to that uh, paella that burned <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> It takes me back to when we were just in Valencia now. And not eating the paella, but all the smells that come at you as you're cooking the paella over the fire and then tasting it. Okay, gracias, gracias. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego, Palmina. Adios, oh. You're going to get a siesta now? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop, solo. And then we'll meet up with Yoli and Ruthie again. This place has uh, one sun and the Repsol guy. It's kind of like the Spanish Michelin. Just you and me, dinner for two. And this is a tapa with drama, the chef just explained. In this competition, in this tapas festival, chefs come from around Spain and around the world. In the few days up to the competition, they're billeted, they're hosted by a local restaurant and they show the local restaurant how to make the tapa. So Chef Dale was in touch with this, rest with this chef from Barcelona who was coming, all good. But then the chef just never turned up. And so now Chef Dale has to cook this tapa for thousands of people. He's never tasted the chef's version. He's got the recipe and he's turning it out himself. Let's see how it is. So this is called sweet tartar. We have, it looks like a steak tartar, right? Meringue, that's not meat. That is raspberry. And then on top, which looks like an egg yolk, that is mango. Oh, wow. It's beautifully tart and sweet as well. The meringue is just a light meringue. It's savory. On the steak tartare, there's a lot of raspberry, but it doesn't taste too sweet. It's tart, and then the mango on top is the sweetness. Muchas gracias. Me ha encantado. Un placer. He comido el, 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 la presa. El, la presa. Super rica. Con esa salsita. Sí, muy rica. I need to come back with Yoli. That place was cool. I really loved the tapa. But more than anything, the chef, Teo, how he handled the whole situation, how he put that together. The level of cooking in the city Totally unexpected. This place looks popular and busy. Hello, baby. Wow. Toma ya. Ole. Ole, ole, ole. La, la, la. Pero Lucía, ¿has visto qué magia? So first smelling, then eating the tapa. Ah. I love the way you had to really get down there. And that then. was pretty, mm, very lovely. Smoking. Smoking. Ole. But that practice in those clubs. 
a lovely um, broth with a bit of heat there. Okay. Lovely. This is very hard to. Tenedor, tenedor. Winter is coming. Oh. Strap me up. Don't know what that means. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> strap me up. Ole. Vamos. La pecha está elaborada con un totopo de maíz. Madre mía. What do you wish? Ah, oh, that you never tell, right? Chicken yeah. covered in white chocolate, and then the wick is like a corn something. Corn. So the wick is edible. Yeah, corn. Feels a bit weird. Chicken and white chocolate. It's as if we had a day at the beach and we had cold chicken sandwiches from the roast we had yesterday and then like a naughty milky bar of chocolate, which is not real chocolate. Everyone knows white chocolate's for idiots like me. You know, people who don't really like dark chocolate. Drop. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing, right? I know what you mean. Mm, I know. Mmm. Mmm. Who would have thought, huh? Yeah, and I was expecting not to like it, and I actually like it. Yeah. But like, I've never eaten anything like that, so... Eso. Mm -hmm. One for you guys. Glug, 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 glug. She was like, be careful with your fingers. That it looks like cheese, but it's not cheese. It is roast pork ribs, an apple compote, Ole. foie, cocoa, and an almond something or other. Here go, Yoli. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. What was it again? I don't know. <laughs> Un placer, Gabe. Nos vemos, chao. Okay, new day, new clothes, but more tapas. So it's Saturday, and the Saturday and Sunday of the festival are when the bars are slammed. We're gonna try the tapas that won the, wow. the national competition and the international competition, plus a whole bunch of others. Oui. Okay, so it's a potato, crunchy potato roll that's empty, filled with roast eggplant, and then there's a romesco sauce that has some tweaks, and then yogurt, cream, and granada, pomegranate. In I go. Mm. My favorite, maybe? Yeah. It's super smoky. You know how eggplant can be kind of flavorless? It's so smoky and beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you step out of the shower and you're naked and... No, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I did not expect that. Wow. That is like the ramen flavor and that little dumpling. It's really rich. Mm. The rice bowl is very, yep. very nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of chicken broth flavor in there. Poor man's bread, I'm gonna call Poor it. Poor man's bread. Yeah. Next stop. Let's go. Let's go. It's one of the largest glasses, wine glass I think I've ever drunk from. I'm afraid my head's gonna fall into it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one, the third uh, word of the international prize, right? Yeah, so it's... Where from? England. Uh-huh. So it's cochinillo inside mm -hmm. with the alioli, a yuzu alioli. On top is gamba with a miso Pedro Jimenez thingamajig. Wow. It's very Spanish. Yeah. You know? So do you want to have it? I've had this. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I guess I have both. Ah, uh, I love it when you troll me. Mari Montaña, it's called. Mari Montaña it is. Yeah. Surf and turf. Yeah. Mardi Gras shrimp beignet. So it's wow. a buñuelo de gambas with a Cajun sauce and a corn and potato salad. What is the immediate thing that comes to your mind? My mom's fish. My mom's fish. I like it. <laughs> this is good. My mom's fish. <laughs> corn dogs at camp. Wow. I've never had a corn dog and I've never been to camp really. I have, but I've never had corn dogs at camp, but that's just came out. I don't know what this is. Still don't know what this is. It's like a sky blue sort of tile. What is that? Is it going to be sweet? Yeah, I can't quite. Oh, shit, I dropped oh. it. <laughs> yeah, having a lot of trouble with this tapa. <laughs> you made it for the final pincho. While we wait for this last pincho. Thoughts on Valladolid? We Ooh. were here eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, I Gastronomically, know. like, was this what you expected? No, I mean, it's, it's bigger, you know. Gastronomy seems to be a big part of uh, the city life, so it's really, really great. Each year there's unique tapas, but there's also always previous year's winners available, just 
great tapas at the yeah, place yeah, he's made. Yeah. So this has been a revelation for me. Okay, Yali, let me tell you what we're eating here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cochinillo, hoisin sauce, cilantro, and menta. And oh, mint. Yum. I feel like we should both eat this at the same time. We should okay. do something special here. Okay, we're on Lucia's time now, so uh, it's time for her to play in the park. So we have brought the pincho to, to the, the park. park. Here we go. Nicely framed. Won the competition this year. Do we toast? It's toast. Mmm. Mmm. Yoli's just going to do interpretive dance for yeah. this one. <laughs> Caribbean Segovia. Wow. Those are the, you know, the, the cilantro there. And, you know. Yeah. I'm going to say, take me home, mama. I need to eat. <laughs> okay. Cordoba, this wonderful, whitewashed and delicious city of Andalusia. Where are the best places to eat? Today we're going on a tapas crawl to five of the best places, modern and traditional, some of the best tapas bars in this city. Are you ready? Yes. Hungry, thirsty, venga, let's go. Yoli, how long has it been since we've been in Cordoba? Five years. Five years. And five years? It's too long. <laughs> too long, because this city is amazing. I remember when we were in this square five years ago in the dark, we discovered it, it was all lit up, and it was magical. And this city is magical. You know, a thousand years ago, Cordoba was the center of the world in a lot of ways. It was one of the biggest cities in the world, and it was a center of culture and learning. But we're here for the food, right? Yeah, well, we're here for a wedding, actually. So hi, Katie and Pablo. Hi, Katie and Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> but we came one day early because we want to try the amazing food there is here. I love the food in Cordoba. There's such a wonderful tradition. So many classic dishes now famous in Spain. We're born here. It's going to be fantastic. And are you ready? Yes. I'm thirsty. Let's hit the first place now. Around Let's the corner. Go. Okay, first stop, Bodega Guzman. We were here once five years ago and you can see how they serve their wine. They top it up. Diet is in here oh in Guzman. God. So we're drinking Fino de Cordoba. Now this is a Fino, it's it's like a sherry style wine from Montilla, which is the region here. And salud, Yoli, to today's tapas crawl. Yeah, and the wonderful weekend we have ahead. Exactly. Holiday weekend. Holiday weekend filming. Mm, that's good. <laughs> okay, so a couple of tapas to kick off with our fino, with our very tall pour. We've got bocanones in vinagre, which are anchovies that have been pickled in vinegar. We also have berenjenas de almagro, and they're baby eggplant that have been pickled. They've got cumin in there. They're so delicious. They're from Castilla-La Mancha, and they are really dangerous to eat. So we're going to get into those now. One of the first tapas that I fell in love with in Spain were bocanones in vinagre. Mm, it's so good. Vinegary, garlicky. Oh mm, my god, so good. Wow. <laughs> the Benajena al Mago. Yoli's already taken a bite. Such an intense flavor of cumin and vinegar. It's curing all the wounds in my mouth. That's a weird thing to say. But, uh, <laughs> it's really good. I'm glad to be in Cordoba. It's so long since we were here. And I've always loved this place. It has so much magic and mystery. So very excited. And that's not just half a glass of this stuff talking. A little bit. <laughs> So as well as being a bar, this place has a really important place in Cordoba's history. It's a tertulia taulina. So that means it's a place where people come together to talk, to discuss bullfighting. You'll see all the bullfighting memorabilia on the walls. And you'll also see the older gentlemen who are here, a couple behind me. There you go, having a chat over a glass of wine at midday, enjoying their retirement. And so, you know, these guys might be members of this, this kind of like club, this society, which is kind of wonderful. I know when I'm 70, I want to be coming here and maybe not talking about bullfighting, but I don't know. Talking about things, yeah, mm. movies maybe. I always enjoy the first drink because, to be really honest, when we make these videos, I'm always really nervous at the first bar. Yes. I get nervous, yeah, I get I, I want to make sure it's okay, especially when I don't know the people who run the bar that well. I get the big camera out, so I always like to kind of finish the first drink to <laughs> relax a little bit. Get so. a bit of Dutch courage. Exactly, Dutch courage. <laughs> Wow. 
Okay, stop number two, Taverna Salinas. Now this was, again, a recommendation from Katie from her blog. She said this was great for traditional dishes, so we've ordered three of them. Of course, we're drinking a little bit of local wine from the barrel. We have the Fino and the Oloroso from Montilla. This is an Oloroso that has more time in the barrel. Yeah, exactly, and this one smells kind of nuttier. This one, we keep toasting, but yeah, really delicious wines. Salud. Salud. One thing I just wanted to point out, I don't like to shoot people too much, so I shoot them over my shoulder, but I love how there's two <laughs> families here in this little bar. And we've got these guys behind us having their lunch. Locals, I love it. Okay, so they told us we shouldn't order all these dishes. We're only on stop two out of five, but we did. We had Salmorejo, famous from Cordoba. We have Rabo de Toro, famous from Cordoba, bulltail stew. And we have Berenjenas Fritas with Caña de Miel, which is eggplant that's been breaded and fried with honey on top. Also, famous from Cordoba. Oh my god. It's so good. I could live on this. If you're a raw food person, this is your dish. And in summer when it's hot, salmorejo. I actually prefer it to gazpacho almost. Mmm, me too. It's so creamy, so tomatoey. It's perfect. And the egg, I love it. I love it. Great salmorejo. So good, oh my god. It's been like four or five years without having, you know, salmorejo cordobes, you know, because I make salmorejo at home. It's not the same. It's beautiful. Okay, rabo de toro. Now this is a dish like, as you saw from the last bar and also this bar around, there's so much bullfighting memorabilia. And we're really in the heart of bullfighting country. And so rabo de toro, bull tail stew, comes from the idea that when the bulls were killed, all the rich people used to get like the great cuts, you know, the sirloins or whatever they were. And the poor people were left with the, the meat around the tail and the backbone. And that's where the stew comes from. And it's slowly stewed in red wine. We've been given it with a spoon. I guess it's a stew. I've only ever had it with a knife and fork, so... Wow, yes. Yoli, this is amazing. Okay, so it turns out you don't eat this with a spoon. That is, you know, not done. It was just a mistake. They gave us a knife and fork, so... Get in there, Yoli. I'm going to show you how this is just falling apart. Yoli. The incredible rabo de toro. Okay, the last of our triumvirate, bodega or taberna salinas, is the berenjena frita. So these are eggplant, they've been lightly breaded and fried and with honey on it. So good. I mean, this can be done really badly, but when it is good, it is magical. It's healthy, it's a salad. Is this a salad? <laughs> a fried salad, okay. <laughs> Let's see. I must say this is not my favorite dish usually because you know particularly enjoy like dishes with like sweet in it like that but let's see this is really good this is very yummy so respect i'm also a bit worried about yoli she can't stop eating the food <laughs> she's she's going crazy on the bull tail stew we won't be able to make it and i'm almost a vegetarian usually <laughs> that's not true but hey So there's two queues behind me. There's one for the mosque on my right, and on my left there's one for Spain's largest tortilla de patatas. It's a bar called Bar Santos. And how do they make this amazing tortilla? Because you would need a pan about that high. I have heard that they actually fuse two tortillas together. So they make one tortilla and another tortilla. They stick them and then they melt them together. I don't know if that's true, but to get a tortilla that size, I think you have to do some special magic. So we've got our tortilla, Yoli fought through. The actual slice or the pinch of tortilla is not that huge, but you saw the size of the real tortillas so I love it people just get plastic cups of beer they get salmorejo and they get tortilla and they sit alongside the walls of the mezquita to eat it so not an official stop on our on our tapas tour today a little thing because we never had a chance to try this so let's see if big also means great all right Spain's largest tortilla let's see man it's big and it's dense and it is definitely not Spain's best tortilla it's not terrible, it's not great. A bit mushy, lacks a bit of salt, uh -huh. it's all right. It kind of tastes like sometimes when you get like an average tortilla in a bar, but hey, the experience is not, you know, necessarily the tortilla. It's sitting alongside the walls of this eighth century mosque, drinking beer in plastic cups and eating tortilla. Always the trap on these tapas crawls. Bar three down and we're stuffed. 
but we're gonna try a very famous dish from this city. It's ugly, but it's delicious. Stop number four, Taberna Congora. Now these guys are famous for their flamenquin, which means like a little Flemish person. And, and it supposedly comes from the Flemish assistants who came with Charles V, who was a king of Spain 500 years ago, because it's blonde, because it's egged and battered and, and fried. And what's in here are rolls of loin of pork loin and also cured ham and then battered and fried. Sometimes it has cheese and it's the perfect thing to share. It is not gourmet, but it is very local and it's soul food. Yoni was just saying this is soul food and it is. The, the Cordobese people love this. Um, they eat it constantly and it's kind of like the food that reminds you of your, your mother's cooking. Like, oh, mama, we're having flamenquines again tonight. Mm -hmm. like, it's kind of yummy. Yeah. Mm. The depth of flavor you get in these things, it's very unique, you know, because like, oh, like I am having pork. Sometimes you get them in Madrid and it's just like boiled ham with like cheese and like all kind of rolled up and fried. This is like something different. I'm so full, Yoli, but you have to see what's inside this flamenquin, guys. Look Let's at see. Let's have a look. look at the layers of pork in there. That is what we're eating. Layers and layers of meat that is fried. It's so heavy. It's actually <laughs> heavy. It's insane. Oh my god, I'm sweating flamenquin. We still have one more place to go. We are going to do it. We're going to do it. Yeah. Okay, so a little off-road now. This is not on our tapas by route as such. It's snail season. The season's it's on from February to June, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we're right in the middle of it now. Cordoba, it's traditional to eat snails in all different forms. Big ones, small ones, in a broth of mint and cumin. We did this once before and it was yes. amazing. Yeah, I love it. I just love snails like that. Delicious. Let's dig in. Okay, we've got three different types of snails. We've got what they call chicos or little ones. This is really, really hot. But this is a cup that comes in a broth. This broth has spearmint and cumin in it and you eat snails and you drink the broth. We've got cabrillas, which are bigger, but still not the big guys. And these come in a slightly spicy tomato sauce, like, look at these guys. And these are the gordos, or the fat ones. And these come in a similar sauce, but they're just a lot bigger. So we're gonna work through them. We have a plastic bin. The whole bar is lined with plastic bins and plants of, of spearmint. We have our, our white wine that just comes from a cask behind here. It's very rustic and they've got huge, big cooking pots behind where they have all the snails being cooked up. So time for me to dig in. Yeah. Yoli, I know you love this, but you'll have to go next. Let's start with these guys. Yoli. <laughs> Ooh, yummy cumin broth. I mean, the snail in of itself doesn't actually have a lot of flavor. No. Yep. Yeah, really strong cumin flavor. A little bit of heat in there. They call it picante. I guess it's some sort of chili. All right, now we're going for the cabrillas. That snail actually has a little more flavor. Put your hands up. Oh, let us know what you think of snails. Maybe you've only had the escargot garlic butter version or have it eaten in front. Look at that guy. Wow, wow. That's lobby. That's a big slug. Oh, yeah. Meaty, yummy. I'm sure these are good for you. They have to be, otherwise, God knows what we're doing. <laughs> mm, yeah, Yoli, your turn. Oh, wow. I mean, this is like massive. Better not to think about it. Mm. Uh, Can't keep up with this one. <laughs> very yummy. That's very, very yummy. I love the, the broth. There, oh, yeah. there she is. Ooh. Oh, it's right down the hand. Yummy, very yummy. I prefer the big one, actually. Mm -hmm. Alright, down the hatch. <laughs> now, hey. for the chicos. Hola, que tal? Aww. I feel like a pet snail. Oh, it's beautiful, actually. People have them as uh, pets, right? So, I mean, a lot of people might be horrified by what we're doing. Ole! Que da penita. No, me da penita. Mm. Love the cumin in there, very yummy. Very I happy. love snails, yeah. Happy with the escargo season. Stop number five, La Sastreria, the tailor. We're on the red wine. 
This place, La Sastería, does a lot of modern food and we're finishing up modern. We're pretty full and we've looked through the menu and it looks incredible. There's one thing that stood out to us and that is local with a twist. So we've ordered that and it's coming now. I never thought I would say this, but I became hungry again. <laughs> Just by looking at these guys. Rabo de toro, Rabo de toro. Beautiful, beautiful Cordovan Mexican melange. Cord mix. Yeah. Cord mix. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dignity. <laughs> like I was saying, delicious. <laughs> Rabo de toro. Rabo de toro. Tacos. It's beautiful. Ole. I mean, we were eating rabo de toro 45 minutes ago, mm. and it was delicious, uh -huh. and this is different, and it's just great. I love the fact that it's it's just so, so much creamy, the meat, it's mm. rich, it's, it has that same richness of that first place, but yeah. it's in a taco. Very good, very good. This might be the cleanest bite of all of them, the biggest too. I can't oh. believe you're still eating, it's insane. <laughs> I tell you, I'm hungry again. So, for the next 24 hours, I'm going to eat in as many places that I can. And my plan in Toledo is to answer the age-old question: Is there good food in Toledo? I've compiled my list of places to try from your recommendations on Instagram, from TripAdvisor, from Google search, from my own instinct in a sense. I can't eat everywhere and I'm not going to eat in places that are super restauranty where I would have to sit down for you know hours and eat a three course meal. I want to give you how to get a, a dish or two and go. And that's right, I'm here all on my own. Yoli and Lucia are back in Madrid. So when the cat's away, venga, let's go. So this place, El Trebol, comes up on a lot of lists. First impressions, the pour is a little short, I would say. Wouldn't you? <laughs> okay, let's start with the not famous dish here. Let's start with the croqueta de jamón. You got that there? This is something that uh, is a great way to see if a, if a place is, is legit, how they do it. Looks pretty gooey inside. Let's see how it is. Mm. So I actually think I ordered a croqueta de jamón, but I got a croqueta de gambas, uh, which is another one, which I almost ordered. It's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. I have to be careful how much I eat, guys, because I don't want to, you know, stuff myself. I have a lot to get through. Let's try this bomba. Bomba, it's weird that it's, they have it here, because it's actually a dish that's famous from Catalonia. You can see it up here. Supposedly created in the 1930s, when people, people were throwing a lot of bombs around. And it's just potato and beef ground up, unless it's pork, but I think it's usually beef, uh, fried, and it's got alioli on it, and brava sauce. It's like a bomb, right, in your mouth. Yeah. Okay, it's good. The place is rustic, and if you want something kind of cheap and cheerful, you wouldn't travel to Toledo to eat here. You didn't come to Toledo to eat a bomba. So the verdict, El Trebo is fine if you're looking for something cheap and cheerful, something to, you know, grab a bite during the day. It's a little more than fine. It's tasty. It's tasty. That wasn't fair. So this place, Alfileritos 24, 24, is kind of a mixture of traditional, modern, they've got a restaurant with more elaborate dishes, they've got a tavern area for tapas. Guys, when you're here in Toledo, try and drink wine from the region, wine from this part of Spain. There's some great, really rich, deep red wines here. They actually happen to have here one of my favorite wines, which is called uh, Rio Negro, Black River. So you'd be looking for wine from Viti Castilla, that's a region, or also Dio Mentrida, uh, the region of Mentrida. I'm gonna try and order a key dish in each place. And actually, the waiter said, this is a really good thing to order here when I ordered it. And I figured it was because, you know, venison is so popular here. It feels like a bit of a star dish of the restaurant. And so I feel like if you get the star dish, it's gonna be indicative of the quality. The meat is really tender, peppery, and the, the mushroom sauce is really rich. Yeah, this is good. This is good. We're doing pretty good, guys. It's not even eight o'clock yet, and we've already hit two places. Before eight o'clock is before official opening time, so I'm feeling kind of proud of us. Ah, uh, me. <laughs> 
Okay, so our next place is still closed and behind here, man, the leather was quiet right now. There's kind of a silence in the back alleys and the dark streets. It's quite cool. Have you ever seen the movie Don't Look Now? Kind of reminds me of that right now in these back alleys. I hope I don't get murdered by an evil goblin in a red coat. It would really put a damper on things. Okay, so I finally got in Bar Ludeña. So it's been open since 1955, around there. And it's a classic here in Toledo. And I just love the decor in here. I actually came here a year ago and I had this dish. They're famous for their carcamusas, which is a pork, kind of like a stewed pork dish and in this kind of tomatoey gravy with a little bit of heat. And I mean, if you're here in winter and you're walking around and you need to feel, kind of warm your soul, this is the dish. And note, no short pour here at Ludeña. It's really yummy, guys, and I have a problem when I have a really yummy dish in front of me, no matter how, how full I am, I just can't stop eating. This is the kind of dish that just fills that, that hole in your soul when you're really hungry. I have a dinner reservation in 30 minutes, and I've already been to three bars, and I'm already stuffed. Hasta luego. So Ludenia is one of those places that it's just rustic restaurant eating, rustic bar. You want to stand at the bar and drink a big glass of, of local wine. And they've got a whole range of dishes that you can order. They've got a dining room out back. I don't know, just kind of like standing at the bar and eating a plate of stewed pork. If that doesn't get you excited, well, it's probably not the bar for you. Or it's also fun walking through a, a thick curtain to go into a bar. It's kind of worth it just for that. All right, next stop. This place, Restaurante uh, La Orza, or La Orza, it's just known as. Looks like I forgot the name. No, I came here four years ago with my parents uh, and Yoli, and we really enjoyed it. We sat out on the on the terrace out front. It was a beautiful night, summer skies in Spain. The evening goes all indigo. To give you a sense of what this place is like, if I got a short pour in one place, a big, serious, hearty tavern pour in another, this is the place where they serve a little bit for you to try the wine before you before you drink it. So you're getting an idea. They serve a little olive oil with your bread, a little aperitivo. So a little more. We're, we're up in the ante, guys. I've, I've, I've really built to a climax here tonight before we wake up tomorrow and do it all again. And I should explain what orza means, the name of the restaurant. And orza is an earthenware dish that uh, traditionally, when you had the matanza, when you, you know, killed a pig, you would keep a lot of the uh, the parts in olive oil, preserve them in olive oil, in an earthenware dish, and that was called an orza. So they have this dish here, which is cerdo de orza, so it's pork that's been uh, preserved in olive oil in an earthenware dish, and they make this little little aperitif out of it. It looks, looks yummy. Mm, it's good. I am about to die right now, but there is room for more. And the other thing you need to try when you're in Toledo, what's famous here are game meats. Not big game, not, we're not in, eating elephants and tigers here. We are eating small, what's called caza menor in Spanish. So it's like partridge and, and birds and hare and things like that, you know, that are hopping around the, the countryside. And so, mm, oh man, that's rich. And so what we've got here is we've got partridge that's been stewed in this really thick gravy over a creamy rice. It's, Oh, it's yummy. So the waiter came over and he said, would I like anything else? And I said, no, just kill me now. But instead, he brought me a sorbete de helado de, de tomillo. So like a sorbet of, of thyme ice cream infused with a thyme, with a thyme liqueur. It kind of sounds horrible, but it's actually really delicious. I don't know if it's God's grace, but that side of the cathedral for a moment, I forgot how disgusting I feel. I'll tell you what, I came here for the food, came to Toledo to eat, but what I'm also loving is wandering around this city that's empty, late autumn Toledo. There's nobody. There's literally just me and a cat in the street right now by the cathedral. I wonder if the cat feels disgusting. Day two, got a cup here of Torrefacto to rip a hole in my stomach and make room for all the food's gonna go. So we've got about four places we're hitting today. Once I finish this coffee, we're gonna get back amongst it. Okay. 
This place is like the mother load for me. See, Museo del Queso Manchego, which just means the Manchego Cheese Museum. And it's part museum, part tasting space, part shop. It's an emporium of gourmet products from, well, across Spain, but with a particular intense focus on products from this region, from, from La Mancha, uh, around Toledo. So you can come in here and be served by Teresa and her family. It's a family run place. And what I've got, I've got a glass of wine from the region. Hey, it's 11 a.m. And I've also got three types of Manchego cheese. I've got one that's younger, that's only been cured for about three months, one that's been cured for six months, and one that's been cured for over a year. So you can really taste the variety of Manchego cheese available. And remember guys, not all cheese that kind of looks and tastes like Manchego cheese is Manchego cheese. It has to be from this region and it has to be made by uh, the milk from the Manchega uh, breed of sheep. Let's get into the cheese. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick tasting of these, of these cheeses. Little uh, palate cleanser first. That is actually just Dutch courage because I'm about to get into it again. <laughs> Teresa told me the best way to taste these cheese, you gotta start with the young and you wanna break each cheese and you wanna smell it, right? Mm. It has a little bit of acidity, it's rich, it's kind of still creamy though because it's young. Yum. Firm, creamy, a little bit of that curation you can taste in there, a little bit of that acidity that comes with it. We're gonna get into the, into the six month one now. Break it open, okay. Oh yeah. Well, it's not a bitterness, it's the acidity. Wow, that is really good. This is a semi-curado, so it's six months, and I think that, for me, is the sweet spot. You got the intensity of the old stuff, but the creaminess of the younger stuff. Mm, really, really good. Let's hit the granddaddy. One year cured. Ooh. Mm. It's almost got a spiciness to it from the curation. Breakfast of champions. And I should give you some idea of what the wine is like. This is just the kind of wine I expect from this part of the country. It's rich, it's deep, it's dark. Mm, spicy, really, really good stuff. Now this place, uh, Scala Bar Scala, is really interesting. It's super rustic. You walk in here and the place is kind of empty looking. The decor is really basic. You wouldn't expect this to be a place where you can get really yummy food. And so it's been open since the mid 19th century. The sound of the coffee machine, a classic, the music of Spain. And here they just do really delicious, yummy local dishes. You've got grilled pork, you've got mushrooms, you've got carcamusas, you've got all the dishes here. And what I love is all the raw ingredients on display. You can just say, hey, I want that cut of meat, or I want those mushrooms, and they just grab it. You know, really traditional, see what's on display and throw it on the grill. I also love a bar that gives a good free tapa. So here we've got an anchovy. Oh man, so good. And then roasted red pepper with tuna. Wow, I don't know if that was thought out. We've got the salty, intense anchovy and the sweetness of the red pepper. And that's just the free tapa. And look, I know I'm eating a lot of meat, guys. So I've got this mushroom dish. This looks like mushroom with garlic and just grilled. No. Meaty, mushroomy, God forbid. Perfectly seasoned and kind of garlicky on the outside. And not a piece of stewed meat inside. Next up, I got two dishes here. So this is lagarto, which is a cut of pork from just above the foreleg. Let's see what it's like. Oh my god, yeah. Juicy, rich, a little bit of salt, and garlic. It's a cut that has a little bit of fat in it, which means it has flavor. And it's just really basic. Grilled, great olive oil, you can tell. Oh my god. This and a, and a tomato salad would be like dream come true. I'm in my happy place in a place like this where it's just ingredients are respected and it's just done simply on the grill. No pretension, where the ingredients shine and everything comes through. I'm in love. Okay, so I got talking to the owner and told him I have a YouTube channel and he said, hey, try a couple more things and just gave me a couple of tasters. The carriera, the, 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 the cheek stew, which I don't know if it's beef or pork actually, it, it can be either. That stewed meat is sweet. The other one he gave me were their callos. He's like, I don't know if you like callos, which is tripe stew. I actually really love callos. Like, oh, a lot of cumin in there. That is really good. Really rich, dense stew, cumin-y. It doesn't taste like intestine. And on a cold winter's day, when you really want to kind of fill that hole in your soul, callos are like your friend, trust me. Guys, I don't know if I have a sickness or a gift, but last night I couldn't think of eating anything more. And I was worried that today I would just be revolted by the thought of food. But this morning, once I go to a, a great bar, a great place with great food and meet the passionate owner, it all just comes rushing back and I just get excited again and I start eating. So we're okay. I'm gonna be able to finish this video. 
so this place, La Clandestina, is really well known here in Toledo as a place, again, we're going more modern again. And I feel like, you know, again, dishes from the region, I'm drinking local wine, and a little kind of free aperitif that they gave me, which I feel like is indicative of this place, pheasant macaron. I, they're not macaroons, that's a chocolate biscuit with coconut. I always get that wrong. Mm. Kind of naughty, that. Sweetness of the macaron, and it's effectively like a pheasant pate. Remember, Toledo is famous for its simple game. We've got pheasant, quail, hare, rabbit, all those kind of things. So guys, you're probably sick of so much meat. <laughs> and so I wanted here at La Clandestina to kind of, you know, more modern, to go a little lighter. So I'm focusing on the fish and a little bit more vegetables. And here, one of the star dishes are uh, marinated sardine kind of strips or fillets on a bed of ajo blanco, which is a kind of like a cream, a cold soup from the south that is made from ground up almonds and garlic. And it's delicious. I want to prove to you that you don't have to get big meat stews in this city. And on the ajo blanco, I've never had that combination before. Perfect. Okay, next up, we've certainly got a pretty dish, but it's roast leek along with duck confit, radishes, uh, and a tomato vinaigrette. That's pretty good. Once you combine, I think the key here is to combine all the ingredients. It kind of creates this really yummy combination that I, don't know, I haven't had before. Mm. He said they're famous for their canelon, which is like a pasta filled with meat, topped with foie and wild mushroom. If you're not eating at eight places in, you know, 18 hours, then maybe you'd be up for that. We have one more place to hit. So guys, you know I'm not the coolest guy in the world, but I wanted to give you something that was a little different from some of the previous places we're going to. And I'd heard about this place, Barrio, which is new. It only opened the last sort of year or so. And here they do tapas, but it's a fusion of Spanish as well as Asian and, and South American dishes all kind of mixed up. And also these guys are famous for their cocktails. I've had a lot of red wine. I thought, why not finish strong with, <laughs> with a cocktail? Something that'll get me back to Madrid. I'll be able to greet Yoli and Lucia with a glint in my eye. So here we go. So first up, they've served some uh, Himalayan salt along with two types of olive oil. So you can get, get a lot of local touches here as well. And the idea is you sprinkle the, the salt into the oil and then with the cornbread that you've got, dip it in and eat it, obviously. And then for the cocktail, I said to the waiter, I wanted something bitter, not sweet. That's not that's not my vibe. And so he's whipped up this, this really delicious uh, cocktail that's a mixture of a Spanish gin, Nordes. In there is some ginger beer. There's also some Campari, some orange, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Some bitters as well. It's really good, it's really good. It's really, really good. If you feel like cocktails in Toledo, you're sick of La Mancha wine, you know where to come. This is what I ordered to finish strong. It is a choux pastry stuffed with bull tail stew and apple. And then on top is the gravy from the bull tail stew mixed with 80% chocolate. This is gonna be ugly. Avert your gaze, look away. That is actually really good. There's a little bit of heat in there as well. It's not sweet, by the way. I have four of them here. Climb into your screen, travel through time, and come and help me, because I think I may die. And the apple is perfect, because it kind of gives some acidity to this dish, which would otherwise be just all kind of chocolatey and bull taily. I'm sure there's a better way to explain that gastronomically, but I wouldn't know what those words are. Mm, I actually may eat all four. Please, stop me. Please don't watch, this cannot be on record. Okay, I got two dishes here, guys, because, you know, look, we're finishing strong. This time it's croquetas. Now, obviously, croquetas, I'm not a huge croqueta fan. So I always think it's a good way to test, like, does the croqueta impress me? Is it yummy? This is a croqueta of uh, ají, the Peruvian stew, mixed with bechamel, and on top there's a huancaina uh, sauce and also fried pork. And I'm going to use my hands. That's the point we're at. Really gooey, like a good croqueta should be high goo level. All right, let's see. Ooh, yeah, it's good. It's really good. Creamy, strong flavor. Sometimes croquetas don't taste of anything. They just taste of bechamel, but perfectly crunchy on the outside. Yoli, who's a croqueta fan, would love it. I'm really impressed with Barrio. Okay, the upshot on Barrio, I'm giving this place two thumbs up. I didn't expect uh, to come to this kind of place. It's kind of fusion and modern and, and really interesting flavors, but it's here, and if you feel like a cocktail, you know where to come. Guys, Kaisho, welcome to San Sebastian, or Donosti, or Donostia. Lots of names. So today we're going on a six-stop pincho crawl, but we're going to bars, pincho bars here in San Sebastian, 
in that you would never find on your own because we're not in the historic center where a lot of people go. We're outside that in a less touristed area. We're gonna hit six super local places. I'm super hungry. Yoli's behind the camera. Hi guys. Are you ready? See if we can do it. Six bars in like, I think we're like three and a half hours. The pinchos are fast, the pinchos are good. Let's do it. Oh, and I forgot to say Benga, let's go. So Benga, let's go. Guys, we're in our first stop. It's midweek, so not super busy. We're in Casa Bajes. Now, this place is famous, super rustic. We're gonna go to some modern places as well. But here is where the original pincho was invented in San Sebastian, and it's called the Gilda. This place was founded in 1942, and the guys working behind the counter, one of them is Anchon. He's the grandson of the founder. He works with his two brothers, so super family run, the kind of places we love. We've got a spread here. He's just started giving us food, but here's one that's super famous. The Gila. Now this is the first pincho to be invented in this bar. You will see these all over San Sebastian, but it was invented here. And this is the perfect way to start. Every pincho call for me begins with a Gila and a glass of Chacoli, the local wine. Okay, I'm gonna start with this guy, try and get it in my mouth in one go. That's the key, you wanna get all these flavors in here. Look at this guy. You ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, wow. eating Gilda. Oh my God, look at the oil on that. Insane. Wow. Mm. The, the pepper and spiciness is coming up through my nose. The anchovy, so good, I love that. If you like strong flavors, the Gilda is gonna be your dream start to a pincho crawl. And what's Chacoli? It's a local white wine that's got a little bit of fizz to it sometimes. They pour it from a height and it's just kind of light. Doesn't have a high alcohol content, it's usually about 11, 11 percent perfect for day drinking. Guys, so Anchon has given us a couple of other specialties. Now, if you've seen my other pincho video, you'll realize that, you know, there's always all these pinchos on the bar, but generally there's also pinchos that are hot that you can order from the menu, and that's often where the best ones are. So this one just came out of the kitchen. It's a chipiron, which is like a little squid. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. Oh my God, it's so good. A little bit of potato there, so delicious. All right, tortilla de bacalao, a really classic dish here in the Basque country. Egg tortilla, normal, but with salted codfish. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's really good. So we're already overeating at the first stop. Classic mistake, but no. win in San Sebastian. <laughs> Yoli, your turn. Why is it called a Gilda? Gilda. It's called after Rita Hayworth in Gilda, the movie, because it was hot and spicy like she her. Was, yeah, she was hot and spicy. We're always a bit nervous when we hit the first bar. We yeah. need that drink just to relax a little bit, so <laughs> salute. Cheers. All right, next stop. So guys, en route to the next bar, I want to share with you kind of where we are in the city. We're about a five minute walk from the, the Casco Antiguo, the historic center that, that so many tourists visit. And we're in an area that's a beautiful kind of Belle Epoque, 19th century architectural area. And it's such a great way to get out of the center, out of the kind of the area where everybody goes and visit some bars that are just not that well known. And here's the thing, we run a tour in the historic center. We have a devour tour there and it's amazing. We go to amazing places, but because that's where so many people go, we wanted part of kind of our commitment to sustainability is to also have a tour outside that area, to start to bring people outside the area that everybody goes and bring them into these bars that, that tourists aren't going to, you know, kind of spread the, spread the tourist dollar more broadly through the city, which is, which is so important, I think, and, and help people discover these places. So some of the places we're gonna be going to today are on that tour, our pinchos like a local tour. So I'm pretty excited. I haven't been to these places before, so I'm discovering it with you guys. All right, let's keep eating. Guys, stop number two. I hope you can hear me over the music. This is actually the oldest bar in San Sebastián. Opened in 1917. They've renovated in recent years. But like the last place we were at, by yes, this place is run by three grandsons of the founder. Jesús, who's over here coming with the food, is the guy who's helping us out. One of the grandsons. Jesús. 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 And we're on the chacolí as well, of course. <laughs> okay, one of the things when you're pouring chacolí, the traditional style, you have to pour it from a height, a little like cider, so it aerates it a little bit. So okay. I'm gonna give it a go badly. Uh, 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 uh. 
Not bad, not bad. Salud. No estaba mal, ¿no? No, bastante bien. Gracias. <laughs> All right, first pincho here in Espiga, anchoa de Getaria. Getaria is a fishing village here in the Basque country. Anchovies or boquerones. We've got toasted garlic across the top and a couple of uh, chilies on there and then doused in olive oil. Oh yeah, wow. That amazing bucket on flavor, but then this crunchy toasted garlic right on top. So good. All right, going in again. Mm. I wish this was one of those ASMR videos. You could hear me crunching the garlic and you yeah. probably all fall asleep. High tolerance. Whew, pica. Mm. Can't grab it. Pasta. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> This is very delicious. Let me have the pepper. <laughs> yeah, all right, in the mouth. Do you think it's gonna kill me? Probably. Yeah? So far, so good? It's got some heat to it. I'm good, I'm fine. The next pincho, I'm gonna have to take my scarf off because it's gonna get messy. <laughs> Stewed cow snout, try and say that 20 times, on bread. For a minute there, I thought we got a bit of fur from the microphone cover on the thing, but no, uh, it's just... We will one day. Ooh. Ooh, that's very tender. If you're into stewed snout, if you're into offal, it's not too offal either. No? Yeah. That's the kind of pincho that's gonna put hairs on your chest. Yum. Next up, it's a pimiento relleno, so I, I filled a stuffed red pepper with meat, I think. I'm not quite sure. Bechamel. Uh, I don't know. Let's find out what's and in here, Yoli. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. As Yoli explained, there's bechamel, there's mushroom in there. You can see. Mm, very yummy. Mm. Mm. And this is the delicia, the delicious thing. So uh, it's got onion and parsley, and egg white, and that's it. And anchovy, right? Anchovy, anchovy. big anchovy in there. Uh -huh. mm. And it is delicious. La delicia. Can we just skip dinner and eat everything? All right, my turn. And this place, Espiga, is one of the bars on the tour, and I'm, I love that we come here. I love Jesus over there, he's great. <laughs> so a lot of people wonder what's the difference between pinchos and tapas you know traditionally a pincho or pinchos are not lunch or dinner it's something that you'd meet your friends before lunch maybe at midday you'd have a, a torito which is the small beer or you'd have a glass of chacoli and a pincho and then go home for your proper lunch and maybe you do that before dinner as well, but it's fine to make it dinner or lunch to just keep on eating because, hey, it's fun. Okay, we're really switching things up now. This bar is tiny. It's called Sia Boga. It's run by John and his father Carlos, and they're famous for one dish. It's called the Platillo, and it's a potato dish, I believe, with like garlic, a lot of garlic in there. It's got some spicy cayenne pepper that you can put on it. We're going to try that. This place is tiny, super old school neighborhood place. I love it. So a little bit of cider. That's the other drink you're going to want to drink here in San Sebastian. I love Basque cider. It's not sweet like a lot of ciders. It's really fermented e. if that's a flavor, buttery and... <laughs> I'll take it later. Ah, it's so refreshing. My God, I love it. I don't like sweet things, so this is perfect. Okay, so the dish has come out. The potato dish is super simple, super delicious looking. I love that garlicky smell. Apparently, we're gonna put some cayenne pepper on top of this guy. But you need to try it both ways. Oh, I gotta try it both ways, so I'm gonna try this sin cayenne first. Wow. Mm. Oh, hot, hot. Oh, super yummy. Yeah, garlicky. I think they've been boiled and then fried. And so they've got that crispiness on the outside. Okay. <laughs> it's hot right here, right now. <laughs> Alright, time for some cayenne. Yep. We're diving back in with the cayenne pepper now. Yoli always tells me I gotta hold the plate higher because you guys can't see it. So if you ever see me during this video going whoop, it's because Yoli is behind the camera saying, Go higher, up, higher. <laughs> so I want you to see the potatoes. Here we go. Mm, yeah, really good. 
Yum, so simple, so yummy, perfect on a wintry day like this. But they'd also be great on a summer's day too. Mm. Carlos is the man who cooked our potatoes. Super amazing, delicious. John's his son over there. We're heading off next stop. Look, the thing I love about this country, about this city, is the ability to switch between delicious rustic food in a tiny family run place, and then suddenly you're in this place, and it's like it actually is in the ground floor of a, of a, of a really nice hotel. Hotel. And this place is called Naru. And this place, well, they have pinchos on the bar, but generally what you'll be ordering here if you take a seat from the menu are raciones or media raciones, so a little bigger. We've ordered two media raciones, they're coming now. Guys, wings. I was recently in Orlando, Florida, six months ago, and man, I had the most amazing buffalo wings in my life. These are not buffalo wings, but it's bringing back memories, and they look Greasy and juicy and yummy chicken wings. There's like egg yolk in there. There's looks like alioli or mayonnaise. I don't know, I'm gonna get in there, but they look really yummy. <laughs> Ooh, those are yummy. Ooh, yeah. All right, the next dish just arrived. I look like a madman here. Mm. <laughs> the alioli is really good. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna dip the wing and get all that juicy egg yolk and alioli in there oh God, it's so rich this one here is ravioli with rabo de toro and foie inside crazy rich so and there's also egg yolk in there as well crazy for egg yolk mm. right. yoli you get these wings i'm gonna try this guy over here All thank right. you you're a I'm wings a... person right yoli uh, it was I... one of your favorite dishes growing up favorite dinner yeah favorite dinner was mm. wings get all that juiciness in there mm. I want to try it from. Yeah. Mm, mm, delicious. Yes, mama. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot going on here. Bull tail foie, little mushroom. <laughs> oh yeah. Often what happens with these kind of dishes, it's just about the mushroom and then you're like, yeah, that was good. There's this whole mushroom like sauce that it's in emulsion, but then you get that big bull tail hit right in there. And bull tail is such a rich meat, so you don't need much. It's really good, really mm. good. Oh, it looks delicious. Say what, ravioli is one of my things too. I Chicken know. wings and ravioli, I mean, You're you know how to make a woman happy. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's gorgeous. I love the, the combination of all these flavors, you know, that go together perfectly. And the little cebollino, the little chives on top, delicious. Such a super taster kind of thing to say. <laughs> super taster comment. Guys, while I've got you, huddle up. There's three words in Euskera and Basque that I want to teach you so you can use them while you're here. The first one is Kaixo, K-A-I-X-O. That means hola, hello, Kaixo. The second one is thank you, Eskericasco. That's a hard one, Eskericasco. And the third one, super easy, adios, hasta luego, you know, goodbye, agur, A-G-U-R, agur. So you've got Kaixo, Eskericasco, and agur. Use that and man, you might even get free pinchos. So yeah, elegant looking place. Okay, next stop is the Pincho Bar number five that's been open since 1968. It's called Bar Antonio. And now this is the place, you might have heard of Arthak, who is a very famous chef here, has a Michelin star restaurant, and this is the Pincho Bar that he recommends that his diners visit after they've been at his Michelin star restaurant. And that's where we're heading next, let's go. This is my kind of bar. They have champagne by the glass, they have mums by the glass, so anyway. Okay, what I noticed when I first walked in here is just the beautiful display of pinchos that they have here. Anchovies, bocanon is all my favorite stuff. And they actually make their own house cured anchovies here and they're famous for those. This is one of the places we come to on the tour and I'm excited about it. Any place that does champagne by the glass is, is worth checking out. All right, so it's a house cured anchovy. It's got, it's wrapped in a green pepper on bread. <laughs> Yeah, oh wow, no. That anchovy is so good. And then with the pepper around it. So if you're an anchovy fan, this is your bar. Bar Antonio, famous for their anchovies. Can I say the word anchovy again? Yes, please. All right, 
we've got this other dish that they're famous for, the ravioli holding it up, mm. the langostino. So, all right, okay, I'm getting in there. Ooh, Ooh that's really good. Yum. Mm. Last bar. We're doing pretty well for time. These pincho bars, you can really get in and out because the food happens so quickly. Okay guys, last stop, we made it. This place is a little different from the more pincho bar style that we've been in. This place is called Altuna, and it's a little bit more restaurant. There's also a bit more of a bar space here, but it's not a place where you can see pinchos on the bar and people standing around. It's, it's more a place where you come and order some different dishes, but they have this really interesting menu of kind of market cuisine. Friends, there comes a moment in every man's pincho crawl when he's at the last stop, he's eaten in five places, five and he sits here and he's like oh just have one more thing and suddenly he has this in front of him, this <laughs> spread let me tell you what we've got here we have the the best tomatoes in spain in season right now these are from almeria in the south and it's just literally with olive oil i think there's a little vinaigrette reduction on there and mulled and sea salt and then things are a little bit more elaborate we've got ensaladilla rusa so but not the typical ensaladilla rusa or russian salad which is potato and, and tuna and mayonnaise this one's got octopus in there it's got fish eggs got a whole bunch more going on there's like a plankton sauce here and then this this is lengua de ternera so cow's tongue but it's cold and it's been covered and done and all these different brined and pickled products. There's just a whole lot going on and it's very fresh. And you know, one of those things you might think, cow's tongue, oh my God, but it's not in the kind of stewed sense. It's cool, it's crisp. I'm excited. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, yes, beautiful sweet tomato. You know how tomatoes don't taste like tomatoes used to taste? Well, often in Spain, they still taste great. It's a little bit of vinaigrette, olive oil, so good. Healthy. Love it. All right. Let's hit the next one. I'm gonna try the ensaladilla given I'm a huge fan. Don't get the hair in the ensaladilla, please. Eating it with the peineta, which I decided to call it. Flamenca. Huh? Mmm. Oh, yum. It's delicious. It's um, different from what you expect usually. The octopus is so lovely too. Wow. All right, now the cow's tongue. Mmm. There's mustard in there as well. Mm. That is really good. There's one thing I love. It's sharp, vinegary, pickled flavors. This would be perfect in summer with like a, a glass of chocolate in the sun. Never thought you'd be eating cow's tongue in the sun. Mm. Cow's tongue in the sun. <laughs> mm. Oh, that is really, really good. 